breaks and stuff. Testing one, two, test one, two. See how the sound goes with the muted song. Testing one, two, test one, two. See how this comes out, test one, two.
some technical issues over on the restreaming side. I think they're going to be resolved. So just, just doing one more test. It shouldn't be long. Thank you for your patience. point feel free to let me know um looks like uh the restreaming for odyssey and twitch aren't working tonight they were working almost seamlessly yesterday so i don't know what's up anyways um welcome back to forever conscious research channel and happy saturday hope everything's been going well i am really excited about tonight's show and we're going to continue the series titled my journey to awakening this is episode number six and we're going to be having the vegan skeptic joining us we're going to be covering all sorts of different topics and uh, going to be diving deep diving deep so we're going to be covering synchronicities artificial intelligence astral projection lucid dreaming tartaria slash mud flood the mandela effect the matrix mechanics gematria the Matrix Reincarnation Soul Trap, of course, Afterlife Solutions and Exiting the Matrix, Veganism and Plant-Based Diets, Spirit Guides, NPCs, and much more. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you the vegan skeptic, good friend of the show, good friend of mine, and 
Uh, it's great to have you with your brother. With your brother. Oh, I don't think you can hear me. <laughs> uh, so, sorry about that. Uh, being skeptic, I actually did an entire intro and I had my mic muted, so you didn't hear me. So, <laughs> welcome to the show, my friend. Oh, I just I just unmuted myself. That's all okay. No, actually, Sorry. <laughs> I I had it actually like uh, on the I I had it open on the YouTube on the very slight volume, so I like barely heard you, but I kind of ho heard a lot of it. So it's all good. And thank great. you for the interaction. Yeah, man, it's great to have you on. So um, yeah, I, I think I kind of wanted to start it off start off with um, what things were like as a child, like uh, religion. Uh, kind of household you grew up in? Uh, was it overly religious or was it not religious at all? And uh, why don't you kind of give us a little background uh, your early childhood? Sure. Um, so basically, I was born in uh, Istanbul, Turkey, where I was uh, part of like a not so religious family just like you know a lot of the families in istanbul you know since kind of you know turkey being the modern you know muslim country and istanbul being like one of the most modern cities of it i i was lucky enough to not you know be a part of the like a very strict uh, family right the religious family and uh so it all started with basically uh, i actually like one of the first memories i remember as a child was uh, a traffic accident i was part of which is yeah like that that one was very interesting to me because it I, i'm like waiting on the side of the road right there's like the cars going from left to right and then well, once you pass them the cars coming from you know, right to left and i was just holding my mother's hand like my you know best you know kin friend kindergarten friend is like on, to ride off maybe his mother and all of a sudden I had like almost like a possessed, my, like my body was almost possessed. Right? I had this idea where even though I was holding my mother's hands, I would I like forcefully let go of my mother's hand. And then in my head thinking, you know what? I can cross this road. And then all of a sudden started just running without looking to the right, to the left. I don't know where cars come from. Luckily, like I passed to the first street and on the second street, as soon as like I, I stepped on the you know road, the minibus from Turkey, basically, uh, which is like a, you know, quite a big bus. And I was just maybe like five years old. I don't remember it, but uh, I was very tiny. And apparently, like, it couldn't stop. So it hit me super hard where my mother, like, when she explains it, it you know, it's, you know, I almost like flipped on the air on a sideways flips, you know, before I hit the ground. And I, all I remember is basically waking up from in hospital. But I don't remember at all on, on my end any, you know, in the experience, any that type of experience. I just remember just waking up from hospital with some, you know, a lot of stitches on my head and a lot of, you know, stuff on my body. And then I, I just remember basically my father carrying me to the hot dog, I mean, not hot dog, sorry, the hot chocolate machine uh, on the hospital where I repeatedly, you know, I was like asking him, oh my God, more, you know, more chocolate, please, more chocolate. And that's all I remember from that experience. But mm. uh, that experience, like when, once I started school though, for, for, I remember this also, like, this is also interesting to me where when I was thinking about this phenomenon where, you know, how your uh, life flashes through your eye thing, yeah. I, I just like had, I just remembered about that for a second during a uh, school break, like when I was in the first grade, I think. And then uh, all of a sudden, like when I thought about that, like how that would feel like, all of a sudden I felt, you know, these like flashing white lights almost like, and then flashing some images almost while my eyes were open, basically. Oh, sure. And that, that's the only thing, basically, from, you know, that type of in, in near indie type of situation where I had. And yeah, that's basically how my childhood started. But then, you know, there's the nightmares that I remember a lot as a child that I can go into. Wow. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd love to hear him. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh how when we get in those types of accidents or at least many of us have experienced one time slows down it gets it's crazy it, it, it's how it all happens and especially as a child that's that's not easy that's rough um so uh, i meant to ask you what, what's your current age roughly you don't have to say exactly if you don't want to oh that's fine uh, i'll be actually 30 years old in a month okay great and um so the seriousness of 
uh, religion in your house? How, how, how extreme was it? Uh, that one was not, not, not so strict on my end. Uh, actually, like my family didn't even really pray, like they didn't go to mosque, right? And then uh, they, they didn't really fast it at all. Like we didn't, they didn't make us fast. You know, I so I never passed it. I tried once, I remember, but I couldn't make it like the without water. Are you crazy? You know, uh, and and then I was. Uh, other than that, you know, it's just like some some memories of my father kind of praying uh, right before I go to sleep. Uh, you know, they do their Turkish thing like uh, spitting on your face. I'm like, you know, and uh, at the very end of the pray, and that's that's kind of in my memories, uh, but. So my father was kind of religious, uh, way more than my mother, but still, even he like didn't really encourage us anything when it comes to religion. It was the kind of like the schools where they were almost, you know, making us memorize all these yes. pra prayers in Arabic. That was more more so. I faced religion aspect over the schools more so. That's yeah. Well, honestly, I guess it could have been worse, but <laughs> still, still sucks. But I guess it could have been worse. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Um, I want to ask, since a young age, have you felt like you didn't belong here? Or did you have any feel? Did you have anything like that going on when you were younger? That you recall? Yeah. Um, I have this uh, another interesting memory uh, where, you know, we have all these minibuses, right, in Istanbul. And then I was taking this, when I, every time I took these minibuses or when I'm in my family's car, I would always like to entertain myself. I just look outside the window to the other cars, to the other people in the cars, like in the minibuses or whatever. And then all of a sudden I had this uh, almost like an awakening realization where I noticed that when I looked at these people, right? After I, I was counting to like seven seconds or something. And every time that hit seven or, some, or six or whatever, uh, like they would look at me. And that that's something that I paid attention to to this day where when I, you know, remember back to my child and remember all those minibus experiences as a child or my, you know, the, the car thing, I, that, that stick with me because like that was so such an interesting experience where almost everyone, I would just, you know, look, even like I'm looking at them, they're there in the minibus, I'm looking their back basically, right? Like we are mm. from behind them. And then I'm just looking there to their shoulder basically. And like one, two, three, like six, se se seven or whatever, boom, they turn back to look at me. And that was that that's one of the experiences as a child i remember like well, that's kind of weird and i i kind of told my uh, brother i guess about it once or something but maybe not even but that's what i remember okay all right interesting interesting i appreciate that um well i guess this kind of was already answered but i i'll ask again just in case there's something else that you know because we just started uh, was there any traumatic incidents as a child in which you wish to share or caused you to leave your body trauma seems to very be a very common thread but i only want this question to come up if uh, or i only want you to answer this if it if you feel comfortable in doing so is there anything else besides that yeah that, so that would be the nightmares uh because those nightmares were so so like tough for me uh in the in the way where i just remember some of them even to this day vividly where i wake up from it right and then I would sleep on a at the upper you know floor of the bunk bed upper place. And then uh, when I look, you know, I remember like waking up in sweat basically most of the time, right? And then I would just run to my uh, family's bedroom to sleep with them. Mm. And but I remember vividly once where I look down, and I still see the those black big dogs from my dreams barking at me while I'm just going from down to my from my bunk bed. So that was almost like an out of body, but not really like, not, yeah. like in real life, but I still see them. And that that's kind of stuck with me as a, the, when the nightmares gone super huge, you know, and then, you know, then that happened. And now, now I kind of realize that, uh, it, that is something like maybe, you know, I don't know if a lot of us face that, but maybe some do, some don't remember it, some don't. Uh, but I feel like that maybe what system is doing kind of where, you know, they make, they, they know that childhood, you know, intentions are so pure. Right. Mm -hmm. And I probably like said, I don't, because I remember like my keep talking to my father and they were always sick of me coming to their bed and my father sleeping on my bed and stuff. So I would like, you know, uh, 
say like i don't want to remember the, like i don't want to have these experiences i don't know what to do but you know papa whatever and then uh so yeah that, that i remember like uh, and then eventually they stopped uh, and eventually like i never kind of remembered any dreams from then on almost you know just rarely remembering them until you know now now i do techniques to remember them and stuff. interesting interesting so so how many years did that kind of go on for you think i think that was uh you know soon after the accident uh like the car like minibus hitting me i think from then to maybe two years you know for two years it lasted i think or maybe one year i'm not sure but yeah i mean i remember you know my, they they tell me like my family tell me like i you know, came to their bed a lot so mm, so yeah so about so about one or two years okay yeah. uh just uh out of curiosity because of that incident how do you feel about driving as an adult does it scare you at all yeah like i actually okay. still to this day don't have a driver license i just okay. don't i don't especially uh i had other car you know uh like uh incidents uh, with my you know family in the car like crashing and uh like those also uh made me you know i'm just all about like cycling on my end if i can cycle to the place i will cycle it i don't care if it takes one hour and then if you know and then or, or else i just take the subway or what you know, bus or whatever so that that kind of still applies makes sense. I, I like it yeah makes sense yeah. especially now with the gas prices right oh yeah jesus <laughs> yes yeah no it that, that that's why i asked the question because that that seems to be a common theme that pops up uh you know, traumas like that as a child involving a car or anything uh, can, you know, make you kind of distance yourself from whatever is related to that trauma, like a car accident. So uh, what was the topic that triggered the start of your journey? I, or, or like, was there a, a, you know, what was kind of like the, the linchpin for, for starting to look into things differently? Yeah. And I, and I know that that's kind of a big answer because you had quite a, quite a, uh, a development, but, uh, yeah, feel free to. Yeah. To I, I mean, other than the ones I already talked about, the biggest thing was like, uh, finally getting a computer, right? My father, like, uh, got a computer, like laptop, I think very and old what one. What year was that? See the year I, like I, when I was, uh, so I'm like almost 30 now and this was, uh, maybe in or, or the third grade age. fourth grade okay like okay. uh but yeah like they got this uh i'm not sure like at first it was the regular computer and then i i remember like we would plug uh the phone line to the to it and then eventually like one day when my family came and said oh my god what is this phone bill and then we were like oh we were getting <laughs> on the internet you know and that that's what i remember you know like we the good <laughs> yeah, old dial-up days <laughs> yeah yeah they were angry about that when on the phone being phone bill came in but i remember like very early on after that like after maybe when the middle school started when like around the time or whenever the youtube came out right and maybe soon after the youtube came out actually not whenever but uh it just came out to power laptop and then uh so when uh i kind of discovered youtube like my i remember my family came in i mean that my friend came in and then he was showing me these videos like funny videos or whatever and then eventually on youtube like system basically put like on the you know recommended these videos came up about like illuminati or you know like the subliminal messages or stuff like this right and mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it was because some things i looked up before but uh and this is the this i always question this like is it kind of this life script situation where you know the or is it the clues that the system kind of puts out like i'll you know we'll talk about that more deeper eventually but you know, uh, that kind of what I'm, you know, thinking sometimes, you know, when I think about this, where I'm just, you know, getting onto the YouTube and all of a sudden YouTube is suggesting this, you know, conspiracy videos to me. And then about Turkey is a exception too, because in Turkey, we have even like on the TV programs, on the news, uh, uh, even live news or, or whatever, like they debate, they debate stuff. And then they even show like, you know, the Adrena stuff, right? The Chrome thing. And then, uh, they even talk about that type of stuff in Turkey, and they they talk about super deep conspiracies in TV programs, and where no other country's television program kind of speaks about that type of stuff. So mm -hmm. that's that's kind of also unique to Turkey, maybe too, where we were just 
as a you know country maybe more interested in conspiracy topics. So that was my first introduction. Like soon after you know discovering YouTube, you know YouTube suggested me those videos, and then I dive kind of deep on the you know subliminal messages thing for a long long time, mm. and that's my that was my first thing. Nice, nice. Okay, and um, so um, how or ha has your awakening made you feel like you don't fit in in this realm? <laughs> I think I know the answer, but yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it since the beginning it was always uh, weird, you know, especially after the accident uh, and then the dreams uh, and then the school, of course, and school was, you know. Uh, all this right away as soon as i start school this random kid you know started to bully me basically and you know eventually though i you know i had that led me to martial arts where i did like martial arts for a long long time and nobody ever messed me there afterwards but uh that was the like the first <laughs> first ever experience with like uh schooling experience you know where as soon as i start the school this just random bully starts to attack me randomly basically mm. and that, that's kind of what i remember uh as yeah, well man uh, so so uh, what type of mar martial arts are you involved with uh the, I, I actually started doing like the hapkido uh, so i did that for a few years until you know i got the black belt thing but uh that kind of like i don't really like that type of sports on my end because after i started doing muay thai and brazilian jitsu that's when i realized oh like that hapkido thing was nothing you know compared to these sports where i'm actually sweating i'm actually tired in a few minutes so uh, then basically well, once I discovered that, I just started doing just MMA, basically, you know, just Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu together for like two, three more years. On and off, I do it like this, you know, after this whole thing started last three years, then I had to stop basically because they cl closed down. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing that, uh, you know, aids in your health and, and self-defense, you're not able to do. Yeah, yeah. 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 I gotta love this place. <laughs> exactly. I think... Uh, uh dan can leave a comment if he's listening or in the or in the comment section after the stream if he watches the replay but i think he does aikido too i believe dan from overwatch oh that's cool i believe i didn't know that um, something like that i don't remember off the top of my head but um all right so have you found a better understanding of yourself throughout all this and do you prefer to be more alone than with others how, do, how how does that fit in how does uh your day-to-day -day kind of fit in with that yeah um basically like my whole life i always like shared my like it, when i'm talking about when i'm child high school like i, I almost always shared a room with my brother right and uh, up until i actually came to uh, canada uh like around you know 11 years ago or 12 uh then uh then basically i kind of discovered like oh wait a minute being alone is amazing you know because like, I, I i was always like i loved researching stuff like, like i also became like an you know we'll come to it but became like an agnostic atheist super early on like when i was 13 or something and you know once they came to canada when i was like around 18 years old uh, then uh, then basically i kind of even more research more research like and i just enjoyed it always like for some reason, I just couldn't stop, even to this day, just keep on researching and keep on trying to find the truth, basically. Nice, nice. Yeah, there, there's, I don't know, for me, I've always, I don't know, like, I was a lot more, I don't know, like, uh, did a lot more stuff back in the day, but I've just, uh, I've always kind of been content with just having, like, a small group of friends and and being alone. <laughs> no, it's just me though. Um, so what about having uh, found a better understanding of yourself in general? Like, uh, I assume going through and researching everything that you have, and, and we're going to dive deep into all that. So how, how is it changed you as an individual, um, you know, to, and about finding yourself really? 
Um, on the like the the previous question, by the way, uh, I actually also keep very small circle when it comes to like best friends. I always had two best friends, and like we hang there, hang around a lot together, and my brother too, like all of us. So uh, basically, that I, I just like keeping things like you know on just a few people, right? Uh, that I can get super close to, and also like I was a super introvert too because of playing all these computer games uh, before. And then eventually, after I came into Canada and after I inter started to interact with more people, then I kind of became almost like an extrovert or something, you know, like an in-between or rather. Uh, but um, sorry, uh, you're, you're sorry about that. Like your last question, uh, I'm kind of trying to remember uh, it. Now, it was, but... No, it was just about finding a better understanding about yourself. And uh, yeah, we already went over if you kind of prefer to keep your your group limited or, or be alone more. But yeah um more yeah, about that's basically finding it. and understanding yourself but yeah we we kind of went over that so yeah that's basically uh, all mm -hmm. i gotta say on that one cool cool has your desire for truth morals and ethics changed over time with everything that you've you know as your research and 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 time has progressed oh yeah like uh you know how i basically you know i started always like a modern muslim type of thing where before sleeping i would kind of sometimes you know just lift my two hands to you know just pray every hope everything goes good you know thank you whatever appreciate it and then just you know go to sleep uh, and then basically soon after you know drink in the first uh, year of high school i think uh we had a friend uh, who claimed he was like a christian but later on i learned that he was saying that just so he could hide his atheism basically mm. and 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 then he one day on facebook just you know publicly he shared this george carlin's religion bit right for like <laughs> 10 minutes and that was the thing that made me like as soon as i watched that i remember going to my father right away and asking like almost like dad did you know that there are people who don't believe in god can you believe that you know and then like i remember that and then but that video that day basically in the same day and the next day i always uh, kept on watching like all these atheism evolution richard dawkins all this stuff like back to back to back like 50 videos a day and then like basically like two or three days later or something i kind of right away became like a deist and then eventually an agnostic atheist where you know i was like when people ask me like do you believe in god you know i would say like no so and then it's like an atheism and then they say do you know if God exists? I will say no. Okay, it's an agnostic too. Then that's an agnostic atheism. So that's basically how I I was for a long, long time up until almost like I don't know two and a half years ago or something, uh, where it that all stopped. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's crazy. So I think what what I'll do is uh, actually just um, I I know we're gonna get into some of this, but I I. I'd like to ask you about some of your spiritual practices. I know some of them are part of the topic, but uh, things like uh, what spiritual practices have helped you in your day-to-day -day, uh, life, like uh, communing with nature, meditation, yoga, mindfulness, astral projection, lucid dreaming, affirmations, hypnosis, past life regressions, or something else. Um, so if you want to, you can do something short on that. I know you mentioned Aikido and I, we, and I know that we're going to be talking about your experiences with astral projection and lucid dreaming, but what about the other things as well? Like communing with nature, meditation, yoga, mindfulness, affirmations, hypnosis, yeah. and your past life regressions. Yeah. For me, uh, like, uh, you know, after, you know, agnostic atheism and I came to Canada, I discovered, you know, the veganism and then that kind of kicked off more spiritual aspect in, in some ways, even though I was still, uh, agnostic, super materialistic agnostic for a long time. And then uh, afterwards, you know, now like my as regular routine is basically like, you know, I wake up uh, as soon as I wake up, like I'm like, you know, trying to remember the dream and then, you know, basically do almost like a meditation to remember it. And then I, you know, just make my bed right away, go take a cold shower and I come back, do like a Wim Hof breathing exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, like I just opened that, you know, 10 minute video on YouTube, just, you know, Wim Hof breathing. And then I do that because I, that kind of like a ritual I do uh, kicks off the day for me in a way where, you know, I, I never even use caffeine and anything like that. So that that's like kind of pumps me up for the whole day. And then uh, basically I love nature, like especially like cycling, I love. 
uh, and as well as you know, we already said like martial arts. But other than that, I allow like table tennis, playing soccer, especially like some days we would play seven whole big soccer games. And you know, when I was in Istanbul, and then you know, basketball as well. Other than that, basically, I like making these teas. You know, uh, with like. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of studies on how turmeric is very healthy and healing. Mm -hmm. And then there's also there's this thing called amla powder, A M L A powder. And then there's this called, thing called also chaga powder. Uh, and all these things are actually like recommended to like cancer patients. Like they are the things that have the most antioxidants in them. And I would actually take you know like a pinch of you know turmeric, pinch of amla powder, pin, pinch of chaga powder, and I put all of it, boil it inside the water. And so that's like the most healing tea that I can come up with. And I like drinking that. That actually helps a lot on, in, in that way. And yeah, other than that, basically, uh, it's just like other full on lucid dreaming. You know, I'm all about mm -hmm. lucid dreaming. I almost like I lucid dream every week, basically a few times. And, you know, I, I love that. That's the biggest thing, because I feel like that's like lucid dreaming and astral projection. I see it as where we are one step closer to the truth you know one step exactly. closer to our higher essence and yeah i'd love to dive deep into that one later on too yeah 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 absolutely we're, we're gonna we're gonna go crazy with that and it's uh it's it's i think it's really important to be able to expand ourselves in that way and realize our you know a portion of it, it's it's way more authentic a more authentic self than just uh you know obviously our, our waking life and i think it's it's really really great for us to and important to expand ourselves in that way and, and realize our true power and, and that's that's a big part of it because if if you haven't had the opportunity to astral project or have significant lucid dreaming or you know impactful lucid dreams and realize that yes you are in control then then there's a huge portion of things missing uh, especially in regards to the soul trap because uh, i see some people they get down on themselves they doubt themselves and and one of my go-to answers all the time is to tell them that you are so much more powerful than you give yourself credit for don't let this entire experience, this system get the best of you and think that you're not in control because you are. And uh, one way to realize that is through things like astral projection, lucid dreaming. And um, yeah, can't, can't suggest it enough. And I really look forward to diving in deep to that. So um, I think uh -huh. I'd like to kind of start off with... Um, synchronicities uh, and 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 i and maybe or, or where where would you like to start off i know we were talking about kind of going in a certain flow uh covering certain things in order but you know so i want i want to leave it up to you on where you'd like to begin sure uh i guess we can just uh continue on my journey where i like how i discovered soul trap and then i can you know dive into the synchronicities and other things sure yeah, so basically, uh, on my end, like after I, you know, came to Canada and then I would just, you know, keep on with the conspiracy videos time to time, not so much. And then this, of course, this thing happened, right? Last three years uh, that we can't talk about because this is a suffering realm. And uh, so and when that happened, I actually bought it basically in a way where, you know, I was just, I was pre prepping two months before everyone because I kind of, watching these youtubers they were kind of letting people know from january and i actually ended up making a video uh about the, about this whole like all these people you know collapsing in china right and then i kind of yeah i made that video i made a compilation video of that on my youtube channel now i privated that video but that mm -hmm. video uh, that video gone viral actually almost a million views like seven hundred fifty thousand. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah like seven hundred fifty thousand or something like i gotta go check back uh but that video was like, and I was like warning everyone, you know, saying like, guys, this is what's happening. Maybe there's this thing called, you know, this stuff and then whatever. And then, uh, so then at the end, you know, saying like, okay, you gotta wash your hand, you gotta do this, you gotta do that when it comes and then, you know, buy food or whatever. So I, I did this video on January. And then soon after, you know, basically on March and you know, everything shut down. Uh, but 
that was the big starter because I, for, for a few months, like maybe two, three months after that uh, video, I believed in it fully. I had, I was prepped. I had all the food I was, you know, and then I, I had a thought in my head where, you know what, wait a minute, let me check all these, what are these conspiracy guys I've been following all these years say about this? Because this sounds awful lot like what, what's being always talked about basically in, in the kind of conspiracy communities when it comes to, you know, these, these needle things, right? And then these chip things. So that, this is why like, I was like, oh, wait a minute. It, this, is, this is the thing they've been talking about for a long time. So then I, I kind of started watching those videos and then right away in the first day, I was like, oh, of course, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Like, and then I, I, I was actually one of these guys where for two days, I would like not only wear the mask, I would wear the, the pool glasses, right? I tried that for two days while going outside. <laughs> and then, you know, I was like, of course, I throw all that stuff out. And then, and then I basically dived now deep into these, like, what's going on here? Like, oh, holy shit. And, uh, and, and then that kick started my, uh, bigger awakening, you know, because I was still back then, you know, a super agnostic atheist, super materialistic, like I, you know, and, and, uh, right after i became actually an atheist i had convinced you know my brother to be an atheist my you know my father basically my mother somewhat you know at least and then the my two of my best friends i convinced them and and i debated many times over the online i actually made a made a website about evolution and atheism and that website there's also we have this famous guy in turkey it's all about debunking evolution and he he's now jailed for like 800 years or something because of like his stuff with the some religious organizations that you know government didn't like and uh so and he ended up actually right when i came to canada he ended up suing me right because of that website i had about evolution and when i was like debunking his stuff on the website then uh but luckily i wasn't exactly 18 when they filed the that complaint or you know that's suing me and then they, they had to drop it basically mm -hmm. uh so so that was an interesting experience because they came into our place and took all the computers like my family didn't know what was going on and then they told me after wars over the you know uh like a skype call you know when i'm in canada they did this they did that uh but so that was interesting but uh basically after i you know discovered all these videos and people talking about how this whole thing is basically a, a scripted thing, right? A planned thing. Uh, then I kind of, you know, dive deeper into these videos. And, and then uh, also my, like I debated many times with my, my brother was more open to these ideas due to like, he was following these guys who would talk about, you know, the uh, human residence, five day shift, you know, uh, all this Tartaria, all that stuff and then uh sometimes he would debate like he would like tell me those stuff and i would say what are you talking about it's all about evolution and like he would just try to tell me like dude like this reincarnation there's this there's that and then i would be like no are you crazy no we were this first and then this happened then this monkey then this thing you know <laughs> and i would just go on a rant right like he, he would say a few words and then i would go into a rant of minutes and uh so yeah, that, and then eventually though, after I woke up, this like this whole pandemic thing happened, and uh, yeah, that kind of made like a gr great awakening for me after I died into those videos, and then eventually I discovered like these conspiracy communities called you know the Jamaat Yonimorology community, right? And mm -hmm. that that has been a huge also thing that I got stuck in for a long time, and then basically uh, eventually you know got out of but that that's been a huge awakening where i actually made some interesting connections that i can go into on my screen like there's like a 33 yeah, that, connections on. yeah and uh just to let you know my friend uh we, yeah. we did pick up the sirens a little bit so i don't know if there's like something going on in your neighborhood but if it if it uh if they keep they don't hear them anymore but if, if they do stick around or come by maybe you can yeah, yeah. Shut down the window or shut the window, shut down the, shut the window when you get a chance, but uh, it's fine right now. So don't worry about it. Yeah. Why don't you I'll, enjoy the fresh air? Yeah, I'll do that though, because I have a fan. The room is chill. So it's all good. Okay. It's up to you, man. I don't hear it anymore. So. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, they get now they're all over, but uh, they may come again. You know, they usually I usually hear them every one hour or something. Oh, really? So, so yeah. I may as well I may as well close it. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, so basically with the gematria thing, I started, and then like uh, after that video, I made like gone viral, and then I realized that oh wait a minute, uh, this whole thing is a scam, and that video actually scared up a lot of people, right? I bet. Uh, and they, the system, of course, used that video, made it viral, mm-hmm. and I, it was a good compilation video I did too, containing all the cases of these people dropping. And now, of course, they are not being talked about. And it's, mm-hmm. it's weird. But uh, yeah, so to then I dived super deep into Gematria and uh, I wrote this huge thing, uh, like a document, and started to spread with all these YouTubers, like Gematria YouTubers, all these other YouTubers. And then that Gematria thing led me to basically, you know, the Mandela effect and then, you know, also astral travel. And I dived into super dose. Like I, I have, also documents on those where we can dive deep into, you know, Mandela effect, dive right. deep into, you know, these Gematria stuff. And then the yeah, lucid dreaming astral projection too. And also I'd like to talk about too, like some, uh, how I discovered soul trap and, you know, all, all this, all this stuff about soul trap too. Yeah. yeah I'm, look, I'm looking forward to it. All right. So, um, you, you want to jump into, what would you prefer? You want, you want to jump into, um, I don't know where, Maybe, else, where would you like to take off from here? I mean, you got, I got, uh, your learning of AP uh, astral projection, lucid dreaming or Mandela effects and chronicities. I mean, if, if we go in order, I guess like the, these, these Gematria connections first okay. that I made with 33, right. because then only then came lucid dreaming astral projection and Mandela effect, which actually helped like that, that those were the ones that made me reconsider my beliefs okay. and, and then basically stop being an agnostic atheist after uh, Right. Yeah. I just want to say in regards to Gematria with, um, one of my videos got taken down off of here in relation to the thing we've been dealing with the last couple of years. So not sure where we're mm-hmm. heading with that, but uh, it's actually yeah. not, it's just that all the times the third tree is mentioned okay. basically. It's just the third three, and then we can also go into the six 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 thing. Uh, that, that had, so it's not even like too much Jumatria to begin with. It's yeah, just cool. the this these numbers that Let's basically keep coming up. Yeah. So let me get the let me see which one here. Okay, so this one. So basically, you know, after I realized the Jumatria, right? Can I won't maybe zoom in just a little bit more. If yeah, and, and I won't name some there of the things go. here that may be triggering. So uh, I won't name them. Uh, but yeah. basically, like, you know, in Gematria, as you can see, right, there's a lot of like, you know, police, this federal, this secrecy, order, you know, this thing, this thing, Hollywood, they're all kind of, you know, 33. And then it's interesting, like when you could. Yeah, Google, every, everyone should be looking on the screen at the moment. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go, yeah, go ahead. No, no. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, basically, uh, and then like when you Google actually, uh, these are, you know, territory in new cases thing. Mm-hmm. There's like yeah. hundreds, hundreds oh, of, of like that. articles, right? I have and, an entire folder filled with them. That's the video that got taken down. I mean, it's insane. There's so many of them. Yeah, it's insane. And yeah, this link shows many of them. I can also put this whole thing into a, a Google document later on for people if they want to check all these links too. Awesome. But, uh, but basically, then, you know, afterwards, uh, there was like uh, a lot of, you know, you know, countries, you know, reporting this on the media, this number 33 on many things. And then, of course, we have the 32 were the bones, right? And then Jesus supposedly dying at the age of 33, uh-huh. perfor- performing 33 miracles. <laughs> and Gematria, you know, if you write in the Bible, it comes up in 33 in one of the main ciphers. And George Washington apparently has like 333 foot messianic memorial built in his honor, right? In Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, the Lord. Temple. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then there's the, the Scottish, right? You know, Washington, D.C. has the 33 columns on the outside, the 33 feet tall, uh, you know, thing there. And then many other presidents supposedly being the 33 degree, these things, you know. And I don't know if I can name yeah, them. Yeah, I, I don't even touch that. Yeah, exactly. And then, and uh, then, and that, you know, the highest rank of that thing is 33 too. And then there's the, that was tattooed and that guy's thing. 
Uh, that's fast. Uh, yeah, me either. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. And then Golden Gate Bridge, uh, so it was built on 1933, right? And Tivin Tower stood for 33 years, from 1968 to you know, 2001, obviously. And then we have you know this guy donating 33 million dollars to you know the pro those protests. <laughs> and then we have, of course, now now comes the the you know the main mm. the famous guy of the story. And now this guy is a, a creates his name to. 33, of course, and he has been, a, you know, the CEO of Microsoft basically for 33 years. Mm -hmm. And he also, in this interview, mentioned how, you know, this thing could go could grow by 33 percent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and then he would he said in one of the other ones where how he could it could kill 30, you know, million 33 million mm -hmm. people. And then he signed actually a 3.3 billion dollar deal once. And then, of course, we have this creature uh, who, yes. who had who had, you know, 33,000 emails deleted you know supposedly and then we have this this other creatures you know defense production act thing with number 33 and then you know it's just uh, endless as you can see yeah though. i hey. think in the most recent thing uh one with um what is it uh ukraine they sent 33 billion oh interesting uh, i'm yeah. almost positive it's yeah that was the number that i saw a few weeks yeah. ago and yeah, I mean, there's just ton like, and this creature, of course, mentioning the this many doses, 30 million doses of that thing, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, there's like all these like news, news, you know, from like the 30 million people did this, 33 people did that, 30 people did this, like there's all these like news, 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 on top of that, and then you know, all, all these news I let me mention, and of course, in you know, my previous religion, Muslim, you know, religion, uh, we had these. Uh, not necklace, but I don't know how you say that in English, but they have like, you know, they are separated by 33 little balls, right? Mm -hmm. And all of them, each of them with 33 balls, and it's like a overall 99 yeah. thing. And then, of course, Disney has the it's like 33, 33 club, yeah. Club, yeah. And then we have like this, there's a famous Mandela effect about like a, the Mr. Wolf's car plate in Pulp Faction from changing, like from changing to not some name into a random numbers, which all equal to number 33 when you add them up, like the alphabetical, alphabetical plate number. Mm. Uh, and then we have this other creature uh, laughing <laughs> when, when when she was talking about, when she, as soon as she said 33 confirmed cases, she started laughing. Uh, and then like that's there's a video on that one. That's interesting. And other than that, uh, let's see here, is that interesting? There's other stuff here. Okay, the cops was canceled in turn three, season two to three. Yeah, that's great. Damn. Yeah. And uh, so other than that, let me see here. So basically at the end of the day though, what, what does this all mean, right? Like this is the, the whole thing that I was like trying to explain here. Because when you, when you think about it, like how many more 33s is gonna take Man. for for people to you know see that there's something weird going on here like hundreds of these news hundreds of times mentioning 33 on top of 33 every time what's going on here right and when i ask that question it's it's especially now after knowing about you know the astral projection experiencing you know seeing the basically the simulation you know, from that eyes and then mm -hmm. uh you know knowing everything we know about mandela effect knowing everything we know about the simulation theory all the nd stuff everything combined it's clear that you know, this is a this is one of those other hints of the system. I feel like right yeah. because uh, I definitely see this system as something like uh, at something that with a terms of service where it's it, in it. It says basically, so you will have this experience, you will be mind wiped, but don't worry. You know, we have this time you know concept where uh, we'll basically uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, let, me, yeah. let me make that off. And, and yeah, so basically, uh, we'll uh, get you into this place where there is, you know, we have, we have created time in this place, control the times, timelines, whatever. And then uh, you, but don't worry, you know, once you come out of it, there will be like, you know, no time, you know, pass because we have the time over there, not here. And then so once you come out, it will feel like, you know, basically nothing. But, you know, don't worry, we'll have all these clues inside <laughs> the system, right? Yeah. That will always point out this realm being some something weird going on, where if you pay attention to them, or, and eventually, probably in one of your lifetimes, you will, 
uh, that will lead you to these rabbit holes and you you pass all these rabbit holes and eventually come to the final rabbit hole which is this you know this, the soul trapped area as well as the how our real essence are you know super powerful beings that we are you know uh, that once we came to that awakening then you know then basically it's all fulfilled you know the, the promise is fulfilled now you know about it we let we gave you all these clues from everywhere and that, that's how i see it basically this 33 thing yeah no it's 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 such a massive clue throughout the realm i mean it, it it's it's a, it it's just it's crazy it it, it absolutely is a uh, a breadcrumb trail but at the same time it can help free your mind uh just because of how prevalent it is it's so obvious and it's everywhere and um yeah it, it, yeah i really appreciate you sharing that i really do yeah, thank you. And briefly, we can also touch on this 666 thing too, where I, I won't cover the, all, the whole thing, but just some of the important ones. Uh, sure. Because I, I feel like, because this was the biggest thing, actually. This this thing that's right here on the screen, I'm maybe zooming a little bit more. Right here. Perfect. So yeah, this thing that happened here, uh, it actually, uh, you know, like when you think about this other thing that happened, like this other exercise, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's actually right after, you know, 666 right days. Right after, yeah. That, then the World Health Organization basically declared it right on the 11 master number, of course, mm -hmm. that this is the now a <laughs> whole pandemic thing, right? And and this was actually when I was researching Gematria and I came across this information, I was like, okay, whoa, you know? And then basically kind of the same thing as well happened with the, you know, first conditional, like the Congress thing. Uh, and then, you know, between that and U.S. vote for independence, exactly 666 days before. Now, and we know about the you know, Apple computer being sold, the first one, $666.66. And yeah. <laughs> we have the HR, you know, that, that, HR, that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's interesting. And then, of course, this thing comes out. That was a, the HR one was totally a, a, a needle for the people like us and the now i mean it and and it also triggered um uh the religious nuts too i mean it, it was it was just way too perfect exactly. the timing of it and everything it was totally meant to needle the hell out of people who look into any of this stuff even on the smallest scale yeah yeah i mean it's all it's just clearly like it's all this whole number thing clearly like shows how how scripted this whole thing is this whole place is maybe like from many many probably resets ago like if this was all set in motion long long time ago they they knew what would what they were going to do i feel like you know and uh, absolutely so totally agree. so when it comes to yeah this thing coming up and then it's uh, of course has like in gematria equates to 66 and then it's you know six letters you know it has and uh it's all combined together kind of gives us you know 666 in that way and then of course we have the 666 you know fifth avenue where these people operated from right uh, their headquarters for years and then in gematria we have of course uh you know the mandatory coming to that this thing of course comes to that you know this all other other stuff comes to medical death you know uh, change of dna the dead number like the computer this thing witchcraft you know reckoning illusion insanity uh, and then there's uh, some other connections to microsoft with that too and dollar sign sun and moon together uh coming to that so we have plenty and then also in another cipher uh, we have internet coming to that genesis october uh coming to all that stuff and uh there's just like i can go on and on with this this thing i'm not gonna but there's of course the bible uh mentioning oh, yeah. too right like this since they created these all these biggest religions they of course had to have uh mention of this number you know warning against it and, then, and now all of a sudden we see that number we see this the territory we see just the combination of these three six and nine basically just like you know nikola tesla said how they are the key to unlock this whole place and yeah, yeah they, um uh, michael daniel made a good point he said kushner had the property and uh, and he overpaid for it and i think it's 666 fifth avenue or something and Trump Tower also has the 
um, 666 embedded into the architecture itself, if I recall. Wow. Um, if you look outside, like the way the design of the building is, I'd have to bring it up. But I haven't looked at it in a while, but you can look it up and you see it's it's there's like the. It's just the architectural design of it. It's broken up into to represent the 666. It's it's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. So that's all there is on the 666. And it's clearly like, again, once again, you know, it's they write it before they show it. Uh, script by script you know and it all just basically comes to show you that this this whole thing is scripted and that's kind of why like once i see these connections right and there's of course the Jumanji, like the 56 number all these other numbers that i have huge documents on uh and uh but it's just clear at this point what's what's going on like in it's, it's insane in our face and it's also super insane when you talk about all these movies all these tv shows all these news like once you plug them in and like they're co consider their numerology date consider the actors names versus actors you know real life names versus their characters names and then how they were selected for these movies and you know the movie's name how it when it came out and then make all the geometric connections like it's like perfect with almost you know every famous mm -hmm. movie every famous news every famous you know uh tv show almost like so it's it's kind of also shows you you know how much of it also scripted in that way too which is also absolutely. interesting absolutely yeah apps that that it, it helps uh with the whole the the scripting narrative and and realizing that, i mean that that's part of the the simulation um that exposes itself it, it it's just in our face everywhere there is no way that it's just uh a few uh groups doing this and, and that it's all planned no this this is planned uh meticulously through something uh like life scripts in general pre-birth experiences pre pre-birth scripting i guess you can say and then they come down and, and they live it out and then of course if they're getting involved with rituals and and, uh, and parasitic families and all this other stuff then well you know it just plays itself off or plays itself out on autopilot i mean it's uh it seems so obvious what's going on but uh it, it this is gematria is a huge part of proving that this is some sort of partial simulation with uh of course the you know the the, the monkey wrench so to say being our free will and if someone is just out to lunch and and not thinking for themselves and just going along to get along not expanding their consciousness in any way not asking questions well then things are just going to play out a certain way and Gematria and is one of those things that's going to absolutely prove that there is some sort of simulation going on here. Exactly, exactly. So that's basically all the Gematria stuff. And now I guess, you know, I don't know, if we can go into Mandela effect, I guess. Yeah, great. Sounds good. Yeah, so that, that was actually also one of the biggest uh, awakenings that I had because that was the very moment where i realized the simulation thing uh due to actually and, and it happened to me in the matrix movie interestingly where my one of my you know friends came over and then he told me like uh, he was going to stay in my place right for a while and then you know i asked him like, okay so let's watch a movie or whatever and then he said he never seen the matrix movies right when i asked him i was like oh why what like we, we're watching them right now what are you talking about? And then like back to back to back, three days in a row, basically we watched the all three Matrix movies. And uh, after, like soon after that, maybe a few days after, I don't remember, this like Mandela Effect YouTuber uh, came out with a video saying, like there's a new Mandela Effect or something with like Agent Smith uh, wearing a thick uh, metal tie clip, right? Mm. And uh, that was actually, when I saw that video, I literally oh, could not, yeah, yeah. yeah, I literally could not believe my eyes. And uh, that, as soon as I saw that video, I went right back to my files that I had on my laptop of these movie files. I opened each one of them one by one, 
uh, and then when I saw the, you know, the thick metal tie clip that uh, this, you know, the fashion industry never made fun of for some reason, uh, that just, just came up in all the movies. Then I was like, what is going on here? Like, I clearly, like, I just saw this movie. Uh, I, I told my friend who, who I saw the movie together with, and he told me, yeah, what is this? What, I, I don't remember this. This also looks super awkward to me because we just saw the movie. If all these agents submits, especially in the later movies, right? There's all of them together. And it, they, it looks, as like, so you can see from this picture, right? To me, this look, picture looked the super alien, right? And then I, I asked to my friend who just seen the Matrix movies, he said the same thing. It's like, what is this? And then uh, basically I went to the behind the scenes of the movie right away on YouTube. And I'm just seeing this type, you know, this thick tie clip everywhere. Then I was like, okay, let's let's try the costumes. What about the Halloween co Halloween costumes of mm. the Agent Smith? And I started seeing that there too. Then at that point, I was like, whoa, okay. Like I I was then super, you know, uh, materialistic agnostic ideas. I didn't believe in Mandel effect. I thought it was all about like misremembering, all about you know false memories and all these other things. Uh, but uh, once it happened to me, once I experienced it myself, then I started to realize, okay, I had to like be honest with myself. And then I went deep into research where I actually basically made this huge list on, I sent you this link uh, as well. And this, this like playlist, I'm not playlist, this uh, picture album uh, where you can basically, uh, there's 130 different examples of uh like a mandela effects where there's so many there's just so many right and uh so that's basically what it's uh, started like for me uh my yeah my the luke i am your father was a big one for me isn't it yeah i mean come on i mean i i, I grew up with that i mean it's <laughs> yeah and the interesting mm -hmm. thing with that is that the residues which i'll talk about where the actor himself when he's talking about it He's saying he's remembering like that. Yeah. He's remembering as, as that. So so this that's the interesting part, right? Uh, where we have all these residues, all these mm -hmm. proof, which which was the thing that actually made it uh, you know uh, real for me. Uh, after I you know came came to that type of awakening, the seeing seeing experience it myself. So uh, now I guess I can basically address uh, some uh, you know uh, criticism when it comes to Mandela Effect, because I think this is important to talk about as well, where, you know, people like to blanket, you know, this whole Mandela Effect phenomenon under the name of, you know, just saying like, you know, it's it's all misremembering. You're just remembering it wrong, right? And I, I have, I, after I experienced it myself, even though I believe that also, but now, I, now that I experienced it, I now wholeheartedly, of course, disagree with this. Uh, like, I believe this is like the quickest misjudgment judgment and like the biggest, you know, mistake. Yeah, because they're not people all make. garbage. They're just not. And and um, you, you when you have, you know, thousands if multiple thousands if not millions of people out there, all, you know, having these these memories of something else. They're not all, you know, uh, forgetting or screwing up. Granted, yes, yeah, some could be, you know, uh, just. Uh, some small things in 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 a, in a loss of memory or 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 misinterpretation, you know, maybe because something is really, uh, it's so close to what the original memory of what they thought was being said or done versus uh, whatever the real one that they're claiming is today. That yeah, the Forrest Gump is another one. I mean that you know that's come yeah. on. I mean that's. That one's that one is one that I connect with. Life is like like a box of chocolates. I mean, yeah. Christ. I mean, so, so, some of these I understand, right? Some of these I understand the criticism. For example, just you talking about this, uh, like uh, in the movie, his his mother actually says was, I believe, and then or or he's saying oh. is the other one is saying was. So you know, there there are these of course these little things, right? Yeah, it, that's it, it, a it, small it, small difference. Yeah. Yeah, these these there's these small small difference, but then there's these bigger ones. Though, you know, talking about the, you know, uh, this criticism, right? Like saying it all misremembering. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, when it comes to that, the simple fact that, you know, you just can't misremember something you never knew existed in the first place is 
is this is this thing uh, is all about because when you think about like how okay i had a food for like last week uh, like i i ate like a lentil soup and then the day before i ate uh let's say pasta and then you know i confirm it with my brother uh, and then he says no 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 actually you ate you know instead of pasta you ate the lentil soup that day not not the pasta day that wasn't the pasta day and that will be like misremembering oh okay i misremember that but if, if he says uh, actually you ate you know like total something different else right so, tell something different then that's like whoa what are you talking about i didn't eat that that that's what kind of mandela effect is right yeah. so to, to these people uh to the mandela effect people uh so so yeah i mean of course yeah there are you know tiny mandela effect change examples that are not even worth looking into as it would be like easy to you know see how one could either you know misremember them or easily mistake them but you know there are different explanations that could explain away like mandela effect examples but not not all of them definitely are, are no, like, not all of them yeah yeah i mean yeah. there's there it's just uh yeah um a big problem too is uh certain bad actors out there causing problems and muddying the waters with all this too and and that's a, a massive problem but uh it is what it is um but there's just certain ones that you know everyone knows what they experience what they re remember and uh when it's very 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 small subtle adjustments something like that like uh is or was like you were showing with the forest gum thing uh so if the mother's saying it uh the, i think the key thing is is if you connect with some of these is to if you can go and do what the vegan skeptic is go and try and you know find the evidence like you did with um the matrix you know and just see hey can i can i go back to a movie and and see this or that um yeah no the the one on the left there uh that's the one i remember yeah this is the one in, this mean, is the insane one but, for me, like you know i mean like so i would ha like see for instance that's the one i remember but i'm looking at this and i'm saying okay so if i go and look am i not going to find any of the ones on the left um, so the, you know, I mean like this, this one is clear as day to me, but you know, it, it's just, just cause it's on a site. I don't know. I would have to go and look personally on my own and say, okay, can I not find any images, you know, uh, maybe on like archive.org or something like that and really do a little research on something like that to see specifically, like it did, did that image on the right was that the only thing that ever existed up till you know when the mandela effect came out or like how you know that's that's the problem with it because the the waters are so muddy you, you do have to kind of dig and see where uh where the truth is and where the lie is exactly and that's that's where actually the residues come from because when you talk about how uh, if i were to go back and try to find all these other ones uh if i could find them you could but the the issue with that is that the original source changed right this is what mandela effect sure, kind of claims sure the, and, the and, very and if that's one. the case then then it should reflect that you know what i'm saying like i i should yeah. i should be able to essentially uh cut both those images the left and the right throw them in a reverse image search and then try and track down maybe even the original like for instance so if the one on the right is the original i i you try and find out where did that root from where where is the first time that image was posted or you know what year was it introduced uh in in the post office or, or wherever they were putting these things in the banks uh and and then you kind of see and prove it to yourself is this one of those real mandela effects because the key thing i'm really trying to stress here is that because there are so many disinformation agents with this topic it's it's a huge problem i I'm, I'm, i promise it's a big problem it's something it's massive so so even if like i mean even if you connect with something like that, the best thing to do is always go back and prove it to yourself. Like if you can't find that image on the left, then you've proved it to yourself. Then yeah, it's a legitimate Mandela effect, but 
some people could just throw them up there and 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 like there's just one person that sticks in mind like crazy i'm not even gonna mention his name but uh i know, know. know he does this all the time all the time so uh it's like where is you know that, that's, where, see, where is that's, it where is it root from you know that's my what i'm asking yeah, yeah, uh, that's a valid question. I because with every because this is this is a massive distraction thing, right? How do we know this whole thing is a distraction? We know this because if you go ask all of these mental effective guys, right? The ninety nine point nine percent of person of them, like they will. Do you know about soul trap? Do you know about how you're a you know creative being with immense powers? Ninety nine percent of them, they will come like, what what were you talking about? Because like that's when you know, you know, this is this is definitely a distraction topic. But this could, you know, turn into like in my case, you know, how it kind of made me realize, oh, wait a minute, you know, this is like, oh, this may be like a simulation, you know, this may prove simulation, this may all these changes, you know. And then what actually convinced me, because I, you know, I'm again coming from the I was coming from the super materialistic agnostic atheist perspective, where I didn't just accept this and I didn't believe in this for a while until it happened to me. Then I came into these residues thing where I'll show you actually right now one. So this is the Tinker Man, right? Uh, I connect with this one too. Yeah. So this one is very interesting because now we have tons of residues uh, online where there's actually Facebook groups just for residues alone residues like this one and where so we have the tinker statue where normally he rests his you know arm in the forehead right but for people at least some people remember that way some yeah. not but then we have these people clearly posing right in front of the statue and they are posing the the same way <laughs> where people remembered it before yeah. all yeah. these as you can see like all these people right yeah. so so now again we have tons of these yeah. uh, and you can find them on these just residue reddit groups residue facebook group so this was the thing that actually convinced me that there is something going on and once it happened to me also in real life of course and with other things like you know gandalf saying like uh, you know fly you fools instead of run you fools and, mm -hmm. and the, all, all these like uh, weird weird stuff that happened to me which is on you know if i were to like scroll more and there there's all, all these other ones that people can go look into you know i don't want to dive super deep into this one but the explanation of it though that's that's the part i want to kind of yeah get, get to because a lot of people you know uh try to explain this away with uh basically saying like this is oh this is turn doing it you know this is <laughs> or this is oh now i you know quantum jumped into this <laughs> timeline and then oh i wake up on a oh, i'm not waking up in this you know other timeline i'm oh, shifting please, I, I know. keep on shifting keep on shifting you know and uh Don't get that's, me going on that one man <laughs> exactly so so that's the that's the thing like these people basically so let's talk about though because some of these people kind of have uh good good reasoning why they kind of claim cern is doing it because because interestingly like we have this video that cern published in 2014 that's called we are happy at cern where they are you know dancing around and then there's this guy uh who is actually a scientist called john ellis and he's holding two signs right and one of them saying bond one the other one is saying uh, Ma uh, mandela and th when you look to james bond in the first james bond movie the actor's uh, name is basically barry nelson so then people uh, connect two and two and say, oh, that's basically like two signs are saying Nelson Mandela, which mm -hmm. is actually uh, when you look into it, right? Uh, that's like the one of the, that's like the major uh, famous uh, Mandela effect that a lot of people, uh, you know, misremembered, they say. And where, you know, this Mandela guy, uh, Nelson Mandela, you know, died, they thought he died in prison and that's, you know, a lot of people even remember seeing these news back to back to back every day, how he died in prison. Uh, but, you know, uh, in reality, he actually, after like serving 20 something years, he became like president of South Africa, I believe. Uh, but, you know, so, yeah. so the interesting part is with that one, uh, where this in the CERN video, they kind of deliberately show that. Uh, which is all, you know, again, this, this is at the end all breadcrumbs that they put for all these Mandela effect people to keep them in this loop at the end of the day, but I'll get to that. But basically then there's also other connections with, you know, Forrest Gump's mom, uh, who is like Sally Fields, uh, where, you know, also a lot of people remember 
her name to be like Sally Fields with an S at the end. But like she apparently said in an Oscar speech, you love me, you really love me. Like all the people remember this, but apparently she said, you like me right now, you like me. And then she went on David Letterman and then spoke about her brother, uh, Rickfield, who, who then she said he's a, uh, a physicist at CERN. Which was another interesting connection people made with that, and if you know the 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 CERN facility, right, uh, is like located near uh, French town named uh, Saint uh, Genis Poli, uh, which like apparently in the ancient days of Rome uh, housed the temple in you know uh, to the god Apollo, and at the time it was believed that his loca this location was a gate gateway to the underworld uh, where Apollo himself was bound. But uh, interestingly, now we have CERN has this 12 foot Hindu god Shiva statue. Mm -hmm. And apparently, this Shiva god is the third god that is most feared god yeah, of the, uh, the yeah, yeah. Hindu triad. Yeah, exactly. Like destruction, death, and war uh, she brings, right? He or whatever. And uh, in the statue, Shiva is basically surrounded by a wheel. Which is like reminiscent of you know uh, CERN's giant Hadron Collider. Mm -hmm. So so people put the two and two together and suspect, oh my god, maybe they are you know trying to bring in man monsters from that yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so there's all these like fear based stuff that's coming, right? Oh, that's uh, been going on for years. Oh, years yeah. that's been going on. Exactly, exactly. No, no wonder you know they, these guys are basically a keep on scaring the ever living you know shit out of people. And uh, of course, they have their logo 666, which we talked about 666, but they even have the 666 on their logo at CERN. And just like, you know, Google Chrome and Walt Disney and Vodafone. But uh, so this Hadron Crider, though, on their website, they mentioned because they actually mentioned on their website once, like how they want to open a portal to like higher parallel dimensions, like or, you know, get some mm -hmm. communication with like extra, extra dimensional channels, you know aliens basically and then apparently hawking once said oh you know we may not like what's coming through from that you know mm -hmm. like keep on scaring these people right and there were you know talks about you know how they're gonna create a black hole they're gonna destroy the whole thing so we can clearly you know keep on seeing easily how this is this whole thing is like a fear-based narrative and then they actually in 2016 though they made a creepy video that that's named murder at cern whatever like it came out where you know they there was like a this mock human sacrifice thing that happened and of course again this is just like to me that's like npcs doing that thing to fear you know to scare people basically uh but you know uh they spent then later on they basically spent uh like i mean in, in total they spent uh, 30 billion dollars to this just, just to find this higgs boson god particle and then you know 14 years afterwards you know they discovered this in 19 uh, what was it? Uh, Two thousand, forgot one or something. Uh, but like, uh, basically, it was though, early two thousands. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so two thousand nine, maybe late though. But uh, so far though, the interesting part with that is that what, what the equation of this uh, Higgs boson, mass of the Higgs boson, basically, mm -hmm. was exactly written in the 1988 homer simpson's you know yes. uh, like homer simpson wrote it on a chalkboard right uh, yes, so yeah, so yeah. what is this right like <laughs> oh you, you homer simpson discovered it was on like 14 years uh... ago like this is a massive joke and uh clearly kind of showing the script like oh see did we already planned this from a long time ago how cern was going to be you know created in you know 2008 we were gonna kick it off in 2009 and discovered it on 2012. Oh yeah, 2012, and which is which is when actually uh, it's uh, basically the, all these predictions about the world ending in 2012, right? And how it's basically uh, discovered the Higgs boson at 2012. So then uh, some people think that you know this was actually um, you know some people even to this day believe like the world ended then and then now we are in a parallel you know shifted in a different timeline type of stuff. But uh, due to, you know, everything that's going on in the last 10 years, even being more crazier than usual, perhaps. And uh, so, yeah, people started to even like that Mandela effect then started to go even more famous after all those years, even though, you know, in 2001, like in Coast to Coast Radio, this host called Art Bell was even mentioning, you know, uh, Nelson Mandela dying in prison, basically. So this, this has been known for a long time, but it started becoming kind of viral thing after, you know, 2012, especially. And 
So yeah, then people, you know, claim basically, oh, we are, you know, shifting to realities and all this stuff, you know, and then now recently at CERN, you know, they did the a similar thing, right? They take, you know, okay, they, they are like scaring people again saying, okay, now this time we're going to take, you know, two beams of light and in the 17 mile, you know, tunnel underground in the Switzerland, you know, we're going to yeah. you know, s- slam these protons together and make, you know, explosions we'll take, you know, six and a half trillion electron volts and smash that with another six and a half trillion mo- electron volts, you know, and who knows what happens? Who knows yeah, what happens, yeah, you know? We'll just see. <laughs> we'll just see, you know, you, you guys just watch. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, clearly. So, but, but, so I just talk all about all of this just to basically say, like, I believe this is my explanation basically to the Mandela effect because, you know, yeah, we have these people, you know, saying misremembering and then there's certain stuff, but, uh, I feel like, you know, once uh, one, you know, like these people don't realize the base truth, basically, of this planet being nefarious, being, uh, you know, the soul trap system, basically, that's where they fail the most, right? Uh, They don't have the understanding that, you know, we can not only astral travel, but, you know, we are actually basically very powerful creators. And uh, so once you don't have that base, of course, you're going to have, you're going to believe in all these fear narratives, of course, that's because that's the system is feeding to you. So, so, so yeah, like uh, when, so I, when I, what I look at it is basically this whole thing is kind of like a metaverse system, basically. Oh, uh, I, I, I totally agree. And there was something I was just thinking about that I'd like to, mm-hmm. to add here is, um, let me try and pop this up for you guys, actually. All right, so Franz Ferdinand, Ferdinand, I always can't pronounce that. Let me try and get this up here if I can. Let's see. All right, so do you see that? Hopefully it's coming through okay. Uh, Maybe it's not. Um, You may have to unshare at the moment, bro. Yep, I'll do that. Let me see. Stop share. I done it. Okay. Is this up here? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Uh, hold on one minute, one minute here. Let me see. Um, all right. So the license plate of, let me try and bring this up here. Is this working? Uh, come on, man. Ah, it's not going through. Why isn't it popping up? Anyways, uh, you know what I'll do? I'll just pop up uh, an image of it for you guys. If you just bear with me one moment. Okay, so so the license plate of Franz Ferdinand had the end date of World War II on the front of his car. And this was a big one for me as well because... It really, it, it's just, it's it's massive because here he is, you know, farting around in his car during the war. And meanwhile, the exact end date of the war is sitting right there. And what do you know? It just so happens to line up that the license plate A111118 is the exact date of the end of the war, which is 11, 11, 18. And it, it's just huge. So let me just, I'm just going to pop up the image for you just to give you an idea about the car. But, uh, you know, it's just one thing of many. And of course, uh, I believe he was murdered actually, but, um, there's just no end in sight to any of this stuff. It just goes on and on and on. So yeah, here is the image of the car. Uh, obviously, it's a kind of busted license plate now, but there are other photos that clearly show him in the car with this exact thing. And again, the end date of the war was 11, 11, 18, right on the front of his car. So... Just thought I'd point that one out there for you. So uh, feel free to con- hey, you know what we'll do. We're, we'll actually take a break. Uh, we're already at the hour and uh, yeah hour and a half mark. So we've gone 
way over. So we'll just take a quick five minute break and we're going to return and continue on with the Mandela effect. And there's still a lot more to come. We're going to be getting into NPCs, astral projection, lucid dreaming, uh, a little bit of Tartaria, more on the soul trap. And then of course, exiting the matrix and afterlife solutions. So hang in there with us for a little bit longer. Uh, just during our break here and we will be right back. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. We'll see you shortly. Thank you, brother. My pleasure. Can't wait to get into the deeper stuff. Or I'll just go and put some water. Or Thank you. 
Coming back, my friends. Yeah, come on in. Oh, shit. Okay. Sounds a bit weird. That is, it's because I have the. All right, yeah, the sound is weird because I have a, a noise suppression option uh, put up when Burke's on, and what happens is, is when the music plays, it 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 does that as well. So it should be okay right now. If it is a continuing issue, if if it sounds a little messed up, please let us know. But in the meantime, I think we should be all right. And welcome back. Thank you for your patience, everybody. And we are going to continue here with the Vegan Skeptic. And um, so we're going to continue on with the Mandela effect, I assume, right? I mean, uh, actually, like, uh, that's basically uh, what I need to say on that one. Okay. Because So, yeah, I mean, other than that, like, I, I was going to get into how uh, I think this reality function and how it is like the metaverse like in nature. Uh, but we can get into that later on too. And, uh, you know, kind of say that's where, you know, we know where they are mis mistaking. You know, they just got the base truth strong. They didn't discover, you know, the most important stuff that, and of course their shills on YouTube probably mm. never going to mention it. Uh, but so, so yeah, that's why this is just a rabbit hole that keeps on going and going, but at least, you know, it makes people kind of conscious on the, simulation theory uh, in that way and then hopefully some of those people hopefully all of them will discover you know eventually your 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 channel you know Wayne Bush's website dance channel and yeah but uh I guess I can you know go into more on how my like I right after because Mandel effect then came in the you know the lucid dreaming and astral projection stuff and that's a, a another big topic that we can get into great great yeah so uh basically like so i discovered as i said you know the gematria and then soon after you know i was you know just getting lost in that for a long long time writing all these articles about it and then uh i eventually uh, discovered the mandel effect and then i eventually discovered uh all these youtubers right astral projection youtubers so at that moment uh 
then I started to uh, be open to spirituality more. Uh, and I thought it was impossible. I thought on my end, I was always going to be, be staying, you know, agnostic atheist. Mm -hmm. I was like so confident in my beliefs. Like I'm convincing everyone. I have a website. I'm debating everyone, destroying everyone, you know, like thinking like all this. And then, uh, so I thought, you know, it's impossible. This, this is it. I've discovered the truth up until, you know, all this stuff happened to me, the, you know, shutdowns. And then I, you know, at home alone, kind of more and more diving deep into these things. And then, you know, it hit me, you know, oh, wait a minute, this lucid dreaming thing, this astral projection thing, because this thing was very early on in middle school. I somehow got into for just a brief amount of time where I discovered this super gothic site about lucid dreaming. And I remember like reading it, but at the same time, like this guy was talking about, okay, you gotta, you know, uh, burn some candles and do this and that. I'm, I'm like, what is this? Um, you know, I, I then I forgot about it basically. Uh, that's all I remember. But you know, once I ran into this again with a more open up, open mind, I was like, okay, there's something to this. And then since like I'm like, uh, I saw all these YouTubers that I started to subscribe. Like I couldn't get enough of the astral projection content now. Just like before, before it was all about you know atheism, and then it was about you know all this cold reading stuff. Like I, I was like trying to debunk like oh it's astrology is you know bs it's all cold reading it's all this and that and then i i got into of course now i don't believe that but uh then you know all this stuff and yeah eventually now with an open mind i discovered all these youtubers and once i start to listen some of them uh slowly but surely you know keep on listening one by one and then i kind of opened the <coughs> turkish youtubers on astro predictions kind of they have similar stories they all talk about it so then I basically ended up subscribing to you know, tens of different astral projection channels. Every time they uploaded, I kind of uh, watched all these videos. And all of a sudden, right, uh, in started to, I started to remember my dreams for the first time almost. Like even though I, maybe I would see a dream once a few months or something, I don't remember. And I used to consume a lot of the, the good, good, you know. And uh, But now... Uh, I, I stopped that and then you know dreams started to come back in and then I now I was more open to spirituality and boom all of a sudden I remember these dreams and then in one of the dream in one of the dreams uh if I see this you know like a godly figure sitting on top of like a golden throne with a long long beard <laughs> exactly I mean long beard and then he's like trying to speak to me and I just can't understand him and I'm like as soon as I woke up to I'm like oh this is it this is like my brother was talking about the 5d shift now i'm the i am the light warrior one of one of the 144,000, maybe you know <laughs> and and like and soon after that dream what happened is i saw i'm like in this now a building in a dream where all of a sudden 11 11 is written literally everywhere like in blue color and uh Isn't it crazy how that i think a lot of people experience the 11 11 early on in their awakening. I've spoken to so many people that say that it's just one of those numbers that it's like the first one that appears. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, in mass, in mass, you know, sightings, I guess. Yeah. And I, I, I see, I see that as like just an automated system because, you know, since the system already got it covered on the YouTube, when someone, you know, Googles it or YouTube, you know, searches on YouTube, what is the meaning of 1111? Angel and, well, numbers. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like all these BS about angel numbers, this, you know, yeah. you're, you're yeah. ascending to that. And then yeah. this is just eternal dangling carrot, you know, Ke keeps on popping up with that, you know, sprinted thing. Yeah. And it's cl it's clear how automated it is. It, it is you know, it is. It's, it's just so clear how, you know, of course, you know, this whole place is basically based on numbers when we're talking about code, right? To the, when you go to the most basic level, like, you know, the language is like C, it's all like, you know, and then we go deeper, like it's all ones and zeros in in, in there. And just like they showed in that movie, right? What was that movie? Uh, how the, the how the guy was seeing the, after the guy died, right? Uh, defending your life, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, the code is right there. And that's from, I think, the... Nine, like early 90s or late yeah early 90s mid 90s and yeah he's sitting there behind the desk and it's at the very beginning of the movie 
I don't know, probably like the first 20, 30 minutes. And uh, he's like, uh, he's basically the, the, the public defender for the person who just died, which is uh, Albert Brooks, if I recall. And, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, I just let me look at your file. He looks at the file and he's going through the pages. It's all zeros and ones. I mean, it's massive truth bomb in our face before any of this stuff was any Matrix talk was really being discussed, you know, in the mainstream or or even in almost any semblance of the word. Yeah, and, and in the poster of the movie on IMDb, right? At the yeah. very top of it, I believe it says, you know, this is the, now the first, uh, like, what is it in English said? Uh, I think uh, first day of the rest of your life or something, isn't No, this is the first depiction of, like, a real afterlife. Oh, or yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, I think it's something like it's kind of based on a true story or, or, or something like that. Yeah, no, you're right. There's, like, a huge truth bomb just in the in the cover art of it. Yeah, I just checked right now. It says the f the first true story of what happens after you die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and, and then of course the guy, you know, is basically tricked and like he's being past lives, you know, he's being judged and this whole thing. And then this uh, archon basically not archon, like the parasite, right? The AI bot, I would rather tell them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically says uh uh, you know, oh, see, I can read, only I can read this file, and then this guy can't read it because it's all ones and zeros. <laughs> uh, it kind of tells you, you know, what kind of an AI type of like a computer programming based type of system we may be dealing with, you know? Exactly. Math. What year do you show that it was made? Do you still have it up? Yeah, 1991. Okay, 91. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, Crazy. that's a massive one. And uh, yeah, when it and comes they have to the past life pavilion. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like the truth on top of truth. Like, uh, it's so much in that movie, and of course, the Soul movie, some other movies. But yeah, like, it's that, just that, like, that's a massive one. People got to watch. Is, oh yeah, uh, defending your life and and Soul by Disney Pixar. Those are must sees because they spell it all out, and it, and it, and it aligns with with at least my research. I know your research too. I mean, it just lines up so perfectly. Yeah, it's a movie, but it, it, it shows that what we're dealing with, the deception, the level of deception that we're dealing with in all of this. It's in your face. It's crazy. Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. But like uh, so we were yeah, talking about like these synchronicities, right? And uh, that definitely like this movie and all these other places kind of indicate like this is all based on numbers type of. Uh, so, of course these many of these synchronicities are kind of coming to us with numbers especially 11 11 because ones and zeros that's the you know one 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 we are talking about and uh so and and it's the master number right the most powerful number 11 mm -hmm. so it's doubled 11 11 and uh then yeah yeah of course the system is saying oh these angel numbers you're ascending or oh, you're hearing some things on your you know ears it's like it's your ascending yeah and uh anyway but uh so to, to me, it's like just uh, clearly this whole AI based system kind of uses the technology. Like it's basically a sentient being all around us. Like I see this whole place as everything. We're talking about like the rocks, the plants, the animals, the, it, it kind of like almost a, a lot of the, all of it at least, not like all the animals, not like all the people, of course, but uh, it's kind of has a consciousness to it and it's because it's a hologram based reality it's a dream based reality yep. and uh, that's kind of where i was getting at with the lucid dreaming because once i actually started to lucid dream once i actually started to do like these techniques where i can go maybe into a little bit that was stuff too so just people also learn about it because i i've done many courses right and i got some good techniques to do but uh so yeah like once i do these deepening techniques where you basically make the dream better than real life at that point, you know, I came to a realization, but wait a minute, if this is looking, sounding, you know, everything is better, I can fly, all this stuff that I'm not limited now, this is just way better. And this feels like real life, but way better. So then what is life but a shittier dream, you know? So that's when I started to make the first connections with that too.
Yeah, no, that's it's incredible how it it, it just unravels itself. And I think a lot of, I think everything, actually, not a lot of it, but I think everything has to do with our, our determination to seek answers and truth and be unrelenting about it and just keep looking and looking and looking and not being satisfied until uh, you've kind of covered as many bases as you can. And even then, you're still never going to have the full answer, but uh it's it's amazing what can happen when you just continue to ask questions and 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 can also fine-tune discernment over time like you know getting sucked into a bunch of um different narratives that really don't have your best interest at heart and realizing how deeply embedded the system is um with things like truth. So for um, as many things as we can learn and grow with, uh, there are also um, the flip side of the coin where we can get sucked into, you know, complete horseshit narratives. Exactly. Yeah. It's just so many out, are out there mm -hmm. to be stuck by. It's so, it's so in such an intricate system. It's not even funny. It, it's, it, it, it is impressive. You know, I hate to give it credit, but I, I do tip my hat because it's freaking impressive how well thought out this whole place is. Yes, 100%. Like, I, I, I don't even necessarily believe in, like, kind of even like any kind of coincidences almost. Like, actually, like I used to be a coincidence yeah, theorist yeah. before, a uh, massive one, but now it's, like, clear, you know, this system... It's basically like you know you're just like plugged into just put on the vr thing you know how they they have now trying to put ads in the vr and <laughs> you know it's like it's they know where you're looking at like we know from akashic records from you know the past life reviews we know that this system already kind of has everything recorded kind of like they say what they say about our subconscious right and uh it's it's all recorded it's just before you were born it was all there with all your past lives like before you basically entered the matrix they all got it under control and, uh, and yeah, you know, some people claim they can you know, reach it on astral projection with archaic records, try to see some stuff. Of course, matrix could easily mess with it, all this stuff too. And um, but yeah, like uh, that's very that's the interesting part where it's just you know in 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 some ways cards are stacked against us. But then again, I feel like this service you know this terms of service uh, respects the rules that it has. And one of them, you know, the free will, of course, like they're not going to you know, throw you into the white light. Like as far as I, I, I can see from all these experiences, like they're, they're just going to trick you to go there. Yeah. They're just going to. That's, that's all they need to do. Exactly. They don't need to, they, they barely, it's, it seems so clear that, you know, the effort that they have to put in with all this is, is so minimal because people don't question it. They don't think anything of it. And, and if they, if, if they come at you, when you're just crossing over and haven't had time to uh, to readjust to to your true self, it's the most opportune moment imaginable. You just came out of a, 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 a human body. You just came out of something related with time. And then, of course, like I was talking about in yesterday's video uh, on Melissa is, you know, you have this the deathbed visions and visitations where like they're prepping you and trying to to screw you over before you've even left the damn body trying to get you to consent and and carry along with all this stuff it's it's nuts and and so it, for us i mean it the whole system is so elaborate and and well thought out that it, it's close to impossible to reclaim your essence and 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 come from a point of sovereignty and liberation and non-interference because of how well thought out it is because they and because they have access to all your memories and everything else they can use it and, and and either guilt trip you or make you love or care or connect or attach to whatever it is and it just goes on and on so uh i think yeah again the, the whole point is to disconnect and not get involved with any of these attachments non-interference sovereignty liberation self-protection shielding whatever you want to call it 
and just go about your business without having to answer to any being. I mean, it's, it's, it seems very simple, but they really have thought of almost everything, but they can't fully contain us. And that's, they, they probably wish they could. And that's why the whole thing is starting with this transhumanism thing again, is to further contain us as if we're not veiled enough, but it, it, it's a, it's such a dynamic and deceptive system, uh, through and through. Still yeah. got to make the best of it though while you're here. You still got to enjoy life and and make the best of it while you're here. No doubt. Can't, exactly. Can't sit and and sulk and and be negative twenty four seven. It's not going to help because all you're going to do is feed the system. Exactly. Like I once we talk about solutions too, I have a lot a lot to talk about the solutions and how you know uh, this is our last time. Like if you don't get like you know uh, I'll get more deeper into that one. Uh, yeah, so enjoy yourself, right? Yeah. Hey, it's the last yeah. time. Got to enjoy yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Like I'm, I'm sure. Like once we are out of here, which like you know, time doesn't exist, right? And once we are kind of out of here, it will probably feel like nothing anyway. And then once we look back after you know getting out of this matrix, uh, it, it will probably seem like oh, like you know, I knew that was the last time. In that indeed ended up being the last time. But maybe, you know, I wish I kind of did this to that way, kind of maybe cared about my health in this way, maybe did some, you know, exercises, some sports, some uh, maybe, you know, played or, or played more games, played more video games, play, do whatever I, you want to do, you know? And uh, so, yeah, that's basically uh, where I'm at with that one. Ah, nice, nice. Okay, so where, where are we headed uh, uh, to next? Where, so, where yeah. Going ahead? I kind of wanted the uh, screen share to go into a little bit uh, the techniques and stuff I learned about lucid dreaming that I can I think would benefit people because I think this is the most one of the most important topics uh, to be focused on uh, and yeah and then maybe talk about some of the interesting lucid dreaming experience I had which made me realize even different things about what's actual dreams are kinda and what's what's going on with all that stuff so Great. I can maybe Great. yeah start to share yeah screen. let's let's talk about uh you know your you you know your your techniques and and what got you into lucid dreaming and and some of the experience you've had i know i've heard quite a few but yeah i think uh the brainwave states are important so yeah feel free to take over whenever you're ready so yeah basically so people can see my screen right now yeah looks good Nice. So yeah, uh, this is the biggest thing uh, with the lucid dreaming, right? Because uh, we know that there are the you know the REM cycles, which is called basically rapid eye movement cycles, uh, where we dream, uh, where we you know can astral project, and then there's these non-REM deep sleep cycles that we go through, and the deepest being this one, the fourth one. So basically, it, this this dark gray show show us where the ramming ram you know cycle happens when the dreaming happens versus these white ones all these white ones uh, show the non-ram so as you can see right when we start to sleep right here at the very beginning it starts with actually the ram cycle and uh, which means you can actually this is why a lot of people recommend that you can actually as soon as you start sleeping you may as well like set up a position where you are not maybe not too comfortable and then uh, maybe lay on your back if you're not sleeping like that, which is what I do. And then uh, kind of start to, you know, relax, do some deep breathing techniques, like not deep, but, you know, there's these techniques that uh, almost like a cheat code that I do where I kind of, you know, breathe through my nose uh, for like maybe five to six seconds. Yeah. And then initially it's like four seconds, but then I keep increasing that. Yeah, and and then, yeah. yeah. And then basically I hold it for again, like, you know, maybe seven seconds, you know, six seconds, five seconds. And then I exhale uh, again, five to, uh, five to six seconds. So if, if you keep on doing this and then going to hold, you hold your breath again, uh, you know, five seconds, do this thing, all repeat it right away. I, I start the on, you know, almost after the first thing that I do after like 15 seconds passes, I start the on and basically, uh, that's a very effective cheat code of, uh, almost like getting ready to sleep, which makes me go into the dreaming state faster, right? Uh, the sleeping state. So 
So, but as you can see, you know, so that's, that's what you do. And then you relax your body, you relax all parts of your body, basically. Then, uh, you know, you kind of start to not move any muscle, any like eyes don't move anywhere. You just don't move until your whole body goes to sleep. Like, and then you're, you know, basically brain, uh, like your mind stays conscious by your body asleep. Once you come to that state, uh, which you can kind of notice, uh, it's like this flashing on your eyes you know the flashing lights or you know this scenery this weird imagery and then you basically at, at that moment or you hearing weird stuff like a dreaming noises or whatever mm -hmm. uh, at that at that time you can actually basically do some techniques like you know uh, climbing up a rope or you know you're in a yamak like lift you know swinging from right to right to left which one of the time actually you know, uh, worked for me brilliantly. As soon as I was, I realized that I am in that state where, you know, my body is sleeping and my mind is conscious. And I did the, uh, swinging from you know, left to right. Boom. I was already like connected to my body swinging from left to right. So I had an even bigger, you know, swing. Boom. I just popped off in between, in the right middle of my room where I can see my body. I can see my room, you know, and then I thought about walking. Boom. I just landed on the floor, started getting out of my room and stuff. So there's yeah, this. I did the rocking thing too. It, it is it is effective, and it, but it is kind of amazing how all of us can have certain techniques that work uh, for each of us. You know, like a, one thing that might work for me or you might not work for you know other people. Uh, it, it's I think it's really important to find what works best for you as an individual. But yeah, I, I, the rocking one was a was a big one for me too yeah and that's probably like how maybe natural too like how in at least in turkey you know mothers usually uh yeah, you know yeah. you know they, yeah. they swing you right put you into yeah, these rocking beds back and forth rocking yeah, back good and point forth. yeah yeah so a really good point yeah that's yeah that was that was interesting and uh yeah there's a lot of a lot more of these techniques like not not just these obviously and i, I would definitely recommend yeah like people try many of them some people just uh, don't even do they just imagine getting up which is actually the first thing you should try like uh, as soon as you catch that moment of your body you know sleeping your mind is awake you actually try to get up as if you're getting up in real life but not without you know moving your muscles up obviously and uh, that many people just get up right away like that and then you know sometimes they just try to imagine uh, they are in front of the kitchen or something boom they are there so there are even these imagination techniques that works or they just imagine like they're now walking to the table, they lift something, they, they try to like feel what it feels like and boom, they find themselves there doing that. So, but with, when it comes to this, this uh, table here, uh, this is, this is very basically scientific and uh, it works wonders. And this, this is where the wake back to bed method kind of the logic behind it comes from. And so, yeah, like, as you can see here, right away, as soon as we sleep, it's actually in the, we are in the dreaming astral projection type of state first, but of course most people are, don't remember this or you know they just right away. It's a quick time anyway, like probably a few minutes, right, or even way less. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then boom, it starts right. The non-REM sleep starts and it gets deeper, deeper, deeper. Uh, and then after one and a half hour is almost over, then we go right back into you know the dreaming state where actually a lot of people at these stages uh, move from left to right, like they briefly wake up. And also in the REM cycles, people have actually sleep paralysis, paralysis experiences that they don't remember because you know how it's like mm -hmm. almost like a protection mechanism of the body where you know you don't, you don't want to act out your dream. Yeah, so uh, so there are about some people, some lucky people who many of them don't consider themselves lucky because you know system messing with them and they are fearful because of it and all, all this stuff or the, their fears you know basically reflect and uh, that type of side they find themselves in that type of cycle right but in you know once you know actually these sleep paralysis moments if you catch them you can easily turn them into you know loose loose streaming or astral projection experiences via the techniques doing the techniques that i mentioned or other ones that are out there so but as you can see like the first one and a half hours is a deep deep sleep cycle where it's, it's just super deep you go and then all of a sudden in the second cycle it's less deep right and then the REM cycles increase so after three hours now we have a bigger uh, dreaming uh, stuff like a dreaming uh, place and then after that now, now there's less of a you know a deep sleep and then we are even bigger so then after all these six hours passes now you can see like there is so much uh 
time for where you spend in, in a REM cycle, rapid eye movement, you know, dreaming cycle. And, prime, uh, prime window. Prime window. And this is why, like after usually five hours, you know, five and a half hours, six hours passes at this moment, people try to wake up and they try to shrug off the druggish effects that, you know, sleeping gives us, right? Basically the mind wipe, mind wipe mm -hmm. effects almost. And uh, so, so yeah, that they basically try to stay awake for, you know, uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, like kind of like up until one hour, even some, some people recommend 30 minutes so that you kind of get off all that druggish feeling fully. Then you go back to sleeping. And once you go back to sleeping, look where you start sleeping from, you know, this is, you kind of start right away in a dream, dreaming state, basically, where now you're more awake because you shrugged off that uh, druggish feeling. So now you have better chances of actually realizing it's a dream and waking up. And there's a lot of, you know, layout checks you can do to like, as soon as you kind of realize, oh, it's a dream. And you, what I do personally is I basically plug my nose to see if I can breathe through them. And as soon as I breathe through my nose, basically I realize, oh, okay, this is like a dream. And that kind of gives me a lot of lucidity uh, by itself, which I try to repeat uh, every one minute to get, not lose that lucidity because dreaming is kind of all about trying the system automatically making you forget, you know, uh, and making you lose your lucidity, right? So you got to kind of have these techniques in handy, which I'll talk about. Uh, but as you can see, you know, this is why, this is where wake back the bed that it comes from. And the, more, the majority of the rest of the sleep, especially after, as you can see here, like seven, seven and a half hours, eight hours, like it's all in REM cycles all of a sudden. So then, then you'll have way more opportunities to become lucid in what wants to sleep you know, around like after sleeping eight hours, like once you go through the ninth hour of sleep in that it's all around cycle there. So, so then now, uh, we can talk about basically, uh, what is this one? Okay. Not, uh, so yeah, then there is, uh, this website called, uh, rampspace.net where there is this guy called, I mean, I forgot his name, Michael something. And, uh, he has like the best, he's doing everything for free. And he has the best book on this method called the phase technique where he you want, to, you want to zoom in just a little bit on that. Yeah. So this is the book. Oops. This is the book. And uh, yeah, Michael uh, Raduka. And this book is free. You know, you can download it or buy it on Amazon. And uh, yeah, like in this book, he goes into super details, but if you're not, if you don't like reading books right here, this one is like the YouTube video he made, uh, three of them, uh, where it's she, he's basically talking about uh, all the techniques, like the phase techniques. Uh, and I want to pop up that link for people to save for later. Is that in our chat? Uh, this the link of the book. Yeah. Oh, or yeah. and the and the video, like I, whatever you got, whatever that page is. Yeah. Uh, I can, oh, this you can page, just pop yeah. it in the Let, chat yourself too. If yeah. You yep. I, I just did. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Are you pop it in no, YouTube or did you pop it in, um, in the live chat? Zoom. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. No, my pleasure. And, uh, basically, yeah, these, this video like has been a you know breakthrough for me because this guy basically couples the wake back to bed method that I just mentioned where, you know, you wake up after five and a half hours, you try to stay awake. You maybe focus on, you know, lucid dreaming uh like your previous ones uh, that you had like uh, what i do is basically uh, you know, as soon as i wake up and if i remember the dream i record it in the memo app and then i kind of listen them after a while like by listening the ones from one and a half years ago and i already forgotten about them long time ago right but i'm like whoa this is what i saw it's interesting you know and i give all i try to give a lot of details on colors on everything that ha mm -hmm. happened so then when i wake up and do the wake back to bed method i kind of focus on like listen to those experiences i'm staying away from my bed uh because you know uh, that's kind of kills the druggish feeling you know way better if you stay up you know maybe go you know even get fresh air and then come back that's not even kill the druggish effects more and then you know you kind of and it's the this is where where the intention part comes in which is huge as we know already with soul trap and everything else with the exit plans but here is also very important where you know as soon as like you go back to bed and you start to kind of see like you're gonna sleep soon then you kind of tell yourself you know uh in your head like okay i'm gonna be 
you know, more uh, vigilant in the dream. I'm going to remember my dreams. I'm going to, you know, be lucid in my dreams. Whatever. Like you just keep on repeating a little bit. Uh, and some people just repeat until they sleep, which I wouldn't do. Uh, but uh, like I just repeat it like three times and then I just naturally wait until I sleep. But that intention, like I noticed that like, when I have had that intention versus when I don't do that is just a massive difference of remembering, you know? Mm. So that's definitely proves also how, how much intention works. And that's definitely something I recommend. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I, I think documenting all experiences is so important. So, uh, you know, if it's, you know, even if you just have a, a just a regular dream, uh, then, you know, as soon as you at, wake up or, 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 yeah, the voice memo apps are great. You just, you have it, you know, uh, right on your home screen or your phone, you just click it and hold the voice memo, uh, microphone icon up and you just say whatever happened and then you have it saved because how many times have we all dreamt and said, oh, yeah, oh, I'll remember that dream. I'll remember it. And then, you know, you, you, you go back and you go, oh, man, I wish I wrote it down or I wish I did a voice memo or something. Yeah, just document these things. It's 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 a good way to um, just expand your consciousness and be more aware and 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 document your journey i mean it, it's uh because once you forget it you forget it that's it it's gone you're not going to get it back you may recall little bits and pieces of it but it's really fresh in the first few minutes like it's like you know i dreams waking up from dreams or lucid dreams or any of these things can really fall by the wayside almost within 10 15 30 minutes tops usually and once it's gone it's gone so take advantage of documenting your experiences my friends yes exactly because like we know like what i do actually also with that is when i wake up right and it goes well with the, the face techniques uh is like you don't actually you train your body to not move so that you stay can stay still stay in, in this experience of you know uh, body sleep mind awake and uh, many people don't move and do these techniques which i'll now talk about because that's very important uh, and that helped me a lot with these guys technique but right before that actually like when i wake up also before the beginners especially this helps a lot and even to the advanced people this uh boosts their experience where you wake up you know you maybe listen to your past experiences you know you of course always record them as soon as you you know wake up and not move and try to do the acid prediction stuff but then basically what i do is also maybe you know take some some people take supplements like you know 5 htp vitamin b6 some people take you know msm mm -hmm. they say it's good but you know mostly i kind of go with the even the most natural of them like the what well, i do make, i like the teas right like the mugwort tea or blue lotus tea or the dream herb uh, tea i kind of use one of them or sometimes i mix all of them uh, yeah. but that helps a ton like yeah, yeah. when you wake up when you wake up and do that and drink a little bit and you know get your mind off of the, this thing like uh, focus on loose streaming focus on your intention go back to sleep even this would be just one minute and then it's, it's still gonna basically eventually work but even you do it for five minutes ten minutes then it's like almost more so guaranteed you know over over some practice of course and uh and yeah uh, basically then comes the techniques of this guy which I'll just briefly talk about, but people yeah, can go. I just, I just wanted to say really quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mugwort is, uh, works oh, yeah. wonders. It really does. Um, I've had a lot of good luck with it. And, uh, the Lotus too is helpful, but, uh, I, I've mugwort specifically, I've, I've really, um, had success with. So yeah, I think that's a great recommendation for everyone listening. Yes, yes. Uh, same here. Same here. Like mugwort has been a huge game changer for me. Doesn't even have to be a tea. Like people, some people just, uh, you know, smoke that like quit weed, just roll mugwort in, 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 with the grinder, you know, they just smoke that. And that's kind of what helped me too. Uh, but uh, that's like, it's insane how uh, I would like vape it myself. And when I wake up, go back to sleep, you know, and just right away, basically, I'm like more way more wise in the dreams where it's like a 
kid play to to realize in these dreams that it's dreams and kind of like almost like this system you know with the terms of service thing i talked about how it's kind of almost structured to wake like have these clues right that uh, if you you know follow them eventually you know if you're wise and you you know don't fall for all these traps which are insane amount of them that you can talk about later on but uh like yeah then you know you kind of realize what's really going on and uh you know uh with this one uh this guy has amazing like good techniques that work for me and the, one of the techniques that he uses basically is you know training his like be beforehand he does these kind of like meditations basically uh where throughout the day you know you kind of get used to doing this uh, action where as soon as you wake up you don't move the muscle anything you don't open your eyes uh, and then you basically try to get up right like almost like you woke up but without you're using of course your muscles and then if that like you try to do that for three seconds then for five seconds uh you basically like try to you know there's a few techniques like you try to some people try to imagine that they're in front of the uh that they're in their you know kitchen doing some dishes or whatever like they're do they're in their kitchen they try to imagine that they are teleporting uh to places and then some of them you know then like you try to do that for five seconds you try to basically do the like swinging method that we talked about and these other methods mm -hmm. that we talked about these are also come in so you just take like three techniques and then you do them for five seconds five seconds five seconds then you go back to acting like you're sleeping like you actually act basically for five seconds that you're gonna okay I'm, I'm done i'm going back to sleep and after that five seconds is over uh then you this is like just so like you this is like you're tricking your tricking your brain like almost like cheat codes of life basically and, and uh then you basically just repeat the whole thing again for three seconds you try to get up five seconds you know you try to swing from left to right for five seconds you try to move your hand maybe go from through the bed right like not move your hand literally but your you know etheric hand one astral hand and then make it go through the bed for five seconds and then for five seconds you you know try to climb a rope or whatever but then you know again act like sleeping so you actually do this whole thing for four times repeated for four times or for a total of a minute basically and then you give up and there are a lot of people who, who actually do it in the fourth try like they actually become lucid they actually astral project in the fourth uh, try after they repeated all this uh, all these things and so that's basically uh that and then and then comes the once you you know achieve this like you you did all these meditations like you did it 20 times where you kind of memorized what to do as soon as you wake up you're not moving you're doing all these things i mentioned mm -hmm. and then once you're you know lucid and once you're astral projection then comes the other techniques so this is all just a brief explanation but yeah these videos explain perfectly and in much more detail but uh so yeah then comes the plan of action right this is the most important thing like you beforehand doing these loose streaming has been as well travel you got to have a plan of action a lot of people you know okay i'm gonna do this go to this adventure do this but the the issue with astral projection especially is like uh your memory uh, of it is even like harder to kind of get compared to even dreams right and that's a lot of people mentioned this initially especially and so that's why they suggest that actually you have a plan of action of something very short something like you just go to your door you yell or whatever you do something you go right back to your body and try to remember that and that alone helps a lot to people because you know a lot of people have all these other as i said like adventures i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that but they when they get come back maybe they did that but when they came back they couldn't hold all these hold on to the, all these memories because they didn't practice holding on to the memories of just five seconds so you got to kind of build up mm. in, in a lot of the cases and this is why in your first plan of action it should be something you know small and then once you achieve that though then the party begins right now, that now you know that you are more than your body now you know there is this thing you definitely astral projection is real definitely like all these millions of people around the, all the countries is not lying you know and that's kind of what i i initially didn't believe, of course believe in some of them but after a while of seeing all these like basically in my little 50th person of who explained okay I, this happened to me too i saw my body i did this i'm like okay like there's no way all these people are lying all these people are crazy so then basically uh yeah i tried to do them when it happened to me then i realized same thing with mandel effect and kind of same thing with the npc stuff which you know we'll get to i, I can i can't wait for that one of course yes. and yeah it's kind of a good one 
And uh, but yeah, so so then uh, you do this, you know, you now know the what to do for a minute. You practice it many times. Now you're doing it. You have a plan of action. First one is small. Uh, other ones now as big ones. In in his books, he gives a, a lot of you know uh, examples what you can do. And if you even you know YouTube like uh, search just you know what to do in a loose stream, there's insane amount. Like, you can become any animal you want. You can do anything you want. Like you can say. Okay, now I'm gonna walk on the wall, and boom, the wall becomes like you walk on the wall, you know. Uh, so, uh, anything you have intent to and ima can imagine can happen, basically. And, and that's uh, that's the important part right there is realizing the power of intention. How yeah. we are the king of the castle. We are the we are the, we control our own destiny, but um, just don't doubt yourself realize your true power and having these types of experiences are a huge part of self-discovery yes definitely like this 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 was the biggest game changer to me like then i couldn't deny anything now then i get rid of all the spirit you know superficial beliefs i had you know super materialistic beliefs i had rather and uh so then basically the other stuff that's very important is you like out of the five senses that we have right uh you basically start on like uh, you do focus on two senses because these two first one being touch sensation of touch the second one being visuals you only focus on these two senses in in, in a way where uh you know the dream state is actually built up by the sense of touch initially and then comes the visuals because there's been a lot of times where the dream basically becomes uh, like all black, right? Everything ended, but I can still touch before, like I was in a room, let's say I, I had a table. Now, after everything went dark, in many cases, you have still like a window of like five seconds or more, a little bit more, uh, where you can go to there and touch the table, even though it's dark, like you can still move around. And many times, just because of knowing this, I when it became dark, I just went try to get grab an object or just grab myself if I there is no objects around right I just grab my hair try to like get the sensation of what hair feels like my face try to look to see my eyes or whatever but first it's the sensation of touch so you try to always focus on the touch that's which is what dreams are built out of first when it comes to sensation and then the visuals comes in so uh, when it comes to uh, doing these uh, things for example uh, let me try to think what, what was it uh, here basically so as i mentioned you know you focus on the touch and then uh, you try to once the visuals come back in right or you, do you have the visuals uh, you can see the dream but usually if the dream is like is blurry let's say it's not perfect it's not like your real life as soon as you notice that you stop and you try to focus on touch again because uh, and uh, like try to rub your hands especially like what i do is i rub my hands together or i clap with my hands try to hear the sound of it at the same time try to feel my the sensation of my hands and that kind of thing definitely deepens your experience these are called the deepening techniques and uh which this guy explains in a much deeper way and then basically uh so then you focus on okay the, the, is the visuals good then you say like clear now clarity now 4k 8k now whatever like i i say all this stuff and then boom right away like you know as soon as you command kind of it starts to happen because once you have more of your sensations back you can control the environment better and you can you know command certain things to make it even better or imagine things even, even better uh and then uh so yeah that's that's the first thing that we, we need to focus on basically and then uh once what i do though is uh once basically his dream is stable now it's better i see it better than real life basically and then now all my sensations is there sometimes i like i maybe grab some grass or whatever i try to smell it okay the smelling sensations is now just like my real life yeah, i try a big one yeah yeah i, I try, I try to, to interact to with those the, the senses in the dream state yeah yeah and again like the biggest thing is the touch it has to be a touch first because of how dreams are built by touch what, which is why what i not only just rub my hands but I, sometimes i grab the objects like if i grab a glass i try to feel the glass how glass yeah. feels like yeah. then it even becomes more deeper of an experience more stable you're you're zoning in more on self-awareness and uh just 
yeah, taking more lucidity, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so then uh, what I do after the visuals are super clear, then basically the dream starts for me, right? Then I can do anything I want because now uh, everything is better than real life. Now I have a control of my, you know, dreaming body, basically. Then many people even, you know, just enjoy it. They do anything they want, right? Fly, whatever, imagine, teleport to places. Like you got to level up your avatar basically at that point, because I remember initially it was hard to pass through walls. It was hard to, pa hard to pass through glasses. And initially I kind of become better at that. And then I, you know, even flying and other things, because you got to really see it in your mind and then do it almost, you know, or, you know, just do it like that versus you got to forget about the physical stuff. Like yeah, about yeah I think because of the crossover, it, 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 it messes with us. Like, uh, oh, you know, we just came from the physical body. We're used to these limitations. So it kind of, um, uh, it's almost like a self-imposed firewall, so to say. So yeah, you gotta really push yourself and, and, and manipulate what's around you to, uh, succeed to, to burst through the walls, so to say. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, then basically, so I enjoyed the dream and then, uh, at some point though, dream is ending. Right. And of course, while dreaming, never, ever focus on something more than like two seconds. Like if you grabbing something, a glass, let's say, or, you know, a glass of water or whatever, and then you keep on looking at it, like dream is going to end after three seconds. Like you look at the horizon, you know, you keep on looking, oh, it's amazing. You know, it's the clouds, it's the sun or whatever. And boom, you're all of a sudden woke up. Like this is another thing that we need to pay attention to. We can't focus on the same, we can't look at the same spot, like, you know, fly 90 degrees all the, looking at the same place or whatever, because they, these are have a high likelihood of ending the dream very quickly. So uh, this is why um, basically you just don't, you know, uh, focus on anything more than three seconds. And you kind of always, you know, when you're talking to someone, you kind of look your light, look your left, engage with certain things. I like keep on rubbing, like I always keep on rubbing my hands the whole dream, right? Throughout the dream. So that I have the sensations. Uh, not, not, and especially if I realize like dream is kind of getting more blurry, dream elements kind of get, I lose my powers a little bit or whatever, then, you know, I get that sensations back right away. And, and then uh, once I realize I see that dream is ending, back to focus on touch, you know, the touch is what's going to bring the dream back. And then, and then visuals, of course, like once you lose the visuals, especially then it's only touch is left where I remember like sometimes I grab like anything around me, like, you know, pens or whatever. I, I, and then I'm back in my bed, but I still feel the pen in my head, right? I still have the dream uh, pans in my hand and then just from, and then I don't move. I try to focus back on the dream and boom, I'm back on dream. And this is the biggest uh, uh, thing that helped me actually, this guy's technique where you train your body to not move as soon as you wake up and you have all these deepening techniques that continue the dream. Even if it goes dark, you, you know, recover the dream basically. And then if you can't recover, there are also basically the emergency plans actually where you can do uh, falling backwards, right? Uh, you know, it's gone dark and you can't recover it. You kind of fall backwards and imagine like you're not going to hit the floor, of course. You're just going to, and this is, a, this is a technique that people use, like a falling down technique. You just keep on falling and then they turn the experience, lucid dream experience into an astral projection experience. Uh, there's some techniques like that, or you kind of focus on, okay, I'm going to go to my bed, but I'm not going to move. And then I'm going to actually, you do the techniques to astral project out of my, you know, bed. So, excuse me. So then basically you turn the lucid dream into your, go, go to your bag, bed, and then you turn it into an astral projection experience that way too. Usually like with astral projection and lucid dreaming, the main thing is basically the amount of lucidity you have. Once you have, you can increase your lucidity, like with these deepening techniques, or you plug your nose and breathe through your nose, you, which, you know, all of a sudden gives you more lucidity, right? You realize, oh, okay, this mm -hmm. is for sure a dream. And uh, so, and then the lucidity keep on increasing and increasing. At some point, kind of dream hallucinations kind of like, you know, falls basically, or, you know, you can kind of, many people claim, you know, with the way more focused lucidity, uh, they, they basically turn that situation into a base, full on astral projection um, where they can feel even better. They have more powers or whatever, you know, or, you know, it doesn't matter though. There's a lot of similarities 
but there's a lot some differences too but you know it, it starts with here though it starts with this this is the simplest most easiest technique ever uh, especially if you couple it with wake back to bat methods due to what i show everything on that graph and uh, yeah like you couple these techniques with uh, that and the and the, all these deepening techniques and the recovery techniques of like falling backwards because a lot of people are going to fall backwards they turn the dream into another dream and then there's also uh what was it uh there was another one but yeah basically like people can you know watch all these uh steps to see the rest of it uh that's all uh on the loose streaming you know other than my own after you know i you know start doing these techniques and uh realizing you know some weird stuff in the dreams what was happening to me then you know basically i have a lot more to say on that one you know how, what i now feel about what dreams are and all that other great. stuff great yeah i think that would be uh, a perfect segue into our next segment so yeah we can talk about dreams in the next one uh the, the this the lucid dreaming uh that we just went over was incredible and I really appreciate you sharing that with us. So what we're going to do is just take a quick five minute break. We're going to come back and we're going to analyze streams, but we still have further information, a lot more to go. We have astral projection, NPCs, the soul trap and afterlife solutions and much, much more. So hang in there. We'll be right back. And thank you for your patience. See you shortly. Take care. All right, brother. See you in a few minutes. All right. See you in a few minutes.
trying to find the new thing. Alright, thank you everybody. We are back. Thank you for your patience. So we are going to dive into continuation of the my journey to awakening episode six with the vegan skeptic i did just want to put out a notification for anyone interested in joining the last timers club memberships i have uh, three levels available and levels two and higher get access to monthly members live streams including a backlog of videos available from last year and once a month we meet and dive deep into a specific topic related to the matrix reincarnation soul trap so if you're interested in supporting the channel that way through memberships feel free and any support is always appreciated but never expected so let's just get right back into this welcome back vegan skeptic and uh, where we headed next my friend so uh, I just remembered about the you know recovery technique that I was talking about uh, falling backwards. There's also another one uh, where you uh, basically kind of like the how Jesus you know stand it like you open your arms like ninety degrees both of them and you mm-hmm. kind of turn around yourself, right? Uh, that's that's apparently either, either changes the dream or kind of uh, make dream come back basically. Uh, that's another thing like you know turning around yourself. Uh, not too fast and not too slow, but that's another thing. So uh, other than that, we, uh, that's all the you know loose streaming stuff. And but uh, when it comes to uh, that's, that's oh, I heard myself. I Sorry, no, that was me. That was oh, me. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was just going into the phone just to check the quality, but uh, I had my volume. Oh, my apologies. No, that's cool. Uh, so where to go from here? I'm thinking. Um, we can kind of, you know, I can kind of explain what, what I'm seeing with, uh, you know, what kind of place we live in. And then, you know, basically like lucid streaming, just continue on lucid streaming, but my experiences where, uh, and then what that led me to, basically. That would be great. Yeah. Let, let's dive right into that. That That's a big part of your journey. Definitely. And uh, let me see here where I talk about that a little bit. But I guess I can, you know, we don't need to show that. I'm just going to speak about it. And uh, so when I started to, you know, lose a dream, and then I was actually, you know, so I was following all these Astro Travel channels, and one of them was a guy, you know, I'm not going to name him, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it was the guy who you made a video about, right? Uh, Parasite. And so th- I was following him, and even though like I had this document where I wrote about like I like right after I came back from you know atheism and then I fall actually I may as well talk about that first and you know I you know atheism I found this this whole thing like uh, the conspiracies and then I kind of made this whole document about gematria exposing the you know the Tartaria stuff and you know um, many other conspiracies right uh, all these like territories all these gematria connections the simulation connections. And then kind of, and then I kind of discovered uh, the soul, some soul trap videos, weird videos, like of you know the, not the Star Trek one, but from this other cartoon, some other stuff of some random people talking about. It. For some reason, YouTube didn't suggest me your videos or, or other people's, you know, that I I'm not subscribed to, but yeah, just random, uh, you know, random people. And so I saw those, and then I added that into my document basically, and then. Uh, what happened is um, now I'm watching these astral travel channels and I'm still like not buying it because as you know, like the atheism perspective, actually, like, even though it's very poisonous where you're just, you don't believe in anything. Right. And you just deny, it's basically scientism, you, your religion, yep. and you don't just believe in anything spiritual. You just deny it. And you kind of, it's all about the kind of like a smug outlook. And it's like being pure skeptic, but it's like super close minded that, people don't realize, but that's kind of what scientism religion gives you. And that's the religion I had. I denied everything. And until, you know, th- these things started happening to me with the mental effect and astral projection and the streaming, then, you know, I, only then I realized, okay, now let's stop being dumb. 
you know, let's uh, clearly, you know, now I, I don't have, I'm not just my physical body. And, you know, and then there's these weird things that are happening and deliberately happening in, in the world that just doesn't make sense. Why is there all these videos of, you know, symbolism is everywhere? What is the deeper message? So I was just a, you know, tr truth seeker. And my n n nickname was that too for a long time, the real truth seeker. And I, yeah, and so uh, then basically I didn't buy into this, this loving God thing. Because I, after all these dreams happened to me where, you know, I, am, I see the 11-11 everywhere. And then, of course, what I do, I Google, what is the 11-11? And, you know, the, all the angel numbers. And then that connected me to a more spiritual, you know, DS yeah. content. And, uh, and then, actually, I became a part of, I was, like, searching all these groups on the Meetup website, right? And, uh, and then I found these group people, the religious group called Ekankar group. And I, I started joining to their zoom meetings that they do basically every day and and then uh, they were all talking about of course spirit guides they were talking about the mm, you know the loving god and uh i kind of wasn't really like because of you know how you know from atheism like this is it's madness out there it's chaos it can't be you know i was thinking intelligent loving god you know intelligent design from a loving god and uh, i still had that perspective going into the spirituality uh, but I really thought, you know, I was gonna, I bought into the 5D shift stuff, I bought into the Tartaria stuff, I bought into the Ascension stuff, and all that that comes with it, and then eventually discovered the Econ Car Group, and then, but these spirit guides, you know, uh, initially, you know, I was like, of course, coming from an atheist perspective, I was like, curious, but then I kind of fully bought into that. And uh, eventually, like, after all these meetings that I'm joining to where people talk about how they connect to their spirit guides, how they, you know, they have their specific spirit guides in the Ekankar group. And then they, you know, they're told every time they talk about, you know, loving God, I was like, what, what are you guys talking about? Uh, but so I didn't really fit in in that way. But with, then basically, I, I tried to kind of have my own experiences, like these people who were talking about amazing experiences. And then I basically, like I like kind of subscribed to, and I was also already subscribing to a lot of astral projection YouTubers, and some of them was all, all, were all mentioning about spirit guides. So I eventually joined these one of the people over there and became a Patreon member on, on with him and tried like he was teaching to connect to spirit guides with like you know a thousand rods. And so I basically bought that my thousand rods. I tried to connect to my spirit guides, you know. He like you know he assigned me the spirit guide and in one Zoom, <laughs> Zoom, Zoom meeting and then I and then I was like okay now I have a spirit guide woohoo you know and I'm balling now <laughs> yeah now, now they can't stop me now I'm ascending for sure you know uh, now I'm, I'm gonna yeah, shift now nobody can stop my shift into the five D right. reality so five D here we come baby <laughs> yeah and uh, basically I bought into that for just a month. Just a month, like after I subscribed, one month exactly later, I basically, uh, you know, just canceled my membership, and that's because of actually, thanks to you, you know, fully thanks to you that you made that video to the that parasite uh, astral traveler parasite guy. at the I think it's titled parasite at the astral club. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And I was following all these, and I saw his video on that one, and I was like so. I didn't really like, at all like what he did, of course, even though, you know, I was kind of more spiritual, more, uh, you know, new age uh, thinking I had. And uh, but I was like, I was searching the comment section. I just clicked on the new comments. I keep on reading each one. And like most of them, 99 percent almost is just like loving this thing. Yeah. But I, I was trying to find someone who didn't like this reincarnation thing because I didn't want I don't I don't I don't want to come back here right I still had that mentality where mm -hmm. especially after kind of discovering astral projection like if I can you know have you know not this and why, why not you know I have these better powers over there so then I was like searching all these comment sections and eventually I think I came into one person who maybe talked about your video or kind of dismissed reincarnation and from like I clicked on his name maybe he was subscribed to or had like a playlist like I started to dive deep into it, uh, where eventually I discovered, you know, your content that led me to Wayne Bush's content and then from Overwhite Channel's content. And it, of course, 
in the same day, again, just like it happened to me with atheism, uh, Gematria, Mandela effect, I did Tartaria, you know, I just the same day couldn't stop, like, you know, almost 7 to 24, dive deep into, you know, your videos, Dan's videos, Lane Bush's website. And uh, at that, yeah, and basically then quickly again, right after like a few days later, and I realized that, oh, okay, this, this is, these spirit guides are not good, but actually that happened to me, thanks to, you were running these uh, Zoom meetings, uh, right, back, back yeah. in the day? Yeah, the astral projection and lucid dreaming meetings, yeah. Yeah, those, man, those were amazing, and I'm so thankful for those, because uh, I, I like, you know, when I was in those meetings, and I remember this one guy mentioning uh, also, and then the spirit, I, with my spirit guide, or whatever, like he mentioned with spirit guide, as soon as he said that you started saying no spirit guys no spirit guys you know here and then i was like no spirit guys what and then you know i was like i i asked you guys you know what do you mean no spirit guys you know and then you guys of course went on explaining and i was like oh okay you know and that, because i then at that point also i i was just super new i just discovered you i saw you guys having the you know meetings i joined right away i still wasn't still like fully awake and then I, of course, dive deeper and deeper into your videos and everything else. Then, yeah, I'm like, I'm just so super thankful that like you guys basically saved me from like these. Spirit. I'm just so glad I didn't connect to his spirit guys, you know, and, you know, start talking to and believing on all that mess. Uh, the amount of power they can yield is ridiculous because it's so easy to be won over when you're still stuck in the mindset that you know you need help or you need a savior or you need something to guide you i mean it's 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 all so perfectly laid out and and just ready to go um and yeah i mean it's just like abolish all these spirit guides any sort of anything i mean it's just the way i see it is why take a chance you, you know depend on yourself you have all the power in the world you're a strong, powerful creator being with amazing abilities. Why should we be reliant on something again, exterior to ourselves? It's, it's just, uh, this is where we just have to put a stop to all this and just be careful and look out for number one, which is us as individuals. Yes. Couldn't have said better. And that yeah that point was uh as soon as you know you guys were like that i just canceled my membership to the other guy and then uh, i basically stopped with the icon karma meetings and i was just focused on fully you know your video and others videos uh on this topic so then though in the later on in the later zoom meetings which were you know you where you were of course it's all, it's all, all about you know astro projection and streaming promoting it and which is what which is i love that and uh one, one of the guys actually like mentioned when they were talking about their experience you know how uh so you know when they were explaining it they were saying something like so yeah and in one of, one of my other lucid dreams when i mentioned about you know naked people and all of a sudden in these next dreams uh, there were, you know, naked people like the the AI system or you know, matrix kind of messing with me. And then when I yeah, when I heard that, I'm like, whoa, whoa, what? They can hack into your dreams? What are you talking about? And that kind of once I had that right, and then once I start to actually become more and more lucid, I kind of start to investigate that basically in the dreams. And that's when uh, these uh, now we get in deep, deep basically. That's when I kind of go deep, I, baby. <laughs> yeah, now, and you know <laughs> that that now because now we're getting close to home. You know, now we're talking about one third of our lives that's you know spent in yeah. dream, dreaming state. It's very quite important that most and, people don't remember. And it's so easily discounted too. I mean, oh yeah, it's a huge portion of our lives, and it's just kind of oh you know yeah. Oh, it's it's no big deal. It's nothing. No, it's a huge part of all this. Yes, definitely, and it's it's been huge for me because, like you know, as I said, like I had these spiritual dreams first that sort of tried to convince me I'm ascending. Basically, it's all about the angels and spirit guides. Then you know, I woke up to this, and then once I had also that awakening of wait a minute, maybe they can 
hack into dreams make it they can put in there some entities or whatever uh, and you know try to maybe manipulate the experience or anything like that and uh at that point uh i when i become lucid in i remember vividly in one of my dreams where i'm in this room right and then uh there's you know a woman and then one of them were like acting up or something and then uh when she was going away uh i told the other uh, lady like is 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 she always treating you guys like this you know and i was kind of thinking also a little bit lucid right uh thinking or maybe this is the you know matrix ai system or not not, not necessarily actually thinking that at the time uh not that i kind of think back at it though you know i had some suspicion that i was kind of seeking and uh and you know she said that yeah she always treats us like this then i was like i lifted up <laughs> and I, I was just like you know standing in, on the floor right on like a meditation position almost then i stand it right up i said then give me the power and i'll f him up I said, there you go. You know, and as soon as I said that, there was like these trampoline noises, like doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo, like loud ones. And In initiate clown world sequence. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, and then the, all these like drawers, all these like uh, the doors were opening and closing, like the, the room is haunted now or something, right? And then basically, dreams started to go dark and dark and darker. And then as soon as it hit fully dark, then in my ears close you know, up, I heard this, you know, uh, like the most like demonic type of noise saying, if you F with me, you will get it, you know? And Damn. yeah, and that when, when I went and then I woke up and I'm like, whoa, that just happened. Let, let's, you know, record that one. And then I, I recorded it. And then I'm thinking back, of course, now I see it as like, these are the last type of situation, right? Like the fear. Now that I kind of woke up to now, I know their tricks, you know, now. And, and then at that moment, though, I kind of realized, wait a minute. So these dreams could be hacked. So and that maybe and eventually, of course, now I kind of realize I don't even call them dreams at this point. I kind of like call them uh, dream simulations. Uh, mm. So and I kind of talk about that a uh, little bit on on here, uh, but I'll, I'll get uh, deeper into that uh, myself. And uh, so, so yeah, like, and then I kind of, okay, that thing happened. And now there's an outside party that's basically like, it's felt so external. It's, I, I felt like it wasn't coming from my, my own, you know, brain or something, because I was so close to awakening anyway, like waking up and almost like I, like soon after, like I heard that boom, woke up fully and I realized, okay, it's something else, you know? according to my experience right my feelings that wasn't me that wasn't coming from my subconscious that wasn't coming from me at all that was a for sure an external thing uh, and, and i know this may sound crazy to others but uh so then uh, i kind of started to investigate more like okay maybe maybe these dreams are something else you know maybe these dreams are uh, like simulations you know like different things where they make you you know, uh, keep your lucidity in check where, you know, it's not making sure it looks like your real life, you know, maybe you have your family, AI bots basically, right? Uh, acting like your family. And then, you know, you have all these structures that it feels like a, another timeline or another life or is your current life. And then there's, of course, the mind is drugged basically in these dreams. And, uh, and yeah, eventually, I kind of came to the realization after having many more experiences, just like the one I just mentioned, where I am now like, as soon as I wake up lucid, I look at these people in the dream, right? But now I look at them with the knowing that, you know, I know they're all kind of controlled by the a central source, right? Because I remember in, in one of the dreams as well, where I woke up and then I was actually yelling, why are you guys messing with me? You know, uh, well, I like tried to follow this guy in the crowd, right? And not then allowed. That, yeah. <laughs> and and that guy basically starts stopped speaking. The another guy in the crowd Jeez. started con continuing the, his his speech. Then I was following the other guy, and then the other guy stopped speaking. Another guy continued his speech or a girl or whatever. And then I was just keep following them and then trying to like get answers, like why, why, why? You know, why is this happening here? Why is this happening to me? What did I do? And all these like questions I would ask 
then on the later on dreams like once i'm not more like as soon as i wake up i'm like uh i i look at them in uh, different eyes and they look at me at different eyes right they kind of start smirking and then i start smirking and then i i'm like i, 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 I sometimes like it turns into battle like i can't that's right uh, yeah battle i can't myself <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and then about, but mostly like I never. It's always like from mar doing martial arts. It's always always about self defense. Like I don't initiate ever attack before an attack initiated to to me. I right? only and uh, so then I kind of start asking questions like like what is happening with Lush? What is happening with all this stuff? And then they would kind of reply, of course, and I, of course I wouldn't remember everything, but like I would I remember some some of the experiences, you know, like asking. So is it you that gets the Lush? Like this whole system? Like how does it work? And I would like ask more and more and deeper and deeper and deeper questions, the more lucid I got. And yeah, they would give out some interesting answers that, you know, a lot of them I can't remember. But, you know, if I go back to my notes of all these hundreds of recordings at this point, uh, uh, there's way more details there because, you know, you forget, like you got to go back. Absolutely. And yeah. Got to yeah. refresh your memory. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, like it shouldn't be that way, but it is. Yeah. But it's, it is a soul trap and, uh, a memory wipe system so they don't want us i mean the biggest thing i learned is that you know they, they don't want us astral projection astral projecting and lucid dreaming they just don't i mean this whole system is set up in a way to deter us from finding ourselves and if you find yourself outside the body you will likely come to the realization of just how powerful you are and that's a big no-no for the system yes definitely like uh that's this is why it's like basically still to this day most people don't know about it like astral projection like they heard it but they don't care they heard maybe they heard it they never did it but like this michael red ruga guy though that he has a lot of studies on it and he asked a lot of people those you know surveys and stuff and he has basically according to his surveys like he says actually if you kind of ask like one fifth of the world he was saying had some sort of an OB experience that they, exactly. they talk about. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, they've, they've taken multiple polls. I think it's even more than that. I think it's over a third or something like one of the ones I read, but you know, who knows? I mean, that's just, you know, you read one, I read one, who, who knows what the case may be, but, uh, I think everyone has really impactful experiences whether through out-of-body experiences or lucid dreaming and uh they're just kind of tossed over to the side like oh you know there's just some really like uh, crazy dream and they don't have any meaning behind them they you know it doesn't doesn't mean anything so i mean but but yeah, society set up in a way to make sure that that is exactly how people are supposed to think Yes, yes. Like uh, they made sure growing up, like all of us, you know, uh, all, uh, kids are talking about, you know, introduction, uh, indoctrination, you know, uh, starts from the beginning, like from way before with the family, like you see these dreams, you see the nightmares or whatever, and your family says, oh, it's just dreams. Don't worry about it. It's just, you know, these are your, your mind is making them up. Don't watch too much of this, too much of that. And, uh, and basically it's just this excusing away. And then, you know, even when you discovered all this stuff, it's just uh, not enough, like, it's not viral. It's not like, even though it's kind of seems viral, but nobody's doing it, like almost, you know, yeah. nobody's paying attention to it, even though- Very minimal, yeah. Yeah, very minimal. And even though it's like, it's one of the clearly most important things, especially once you realize, right, Soul Trap, okay, once it's happening, we see it from enemies, we see it from everything, once it's happening, uh, you know, to me, at that point, I'm like, I'm going to keep on, you know, investigating this and to remind myself uh, that I'm a sovereign being that I won't you know, fall for tricks. But now uh, I am actually playing a puppeteer. Like I'm, I'm not, not in that way, but I'm talking about like, let me actually explain how I see this place as, you know, when I talk about metaverse, let me get into detail with that. Because the, the way I see it is that basically imagine is where where you are basically, you know, playing this Oculus VR stuff, and then they turn that into a whole, you know, now there it's a metaverse, and then eventually, like, they gotta put maybe chips on you. Now you can fully with your consciousness is over there. And then you come back whenever you want. But at some point, you know, boom, they shut it down. 
trap your conscious there, maybe wind wipe, mind wipe you, and then you all will, of course, agree on the terms of services of the VR. They agree on every step of the way. They may be, you know, whatever. So then, uh, then basically now you're in the mind wipe, and now you're, let's say, you're in now a cartoon world, right? Now they opened up the VR, and now they turn that into a cartoon 2D world, let's say. And and then, then, then everything you learn then comes from basically Mark Zuckerberg's system that he <laughs> initiated, right? And uh, he basically then on like may maybe like they can turn that whole place's religion into Zuckerbergism, you know? That they <laughs> they, they, like they that. believe yeah, and they basically believe uh, oh, so we are two D, but you know apparently there is this outside this place like once we you know die. Uh, there is these people who can actually have, you know, two, they have two hands instead of one hand. They have all these like two, two. They can see in this color. They can do this on that, and you know, and now and then when you sleep over there, you kind of maybe experience that actually, like kind of being human here almost, you know, and you're, like still limited, but they are now one step closer to the truth of it, right? Uh, getting outside of it, and that's kind of the perspective I have with this place where mm -hmm. I, I feel like, you know, we are in this, you know, 3D environment, 3D, everything we think in 3D, feel in 3D, whatever. And and then astral projection happens. And then, you know, now we're in basically experiencing 4D stuff. And uh, at that point, you know, and then there's, you know, people talk about higher la realms, ma mental planes or whatever, nirvana planes. And but do you go basically higher in your lucidity and, you know, discovering more and more your higher powers. Uh, then you can basically, at, you know, that point kind of even, you know, create your own realms type of thing that goes, uh, there's that, there's that too. And that's also very interesting. I hear people talk about how they go within more and more, and then they experience like, uh, where just like an ultimate creation, like everything they think instantly they create. And so, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's a big part of it. It's, it's, uh, going past the veil and realizing that there really is no limitations yes yeah exactly and that that's when you kind of wake up oh what what like this is nothing to do with human body like this oh i i, I was doing wrong actually thinking in human thinking when i was in iso position like i can actually shape shift my form shape shift into anything i want do anything create my own rounds go go over there do whatever and so so basically, though, uh, what I was trying to say with the metaverse thing, you know, when we think about even that, you know, you can easily tell, like, okay, everything they learn, they come, you know, it comes from metaverse, and with, with that thinking, then uh, it's you know easy to see how anything that gone famous in the metaverse, like in the, now you're in the metaverse, right? Your mind wipe. Now there's these famous, you know people in the metaverse there's these famous uh, you know famous all these famous you know books famous youtubers famous this and it's clear to see like mark is not gonna like zuckerberg i mean he's not gonna let uh let everyone expose that there is a not only 3d world but 4d world and then there's this, this whole thing is like a inception of simulations you know uh so that's kind of why also i see how this shills and all these agents kind of work too yeah, because like uh, the system has its puppets, you know, whether it's like a uh, paid agents, whether it's their uh, NPCs, whether it's whatever, uh, possessed people, who knows? But uh, it's it's yeah, it's clear to me that uh, one once uh, once I started thinking that that metaverse perspective, or or I kind of imagine myself like I'm in like okay now I'm in the Matrix Four movie, and you know I'm being asked a certain situation. What would people in the Matrix form movie who know that it's a simulation would say about this, you know, situation? And sometimes I, you know, I have that type of perspective when I'm trying to think of these questions to better kind of realize and come up with better answers because that's kind of what's going on. I feel like with this place, you know, for sure. I mean, with everything, it indicates you know how this place is just a very shitty, you know, dream basically state. And it's just that we are bought into these beliefs. Uh, we, you know, have the contracts. We every step of the way they get our consent to come here. We pick everything, and then we born here, mind wiped. Then we think it's all. This is all there is. 
And just like with the, you know, maybe in the future, what happened to metaverse people, uh, or you know, at the same time, I see this whole metaverse, this chips, this all other stuff, AI, totalitarian uh, future technology, uh, all of it as like uh, foretelling a story. I feel like, and the story of how we felt here, basically, maybe, and not 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 kind of that, but you know, uh, it's it's that clues, you know, that it could happen, and in, in some ways, it did happen to us. Uh, so, so yeah, that's kind of how I see it basically. And yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. And that's also, and I just saw, uh, Calvin mentioned like the severance show, which is very interesting to me because that show, uh, on you know, Apple TV, whatever, uh, kind of, you know, these guys, for those who don't know, these people who go into this job, right. They agree on, they can give the consent with the video. They say, okay. Once I go into this job, my mind, my I will have a mind wipe basically of totally different personality, totally different character, rather like a blank state, and uh, and then I when I go back to home from the job, I will get back my all my memories. And these people like they so they go into the job, but they realize that the other part of themselves who are in the job, they are always in the job. So it's like 724 for them. They just remember going to the job for the realize just waking up in the job rather. And they are now always in the, at the job. So now they hate it, right? They don't want to work 724 because only time, you know, they experience the break, like a rather, you know, they go off of the job. Now they don't remember that experience. Kind of like when we sleep, we don't necessarily remember uh, what's going on when we are in the REM states, which, you know, it's like just like 20% of or less it's like uh, of our sleep is like in REM state versus yeah, when we were a child percentage yeah yeah but, but when we were a child it was actually 80 percent oh so, yeah yeah and yeah. that that goes to the whole early childhood development phase of our lives and how we're just in a completely different state we're a sponge for information and that's why uh some children who um I have past life recall like it you know it's it's very fluent it, it it's it, it's it's blatant and 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 it's hardcore they they remember it to the to everything deep within inside them but then once they reach the age of six seven six seven years old then it starts to fade away and uh we're just in a completely different brain state and we're more susceptible to manipulation and deception too that's proven it's it's it this isn't you know something i'm just throwing out there and just speaking out of my ass about this is something that is actually happening it's a fact it's proven and feel free to check out my video on early childhood development because that's how we all keep uh falling for this crap too because we're young we're, we're, we're children little babies children we're defenseless and on top of it we're a sponge for information that is surrounding us well what happens is all that information is passed down generation to generation and then you have societal norms thrown into the mix of all that and yeah you may uh have amazing dreams or experiences with entities or or recall a past life or or all sorts of incredible things but it's shot down it's it's minimized and some are even shunned and and called crazy even as children when it's a perfectly normal thing to occur but because of the intergenerational trauma it's suppressed and so what happens after the age of six, seven years old, you move on to a different brainwave state and you're just kind of, uh, connecting with the information and your surroundings that you had from birth to age six or seven. It's a really, it's amazing because we're also in this defenseless position. So. Uh, you know, you have to grow from, from a baby and all this other stuff. And anyone who has experiences is basically called crazy because of the whole materialistic narrative. Now, of course, that's not the way it is around the entire world, but still it, it, it's a major problem. And 
even people in the East are being tainted by this and what happens with them, no matter what, even if they are still uh, in, in a society that embraces experiences and stuff like that. Well, what happens? They're still being indoctrinated through intergenerational indoctrination, I guess I should say, from those experiences that they that their parents learned. So it's the same crap over and over again. As long as the parents and the children and the parents' parents and the parents' parents' parents are falling in line with what the system presents, the system has you. Period. That's it. And because we can't, because we're we're so ignorant and, and small and incapable of caring for ourselves for so many years, you can see how easily that we can fall right into the system, lock, stock, and barrel. Yes, definitely. I mean, like this, it's insane how they definitely like designed the human body and all these like us being in, you know, all these REM cycles, 80% of the time during sleep you know, as a child, having in theta state and, uh, and observing everything. And what we observe is basically all matrix information most of the time, right? And uh, it's, it's unfortunate. And it, it's just once, especially like you, your subconscious, you know, grows and develops in that, those ages. And then once it's settled, like once now you believe in religion, now you believe in all these things, like in the school, you know, you, you normally daydream a lot, but now they're saying, oh, get your heads out of the clouds, you know, don't do it, oh, wake up, or oh, <laughs> all this stuff. And, and yeah, like people definitely, uh, then evolve into a robot based like you know like an npc almost and it's until you know they eventually wake up and realize that they are living in a manipulated environment you know all this scripted system that's trying to keep them sleep and this is why there's a lot of wake up messages in in the matrix movie in all these movies you know they're kind of like the system kind of giving you messages right these yeah. these famous movies from the metaverse basically right they're kind of cluing you in due to the terms of services like they would probably they would probably hate to give the, all those clues but like they wouldn't they would rather not they would rather not yeah. wake you up yeah and give those they, clues. they don't want us to yeah yeah but we agreed on that they agreed on that they have to somehow abide by it and uh so that's that's what it looks like what's happening to me based on everything we see I'm with and you. yeah and and yeah i mean i could also uh, go into how I kind of, you know, after what happened with the, when I discovered like, you know, the NDs and kind of address some criticism like that too, that I want to address. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd love, I'd love to hear that. How, um, how long you think you'll take on that? Because we're at about three hours and 20 minutes. If you, do you think you can do it in under 15 minutes? Yes, I can. All right. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. All right. So basically, you know, we'll after I break. Yeah, sure. Sure. And uh, after I you know, discovered the information on salt trap, right? And uh, I finally, you know, for the first time in my life, felt some relief you know, after searching for anything and everything for over a decade, trying to find the truth of it all. Uh, that, you know, now, you know, something made sense, something explained what's going on. And uh, so, but when, there's a lot of still like, you know, criticism, you know, uh, that's going on with uh, salt trap. But I, you know, truly believe like this, what's happening based on all the evidence we have, this is like clearly what kind of situation we are in. Like for example, we have, you know, there's, you know, like thousands of NDs where 95 plus percent of the people who did, did not want to come back, but somehow they're here. And I, and then there's, you know, of course the 30 to 50 percent, I believe, I think Wayne Bush said, like they, they kind of almost seem like they were forced to come back. And then there's the 10 to 15 percent, like hell like experience, experiences. And these, most of the experiences, you know, clearly, seem like, you know, very carefully structured experiences. Like, you know, you get the positives, of course, because, you know, you believe in the religions. Most of the people, the system made you believe in these religions. It's all uh, cu cultural anyway, at the end of the day, like where you're born, you kind of believe that. Uh, whatever family were born, they believe the same religion, kind of like almost soccer team, you know? We were born in the, who guys who, you know, a fan of Barcelona, you become a fan of Barcelona most of the time. And, uh, and, and then basically, but these people, you know, criticizing Indies, and then even though we have, you know, even people like they say, 
oh, uh, they didn't die. Like they, they, they stay back, but then we have like even the case of the native lady you cover and the other lady who drowned way more like minutes than normal, like how a human body is supposed to stay underwater without dying, right? Uh, like the, we have fully dead people basically coming back and then they have this, they have similar experience of getting tricked, right? So that's insane by itself, I feel like. And at the same time though, uh, we have, we can like, we, we don't even need all these indies to begin with even though it's like it's clearly shows but then on top of everything we have now uh like pre-birth memories right just like harold's pre-birth memory uh like yeah. in, which is a great example where you know he had to make a deal right uh, and get to live <laughs> a ver- worse life than offered if he were to keep his memory a very incredible sim- isn't it it's incredible, incredible. Like and, and there and there's other nde similar i mean i mean i'm sorry pre-birth memory is similar i mean there, there isn't a lot of them, but you can tell that there's some sort of deal made that, you know, hey, you get to remember this, but, you know, we're going to make your life a little more miserable or or way worse or who knows what type of trauma someone is agreeing to. And, and Harold was resisting from the jump. And then all these other ones, too, they all say that they didn't want to come time and time again, like again. I would love to get a statistic on this because I know it is massive. Andy ears. I would love to see a statistic on how many people say they didn't want to come back. And then how many in pre-birth memories say they didn't want to come back or they didn't want to come here, you know, over and over and over again. I'm telling you it's in, it's in somewhere in like the mid high 90 percentile range for those that make that statement it's it's massive it's huge and it's just being overlooked oh yeah everything's fine no big deal you know everything's love and light okay god loves us uh, uh, yeah and the nature that like how these entities this system uh, gives you basically a better life if you don't keep your memories like how yeah. insane is that how yeah. much you wheeling know, and dealing yeah. for memories yeah, for, I mean, for your true essence. I mean, what? That's so diabolical. It's insane. Yeah, like just like kind of they've showed in the Matrix movie in different way, of course, where you know the cipher, right? Uh, he was like going to give away Neo and Morpheus, and then uh, they were like telling, you know, he was saying, "Okay, I want." I, I'm. He was saying like, "Ignorance is bliss." I don't want to remember anything. Just make me rich, like an actor or something. And the system, of course, the agent Smith were like, whatever you want, Mr. Regan, you know, since, you know, the system is especially happy if you accept a full mind wipe at the end of the day, which means they could, you know, easily trick the person and get them accept, um, you know, much worse life next next time around, right? Uh, due to him, you know, being so privileged in their previous life. And if the person hasn't woken up to the soul trap, which seems like, you know, we are talking about a less than 0.001% situation here, yeah. people who have waken up the soul trap, then they'll con- continue to be the food to the system. Uh, yep. they'll just you know that life will pass away when okay they are rich they are actors who cares boom now they are you know born in whoever country. yeah they're born in fucking north korea <laughs> in a shack you know in, in a rice paddy field i mean eh, yeah oh oh ooh, you get to live a, a a life as a rock star for for one lifetime and then they then they twist you and and take advantage of every other lifetime and they have the memory wipe at their disposal. It's insane. Yeah, it is. And so, so basically the, the now we have tons of, you know, all these in these experiences, uh, and then all these like pre-birth experiences, like they, the majority of them not, not wanting to come back. And, uh, and these beings of course, right away come to you before you kind of remember anything. Right. And then try to like convince you and then trick you of course, with all these tricks. And then, uh, so not only that, then we have, of course, the astral projection and lucid dreaming experiences. I know even like, I know of a YouTuber who actually uh, was talking about an experience where they go to the hospital to see what happens after, you know, these people die and they kind of follow them apparently. And then, you know, they saw how they were tricked by going into the white light, these, you know, people. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, he was saying how they, their astral body was devoured or something afterwards or something like a visual like that he saw. Uh, but, uh, it's interesting, like how we have, you know, that, that, and then we have the, you know, we have, of course, the remote, the remote viewer stuff. Like I remember like, uh, this, this famous, uh, some group, I'm, I'm sure you know, uh, a lot more yeah, about that. Yeah, and then they kind of, 
yeah, I'm, they could probably like they say a big remote view, and then now, now they see how you know the Earth is a uh, thing uh, like a prison planet or whatever. Yeah, the, yeah. There's only yeah. there's only less than a handful, less than a handful, and even though they say somewhat similar things, there's a huge variation at the same time. And uh, you know, I know two of them are complete opportunists and cannot be trusted. Uh, the, I do not cover remote viewing or channeling in any single way, shape or form. It is the most unreliable information out there and it's not necessary. It's exactly. just not, it's just completely not necessary. And, and there's no patterns to, to dissect or break down. There isn't enough information and it's, it's useless, completely useless. And, and, you know, when Melissa was talking about that yesterday, I'm like, what am I, you know, I mean, maybe she is looking at those sources or maybe people are commenting saying, Hey, Melissa, look at, look at this channel of information or this remote viewing. No, no, that, that, that one thing I, I pride myself on is not giving bullshit information and remote viewing and channeling is bullshit information. It's not, to be trusted i'm sorry it's just not exactly i, I want, want you to mention that actually kind of why i brought it up because i was just about to say like these are easily could be manipulated by matrix absolutely and yeah easily and but but you know there's those type of stuff too out there which is interesting how the system kind of pushes that uh but uh you know and then same thing kind of with the i'm sorry let me just let me just interject mm -hmm. one thing like I, I i really want to stress the point too that there's just not enough data either they're just there's so little that you know by saying oh you know oh you know when you die you, you gotta have yourself at a 45 degree angle <laughs> and, and do this i mean come on i mean yeah. it, it, it's one clown story who is an opportunist, okay, along with the other clown who is an opportunist and has a well-documented history of being an opportunist, okay? And yeah. I'm sorry, it's just, it, it, it doesn't cut the grade. Like, I, 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 the one thing I try to do is put a high value on data. And if I'm going to talk about it and it has value, then there, there better be some damn legs behind it. I'm not going to go with like two, three, four, five accounts and say, oh my God, here comes the fear wagon. You know, you, you better uh, listen to what this one has to say because they're right. No, enough of that bullshit. There's not enough there. And they have, they themselves have proven to be opportunists and manipulators and deceivers. So they, they've got strikes against them up, down, left, and right. They do not deserve any sort of acknowledgement because because they're just they're just playing people yes 100 percent. and like there, there's so many of these people out there like the, the not only the fear mongers but just the gatekeepers just keeping the final doors like they, they they are talking about even the soul trap and then they are giving these horrible advices you know it's it's insane how many of them out there but uh, you know going back to that like i kind of wanted to connect that stuff with the uh, past life regressions because kind of same thing applies there right with the remote oh, I, I agree i agree yeah yeah that's kind of why i wanted to brought that up but but yeah. at least though not at least th with that we have way more uh evidence kind of that's uh, that's that's where it comes into play is that th yeah. that there's so much out there that you know it's like okay don't bank on everything but at the same time there is enough there you know, especially in comparison to like remote viewing and fucking channeling yeah. that, you know, at least there are some patterns that present themselves across multiple, uh, regressionists and, 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 uh, researchers that, you know, th there, there is some legs on the information, but, uh, one thing I like to say regularly on the channel is it pertains to things like that is, Hey, take it with a grain of salt. You know, don't, this, you know, you, you, don't bank on all of this, but you know, Hey, here are the patterns. Look at them. They're, they, they seem pretty consistent and evident and, and make of them what you will. Yes. And, and the reason also I wanted to bring them up to say also 
that mentioned the YouTubers, right? Tina and Karen, because yeah. they, without knowing anything about Soul Trap, yeah. they just just because doing 500 past life regressions together you know one of them being a medium and they eventually came to the you know same understanding with you know people like you wayne bush and you know overwatch channel the overwatch channel and then you know and uh trick by the light.com with wayne bush and who investigated you know thousands of NDs, and it's interesting you know that they came to that conclusion not even knowing about soul trap yeah and they and they came to it through mostly through the remote spirit release practice so they yeah they they even though they did kind of um come at it with the past life regressions they've really seemed to lock on to it through the remote spirit release and uh i i do look forward to having them on in the future and Karen and Tina, if you're listening, I apologize for not emailing you, uh, recently, but, uh, it's just crazy what's happened with the e emails and the messages. But, um, trust me, I I'm looking forward to talking again. It's awesome. Um, basically, so, uh, just, the uh, last stuff. Uh, so, you know, we have all this stuff we mentioned, right. And then uh, on top of it all, we have then pre monitions like, uh, you know, that bad, that bad visions, which is insane. And then massive. we have massive, massive, massive. Like it's, it's incredible. It's, it shows clearly, you know, proves everything. Oh, it's, it's, it, I mean, they, they mess with people at the, when they're on their way out, it's so screwed up. Yeah. Oh, Hey, come with me. You know, you got to come to the light. You got to come to the tunnel, you know, just follow me. You know, you're about to die. But just trust me, just trust me. I'm who I say I am. And I have your best interests at heart. Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. That, then we have the, you know, the shared death experiences, of course, the the trip reports, the deep meditation experiences, like yeah. re reincarnation stories, the uh, after death communications, the paranormal experiences, right? Yeah. And, and then on top of it all, we have interestingly, like, you know, all these numerology geometry people don't know, but we have, uh, I see like uh, decode the matrix in live chats a lot. And I, I actually discovered her videos on, you know, in, in her God of, of Sleep, I think, series mm -hmm. where she, she breaks down this whole, like in numerology, you know, how soul trap is a thing. And yeah. that's, that was brilliant for me. And it, I, she, it was, yeah. you know, she did a great job on that. Yeah, and she connected to how you know it works with the dreams too, uh, you know, dream controls and all this stuff, which I found it interesting. Then of course we have the you know, the life script stuff, the astrology stuff that's uh, that goes with that, the Saturn cube connections that we have, you know, the, and then the, of course the TV shows, movies, music connections, which uh, you know you can see it, you know, tricked uh, by the light .com, right? It's insane yeah. amount of them like over oh, there. Oh yeah, it's a it's a plethora of information. And if anyone has any doubt about the soul trap, check out Wayne Bush's site at trickedbythelight.com. If you haven't been there yet, then what are you waiting for? Exactly. Like uh, the amount of information is in, in there is insane. Insane. And, insane. And especially his recent thing with the AI post. Like I was so happy to see that. Like it's really, like it, same here. Same yeah, here. it's it's I definitely agree. what kind of you know, the, all the conclusions are kind of hinting at that to me, but you know, going back to, I, I totally agree that that's yeah. where it points for me too. I'm, I'm totally in agreement with Wayne. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, then, as I said, like we had the Saturn tube connections, uh, like the TV shows and movies on his website, trick by like, like I'm tons of them. Then we have the, you know, the overall evil to the gills world around us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the, the it's correlated all love and light trap. though, bro. <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's insane like it's insane uh but I'm, i want to get into that later on the school stuff but uh like the, to top that all of that right we have the whole thing with the even like the hidden language like like the english english language oh, itself, right? This, endless. Uh, endless endless and etymology and, and and how words mean total opposite and and different things yeah it's 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 all designed yeah and set up in such a perfect way and just like uh the, the, even like this the, supposedly we live in the solar system right what does that sound like soul the soul lured. Lured. yeah souls are lured into the fucking matrix system and then we have of course like the matrix itself like matrix 
like what yeah, tricks yeah. you know and then of course it being the womb you know how it's it, like in latin oh yeah womb, the, yeah the definition yep definition of it and then is it's just like the fetus fetus right which is sounds an awful lot like you know feed us and it's, it's just all these all these connections uh and to far you know, many far far too many clues to be ignored and anyone who truly truly looks into this topic will see it for what it is and come out the other side and if they are being honest with themselves realize what is what's going on here i mean it it, it couldn't be more obvious uh oh man um yeah you know just thinking about what happened with melissa there is just um i don't know whatever let's move on <laughs> yeah. but yeah i was gonna end that with basically even like the famous greetings that we had like hell all you know like it, it, yeah. hell it, hell is right in there and then good morning what, morning yeah. good, what yeah. are we morning about is that we yeah. live in a hellish realm or morning yeah. that we're fucking still here <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly so what i want to basically conclude with all of this is like so yeah we just got you know tons of things to indicate the soul trip reality right and not just indies but you know uh with everything else so that it, it, and then to top it this all, all everything with this that we you know the it all goes back to the famous question what if you're wrong like the, these religious people saying yeah. to athe atheists and then of course atheists reply what if you're wrong with the thousands of other religions just because yeah. you were born in, in a country and a college same culture you got this religion what about all these other religions but when we think about this what if you're wrong question and how it applies to the soul trap and everything like it's actually this this question is more related with the people who ignore soul trap like uh, it, it, it applies to them not to us if, if everything is brilliant if there's a loving god who cares if the loving God, you know, uh, taught like if he believed in soul trap and then it wasn't actually real. It's not like God is going to create a soul trap for us or whatever, you know, exactly. in hell. So this question fully applies to these these people, uh, uh, and they are actually the ones uh, definitely like uh, would suffer, right? If if we are right, and thousands of people like you, Wayne Bush, and Dan, who investigate thousands of NDEs. It's just, and all these other things I talked about, it's just clear that they need to pay attention to this. Like if they don't pay attention to it and then we are, and then you guys are right, th that's basically like mind wiped, done. You know, now yeah. you've lost your, all your sense of self. Yeah. And now, you know, who knows where you're gonna born? Who knows what's gonna happen to you? Who knows how much more longer? It, but, but when you are too close to the information, because now you know about soul trap. Now you're yeah. right there, you know? So that's all I want to say on that one. No, I, I think that's a great point. And that's that's exactly how I ended my response to Melissa uh, earlier today. I said, what if I am right? You know, what if the information is correct? All right, you know, are, are you still willing to take a chance? And, you know, what, what at the end of the day, what is wrong with rooting yourself in sovereignty, liberation, self-protection, self-empowerment. What the hell is wrong with that? I, I, I mean, uh, oh, oh, ooh, oh my God, it doesn't sound right. Well, too bad. Do your research. That's, that's the way I look at it. Every, you know, if you're not, if you're not doing your own research outside of this channel and you're just eating it up and saying, look, I understand some people connect with the information very quickly, but I, I'm just speaking out of my own experience that it took me a, a, a f quite a few years to, to really understand and embrace and it. And then of course go through the stages of grief, because that's exactly what it's like going through the stages of grief and coming to the conclusion that yes, this information has a ton behind it it's not just some little thing that's thrown out there and and uh has no legs it, it, it's absolutely massive in the information the evidence the proof is everywhere everywhere and all it's i mean just remember we live in a moment in time where we have access to this information you just think about it. It, it, it. You could have been born in the, and or you could have been alive in the 60s, 70s, 80s, had no access 
to all this information or very minimal. You would have to move mountains to get access to the information that we have today. So for me, for everyone listening in the chat, for you, vegan skeptic, we have to be grateful and appreciative that yes, we chose this incarnation, this moment to have access to this much information. And if there's anything you should be thankful for, it's that. And I am thankful every single day that we have the opportunity to have access to all this stuff. I, I mean, just the amount of books I have sitting to the right of me and storage in my, in my bedroom, all the, all the books that I've downloaded, all the different accounts that I've gone over. We are so fortunate and lucky and, and should be thankful that to, to think otherwise is just ridiculous. I mean, the matrix has exposed itself in the most obvious way possible because of the vast access of information that we have now. Yes, they, you know, the whole system has tried to suppress and limit information and who knows how long this channel and this information will be allowed to be spoken of, but for the time being, and the reason why I continue to do these live streams on such a regular basis every single weekend is because I don't know. And the, the number one important uh, talking point here is, is help spread the information. There's barely any of us doing this. There's barely any of us talking about this. And it's time to spread the word. And, you know, I understand, uh, Melissa's all worked up and maybe some people are being combative and nasty and stuff like that. I don't support that. I don't because the most important way to approach someone is with logic and common sense. And if, it, and, and if you're being nasty and combative and stuff like that, it's not going to do anything. My number one goal, and I know the vegan skeptics, number one goal, I know uh, Wayne's number one goal. I know Dan's number one goal is to help spread awareness in hopes that people will research this on their own. Cause if you're not researching this on your own and actually dedicating yourself to finding the answers and, and just being dragged along step by step, you, you might miss something or you might not connect with something. Now that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the case for everybody, but the point is, is help spread the word. This is, I mean, it's so in our face, it's not even funny. And you know, if you get a little pushback or, or, or some bullshit along the way, so what? It just is what it is. It, it, the most important thing is that we're helping other people see what the hell is going on here? And anyone who has the ability to critically think and, and, and actually keep an open mind about the evidence being presented, there's no way they won't see it. There's no way because there's just too much out there. So I, I just want, I know I ranted a little bit, but I, I think it's really important to put this out there that, you know, help spread the word in the comment sections on YouTube and on Reddit, on Facebook, on rumble, on Odyssey, on Twitter, on Facebook, or wherever the heck you are out there. You know, I, I, I'm just trying to do what I can do over here. And the vegan skeptics is, is a big part of that. Uh, Wayne is a big part of that. Dan at Overwatch is a big part of that. You know, again, Wayne's website is trickedbythelight.com. If you can actually go to Wayne's website at trickedbythelight.com and come back and honestly say, oh, there, there, there's nothing there, then move along. Move along. Because the evidence is there. It's, it's here on this channel. It's over on Wayne's website. It's over on Dan's website and Dan's channel, all the information is there in spades and it's in 
our face, taunting us, dangling the carrot and saying, hey, here's what's going on. You gotta, you know, you gotta, you gonna find yourself and 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 root yourself in sovereignty and liberation, or are you going to continue to buy into spirit guides and God and Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad and and uh, Marlon Brando or whoever the hell? All right. The point is, the system has it set up in a specific way, where. Everyone who thinks outside the box is shit on and crapped on and, and made fun of and and called crazy and locked up in mental institutions and on and on and on. I am so fucking sick of the bullshit. I am. And there's only so much I can do. The vegan skeptic can do. Dan can do. Wayne can do. Wayne told me he's tired. OK, he's tired. And I respect it. I get it. He's been doing this for 20 years. I'm tired too. But the point is, is there's the only way for us to help people is right now while we're alive and here, help spread the information, share my channel, Wayne's website, Dan's channel, Dan's website, just spread the word and let people come to the conclusion that they come with. It's not your job to convince them. It's their job on their own to go out and research this stuff for themselves and make an informed decision. If they can't do it too bad. And and I see how the Truman show is up there. That is probably, yeah, like the scene right there where, um, Truman is going up against the, the, the facade. Look at it. And he, and he, I mean, that movie is exactly what's going on here. Distraction, 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 on and on and on. Trying to get us to believe in the illusion. And where is Kristoff coming from? The fucking moon. It's telling you. That movie tells you everything. That everything is scripted. Everything is set up in a certain way to keep the illusion running. That movie is, is literally a br blueprint for what we are involved with right here, right now. All right. So what we're going to do is take a quick five minute break. I know I kind of went on a rant there. I want to thank the vegan skeptic for a great segment. And, um, I know I kind of trailed off. I apologize, but there, there's nothing we can do if we don't help spread the word. So any closing words before we go to break? No, I, just, I love it. Everything you said, you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. All right. We'll be right back. My friends be about five minutes and we have a lot more to come. See you shortly. Thank you.
with my friend. You are right over there? Yep. Welcome back. Thank you for your patience. We are back and ready to keep on rolling. And want to welcome the vegan skeptic. And we plan to get into further topics and still have quite a ways to go and i appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight my friend so where are we headed next you with us vegan skeptic <laughs> oh i i was talking the mic muted uh sorry no I, worries. No yeah worries. i i basically said uh thank you and uh now I kind of wanted to, you know, uh, dive a little bit into uh, the school narrative that's going on, which is, of course, completely BS. And then, you know, move on to the NPC topic, maybe. Great. All right. So we're going to head into NPCs and uh, looking forward to that. So uh, where do you want to start off with this one? So, yeah, this one, I kind of want to uh, start with the, you know, the, the, the mentioning about this show called the good place which is i believe a uh, quite interesting show right quite uh, exposing of the truth and that's in the in that show the lead character basically uh you know dies and then goes into this you know afterlife where she doesn't remember how she died of course and then uh she is now you know greeted with this guy uh, from this guy that in a you know suit that looks representable and everything and then he is, you know, he, he, but he, she thinks, and they are making her think that she's in a good place. She's in he heaven, basically. Mm -hmm. But in, in reality, actually, it is the bad place. Uh, yes. And that it is <laughs> hell, right? And they are surrounded by demons who are uh, messing with them. And it's, that's a very interesting show. Oh, uh, it's, it exposes so much. Yeah. I totally suggest everyone check out the good place. I mean, it is absolutely loaded with clues and hints of the fuckery you, you gotta see it gotta see it yeah and even in one of the episodes actually uh, they they kind of expose how they manipulate the dreams they put this uh, character uh, woman character into a dream bad scenario to confirm how bad it was and she was like she was faced with her family uh how, how who was that disappointed at her and then at the end of the experience, he was like, oh, yeah, that worked. The, the, I feel, they feel horrible now, you know. And mm -hmm. but uh, anyway, like going back to the show. Uh, so, yeah, this so she's surrounded by demons. And then so eventually, though, like after a lot, they mess with her in every which way possible, like they, you know, they basically gather loot, right? And uh, and then once she kind of after all this uh, kind of basically, you know, almost like bad pranks and all this messing she realizes oh wait a minute this is the bad place and as soon as basically she realizes it they are kind of like laughing at her face no ha 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 you know finally it took you this many days to figure it out you know and uh and then basically she gets you know reset mind wiped back to the first day where she she believes she just died and she doesn't remember how she died. And then the guy explains her the whole situation. Oh, you're in afterlife. You're in a good place, whatever. But uh, basically though, the interesting part with that is well, after a while, she uh, thinks that she is now convinced this guy and his AI helper, basically a uh, little spoilers here to, uh, to basically help her actually like help her to not go because she is actually, you know, a bad character. Like she thinks she is there by mistake. Uh, and then anyways, and then these guys 
she thinks it's helping her now with the AI uh, of, uh, that's helping the guy. And because of that, now, you know, keeps on getting messed with, but she doesn't realize it. She thinks they are helping her. And then at the very end, which is very like now the spoiler for the next uh, one minute, uh, they, they are now living in this afterlife situation where uh, they are in the now came to the heaven, upper heaven version of the like actually they now go, go to the good place you know they helped her get to the good place and then now she's experiencing all this stuff uh on earth you know she's <laughs> teleport she's now you know getting all these foods she wants and whatever but she's getting them from the system she's not like experiencing her own powers exactly, powers. exactly. yeah so and because of that she eventually like the, all the systems giving the same same stuff to her eventually you know her friends get bored and then and she gets bored and they kind of eventually decide to end themselves right like uh, their whole existence uh consciousness and that's basically and then they of course the ai and this guy provides them the option they, they say okay yeah you go into this you know, portal looking thing and then you can you know basically in your reality of course you know kind of like merging with the source merging with the demiurge yep. basically getting a mind wiped again right in our face right in our face yeah and uh with that though uh what i you know i wanted to turn that back to the school narrative because every time you know she kind of realizes how this is the bad place it's kind of what i feel about this place right because like every time if i get messed with in a certain exactly. way exactly like it's clear because this is the bad place like of course 100 percent. yeah and and when it comes to that so then of course the question remains right for those who believe this world is school and that we are here to learn lessons like what is it exactly that i learned you know by doing the laundry for the thousand time or you know, <laughs> taking take a dump a for shit. the ten thousand yeah time. exactly yeah like what do the majority of the people learn you know using their you know most productive times getting most drained from you know going to schools jobs they hate and all in order to just survive we by by you know mostly eating of course other sentient beings that but didn't want to suffer and die and then uh in a world like just like full of pain suffering like unexplainable evil you know the human trafficking the child sacrifice you know, mass murders genocide wars pain sickness you know pedophiles rapists homeless people like starving kids like what is going on here and uh so so yeah like when we think about all of this right um and you know know that this place is is just clearly not there's no loving god here just like george carlin said you know if this belong in a good god's you know resume they will get thrown out of jail like they wouldn't even get one, one other look at the resume these people like it doesn't belong to a resume of a good god a loving god uh, and it doesn't go well with the school narrative so uh with that you know uh ju just because of course there are things we can learn here doesn't make it a learning school you know doesn't make it a learning uh, yeah. ground here and plus i'd learn much better if i you know wasn't under stress inside this like amnesia suffering realm and that you know i wasn't mind wiped into unlearning everything that i learned you know just to learn them again uh in, in a you know, reincarnation loop of madness while the you know the, these fakes you know spirit guys right and gods who you know convinced me to reincarnate and get mind wiped here enjoy afterlife uh you mm -hmm. know without getting mind wiped and i'm the one who has to get mind wiped all these like spiritual people talk about oh yeah spirit guys you know they don't really reincarnate here and stuff oh really i don't want to reincarnate here either <laughs> I, don't, I don't want that either. Yeah, lucky them lucky them you know <laughs> and uh so so yeah i mean why you know the more i and Another interesting thing is like the more I learn here, right? Since it's like a school, right? The more I learn here, the more negative things I discover at the end of the day. The more shit I discover. Like what's up with that? So yeah, yeah, continually asking questions like why is that? Why is that allowed to happen? Why is that happening? On and on and on. It's just it keeps rearing its ugly head in our face, and yet we're supposed to take those those amazing moments that do come across our lives that are enjoyable and bank on those when there is all this other shit going on, either in other people's lives that are horrendous and absolutely insane and, and depressing as all hell versus, oh, okay, yeah, you, you know, you had a few great moments in your life, wahoo, you know. Uh, yeah, it's all about the lesson, but you can't remember the damn lesson. You don't remember what the hell you're here for. It all falls apart. It crumbles.
before our very eyes. Exactly. I mean, like the, it's insane. Like all these, like, you know, like sick kids in hospitals and everything like that. And then, and then the psychopaths controlling this whole system yeah. and, we, and billions of us basically, right. If the numbers are correct, like we are just suffering at the hands of these psychopaths clearly. Yeah. And so, I mean, we are kind of the preys and they're the predators in this place. And about, but these people, you know, they, they're like, Oh, God works in mysterious ways. It's for a uh, bigger plan. That's you know? my favorite one. God, yeah. God works in mysterious ways. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, it's just like... Yeah, stuff. no shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, of course, it's mysterious. Like, how, how more mysterious, how much more mysterious can it get, you know? And uh, that, you know, there is no loving God, clearly. And it's just the Stockholm, you know, syndrome, you know, on steroids with these people, right? Uh, yeah. And... Yeah, they're just dust- justifying all these traumas and disgusting stuff, which saying like this is a school that we are here to learn. Learn what? Learn what? Yeah, what? like yeah. And when you're when you're a creator being with amazing abilities outside of here, what the hell are you learning if you don't even remember what the hell you're supposed to be learning? Yeah, where I mean, is the come on? <laughs> like mission? Uh, what? What mission? Nobody knows the mission. Purpose? What purpose? Where's the purpose? Who, who told me? Nobody told me the purpose. Yeah, and uh, then you have and then you have a few select clowns out there who claim to know and and it's what like 0.10% of the of the population maybe less i mean i don't even know what it is let's just call it 1% to be nice you know 5% to be really really nice and it all falls apart because what about the the remainder of the what about the 95% of the of the population that can't remember yeah and and you know these people are saying oh it's just you know it's about love and lie it's about love stands and giggles you know <laughs> and you know i mean like, trust if, the plan bro trust, trust the, the plan. plan like if you add you know sugar into shit it's not going to you know transform the shit into a cupcake right it's still yeah. going to smell like shit it's going to taste like shit at the end of the day so these people you know it's just this stupid justifications for this horrible horrendous place and of course they are not mentioned in the NDS, right? Like, oh, what about these Satanists? What about all these, you know, corrupt people, psychopaths, all this stuff that's happening? Distractions, mm, you know, all the way. So, yeah, basically, uh, I wanted to, you know, kind of t- say that uh, before I we move on to the NPC stuff. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. So with the NPCs, okay, so here's the thing. So basically, you know, I'll go point by point. Uh, try to uh, give my reasonings on why I believe basically is NPCs are real. But at the same time, I want to start it off with saying that, you know, it doesn't really ma- matter in the way where, like, we can't treat anybody differently, you know, at the end no, of the day, we can't. you know, no. like, I, I mean, I would never, even if I know know that 100% that someone is, let's say, a non-player character, like a game characters, you know, uh, background people, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm just going to treat them just like I treat everybody else. Especially, I'm coming from yeah. a culture also where we, you know, give our seats to not only just, you know, women, pregnant people, you know, older people, but also, like, I would give my seat to, like, even just if, if they, they looked a few years older than me, we would give our seats, you know? And I like that about uh, my culture. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm with yeah. you on that, too. It, yeah. it, the problem is, is nobody knows. They may think they know, but nobody truly knows. And uh, we, you know, you got to have compassion and empathy and assume that they are just fucking out to lunch and lost beyond belief. And that, you know, it's sad. It's 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 not enjoyable or, or anything because uh, at the end of the day nobody knows and if you're going to treat someone uh disrespectfully because you think they're an npc just because they're lost in the illusion and again it's not like you're it's they live and you have the the sunglasses and you're able to see it just is what it is and would you want to be treated like that and let's just just put yourself in that situation in a lifetime what, 5, 10, 20, 100 lifetimes ago, whatever the case may be, where someone figured out what the hell was going on here, 
would you want to be treated like a piece of crap? No, you don't deserve that. Nobody deserves that. Yeah. And it, like also, even if they were to make an Android and, you know, an AI and then it become like they say conscious, like they say now with the Google AI, like uh, same, like, I mean, I'm just, I'm just not going to treat anybody like, you know, uh, differently, like it, 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 differently in the way, like, I'm just not going to attack someone, uh, you know, or, you know, treat them badly doesn't matter like uh, it's for me again it comes from martial art perspective it's all about self-defense uh if, if defense is required uh and if you can run away or whatever right in, in, a, in a yeah martial martial art scenario. Any, any threatening yeah. situation get the hell out exactly yeah and uh so so yeah that's that's very important to talk about with this topic and you know it doesn't matter like the the percentage or is like I, I mean i'll get to it but you know, let's now dive, you know, deep into why there may be, you know, those 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 uh, things out there. And uh, so it, it all comes down to for me, like once, you know, since now we realize it's a simulation, right? And uh, it's clearly like a almost like a metaverse type of situation, a shitty dream. And uh, we kind of contracted here, uh, agreed on it, and now we're here. But clearly, in order to run a simulation, uh, you 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 can't have everybody like uh, to be a real spirit like in, in any game you know if you, if you want that game mm -hmm. to be good like all, all these background NPCs like they can't be all real because then there's no game then there's no you know uh, controlled scratch structure and we know from yeah. this place it's insanely controlled hundred percent and and I, and I think that there is more than enough proof that this has gone on in the past it's it. It, there's enough documentation to suggest that, yeah, it, it's a far reach for some people, but for those that can go outside the box and, and, and look at the depictions in art and, and how this whole entire system has been, has had its foot up your ass the entire time, whether it's this lifetime last lifetime, 10 lifetimes ago, the, the, the historic narrative is clear. It is set up in a way to make sure that you are subservient to it. And if you don't comply, it has no problem either torturing you or, or throwing you in a jail cell or whatever the case may be so that it can continue its reign of terror over you and rob you of your sovereignty yes definitely i mean and uh it's it's yeah like this place uh is in, insane in that way the, 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 when it comes to loot and everything else but like in order to yeah run a system like that where you're gathering loot and energy from everybody else you know it can't be everyone real you know in that in that sense and uh and you know with that i feel like you know when it comes to when we're talking about uh, I was talking about the metaverse reality, right? Like, you know, now we are mind wiped here. Nobody remembers almost uh, what happened to them, you know, before coming here. And clearly there is afterlife. Like we know from astral projection, anyone who can't, like if they don't believe it, they didn't do, they didn't experience astral projection. It's as simple as that. They don't know about NDAs or they don't believe it. Well, who, who cares? Like you want to ignore it, you ignore it. You want to risk this whole thing, you risk it. But uh, I'm not going to risk it. Like this may be one of my thousands of lifetimes I may have come to this type of awakening where I dodged all these traps and I can now come to the final door, open it. And now, you know, that's what I'm dealing with here. And, you know, I'm just yeah. going to basically uh, protect myself accordingly. Self-defense. As uh, you should. As you yeah. should, because this reality has proved itself time and time again to be nothing but deception, manipulation, and, and messing with the mind from cradle to grave it does not deserve the respect and quote unquote love that it claims to represent because it's just not true yeah yeah and uh with that uh also now you know why basically talking about the kind of metaverse we live in you know like how you know mark would never let i was talking about these these things to get famous right like these people have them these real spirits basically 
have them all this insane amount of uh, public, you know, space where they can uh, influence all people, where then they kind of are allowed to expose all the real truths that's going on with the metaverse, that's going on with our place, etc. And uh, this is why, like, I kind of feel like who knows, but uh, I'm like, you know, when it comes to you know YouTube celebrities, when it comes to all these celebrities, uh, when it yeah. comes to like all these, you know. Uh, people it seems to me that you know maybe they are the ciphers that selected this life and now you know uh, they don't know but uh, yeah there is definitely something else going on which i'll you know also uh, show in one of the video coming up uh interesting video but you know uh you had anything to say on that one no no i'm yeah. totally on board with that yeah and uh so then basically, you know, uh, to me, uh, definitely there's a, you know, high mind type of thing going on. That's clearly. That's a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the biggest part. And, you know, it's also kind of shown in a lot of places, like the, you know, the best world TV show I mentioned there, you know, the oh, matrix system. Massive truths. Yeah. Everyone should check out Westworld. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean oh my Lord, they just throw it right in your face. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. huge huge truth bombs yeah that that kind of that show like i watching it and then I, I remember i was petting my you know cat and uh I, I, after like a few episodes i was like wait a minute you know what well, you know what if this cat yep. is an npc or you know i just had that thinking you know what if of what's course. going on with me what going, you know that kind of brought up that questions to me which i'll kind of get that also i'll talk about that but uh you know it's just interesting how how many of these you know tv shows and movies and uh, everything kind of hint at the fact that you know these background type of people you know these people who keep the status quo basically uh that, you know uh, and again like we know from these people you know like the television programming right like even it's in the world again tell a vision programming how do they program it in their channels like basically you know referring to channeling right and then there you know spells via the words they spell at us right it's even in the word again the spell spelling and then the, you know the hollywood from the hollywood and you know uh so it's it's kind of normal to see how many real spirits will fall for all of this like i don't blame anyone i don't judge anyone when it comes to that because it's 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 so easy to fall for all these tricks like you you were born into it we, we talked about theta states theta state we talked about the you know uh, how our bodies are basically so you know limited and uh, it's all perfectly designed to you know all these main you know the religions and everything else interactions from schools the jobs nobody has any like enough time to even investigate like basically they're just trying to survive they're just trying to they're their most productive times they're spent in you know school and jobs basically so yep. uh so yeah, uh, when it comes to so it, we we it, it, even the best world show, uh, like it, it was yeah insane. And I remember in one of the scenes, like she, the AI, like one of them, you know, uh, kind of became you know conscious, and uh, they were saying, and then like she was trying to escape, right? And then she kind of captured these two coders, and the coders like this she tell them like okay now increase my you know intelligence to 100 or whatever oh yeah, and then, oh, yeah. oh yeah and and then she basically said okay so coder realized something in her script the script saying her escape was kind of planned right and then she, she, he told her that and then she was like she didn't even pay attention to that like she and then she just continued with her escape until to the moment she went back to save her daughter her ai daughter basically yeah and, uh, and she kept looping that over yeah again. yeah it's very very interesting like how it's, it's sovereignty and all this stuff is very important when it comes yeah. to that you know it, it's so in your face it's unbelievable that show yeah yeah it's insane and great great show too oh, and, uh, awesome so so yeah we have all these shows we have of course the matrix movie like especially you know like the matrix is the biggest thing biggest expose because uh you know it's clearly like these people you know i, I talked about the gematria numerology how even in the matrix movie how it connects uh like how these actors their names and everything and all, all these news everything like you just plug them in and they, they and, and perfect timing uh, the perfectly is, set up yep i totally everything is dying at perfect 
perfect times uh, in, according to the same numbers and all this stuff and yeah i mean and I, again like uh, decode uh, the matrix is the i think the best decoder out there because she also decodes the you know salt trap and everything else because uh, otherwise same thing with the Mendelithic people, same thing with the Tartaria people, like 99% of all those people, basically. The, when you ask them about, you know, soul trap, the astral projection, the us being creative beings, you know, uh, they don't know. Like, they don't believe it, they don't know about it, they don't care about it, whatever. Like, then, you know, we, we kind of realize, oh, okay, you, you guys are distracted. You guys couldn't move on. You know, you just stay, mm -hmm. stay there. And, yeah, but... but at, yeah, least, like, at least there's a few decoders out there who are taking it seriously yeah it, it, it's yeah. uh yeah it's it's an important aspect to all this it's like if you can prove to yourself through uh the simulation or or these decodes then it, it it's only a benefit but at the same time it only goes so far but there's nothing wrong with it because certain people need that information to see the bigger picture. It's it, it's really really crucial aspect to all this, at least in my opinion. Yes, definitely. Um, with that also, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's clear. Like uh, they showed it in the Matrix movie, how in the even latest Matrix movie, which is very interesting, where uh, the architect was saying, you know, how uh, yeah, now you know we place them between you you and now we don't make them out of copper or something i'm not I'm, yeah, i don't quite yeah. remember but now we can you know, easily we don't have to destroy these people when agents must jump into them or whatever and uh, it's yeah it's very like it's blatant truth again uh, right there to be seen and they also of course expose the dream thing dream thing again like saying oh yeah yeah like we can you know get the the, the energy loose whatever from emotions but we noticed that when it comes to stress and you know all these nightmares are the biggest energy producing source um, yeah and I, th and I think that's like one of the biggest problems some people have it's like oh it's just robert robert monroe's the only person that uh proves loose that's not the case there are so many examples of it and that's why i started the loose file series but um you know, it, it's a lot of work sometimes to, to get all this information out there, but there are so many examples. We ourselves are living proof of it. Just the way everything is structured screams that the Lush narrative is absolutely true, at least in my opinion. 1000%. Uh, I can't wait to get to talk about the Lush narrative and how it relates to, of course, the factory farming too. Mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, yeah, I mean, where were we at? Yeah, like the the Matrix movie, uh, we talked about it, and and you know, so and, and yeah, the Lush from dreams. That's that's I feel like you know, uh, another thing I forgot to mention, like uh, when I was talking about dreams, is that uh, I slowly kind of one, once i started because we like dream five to seven times usually, right due to the ram cycles like how many of them we have you know it one on one of them ends one of them starts i show the graph and yeah we have as long as you have many ram cycles complete one and a half hours you know uh, you see these dreams and most people don't remember these five to you know six seven dreams they see uh but once i started to remember them uh, interestingly i mostly always found myself in like either i'm in school right um, like or in a stress like doing a test uh school is overall stressful anyway like uh, always you gotta you gotta just you know memorize uh, all kinds of shit. nightmare complete nightmare. yeah complete useless information that doesn't help with anything uh once you yeah, graduate, just memory memorization of system narratives period yeah yeah, yeah. And, and uh yeah or I'm, the, I'm being chased in some of the dreams some of the dreams like it's of course not always but yeah i just started uh, to notice them and then uh kind of uh, realize like oh wait a minute like i, I kind of notice every time as long as the dream lasts basically eventually i notice some sort of a scenario where an emotion kind of trying to to be basically manifests out of me right like any type of emotion mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be scared it doesn't have, like it could yeah. be love it could be you know love and light type of stuff it doesn't matter but yeah like just like they expose in the matrix movies probably like they do maybe get more energy out of you uh, potentially by yeah you know scaring you and that's kind of why uh 
I kind of call astro travel, you know, the the fear killer, you know, like the the doubt killer, uh, because you know once that's that's when you conquer your fears. Like, is you know someone who is in metaverse, you know, in two D, you're scared about three D, you know, and you just keep getting scared. That's what the system wants. Like, there you you want you the system wants you in fear. So that you know you don't even pay attention to this topic, right? That's why there's a lot of yep. movies and stuff that try to scare you off of astral projections or these people uh, trying to scare you off of it. But in reality, uh, that's when we are one step closer. Like we are now one step out of the metaverse, right? One step out of this universe. That's system. right. Yep. Yeah, reclaiming our true essence and and not looking back and transcending the entire experience that's related to this because this blind trust thing has got to stop. It just has to stop. And, it, and the only people who can do it is those who truly desire that sovereign uh, existence, the sovereign mindset and not falling for this uh, repetitive loop and thinking that they have to answer to anybody. You don't have to answer to anything period yeah i mean it's yeah and uh, may, may as well touch like uh, i may as well touch the the topic of uh you know how th there's all these you know uh they say you know there's the uh you know scubus right there's the incubus there's the mm -hmm. you know astral spiders the boogeyman and you know machine elves the shadow beings God, like Lyrans, Palladians, God Federation, all these like things uh, <laughs> are, uh, it's insane. Like it's clearly this system basically creating characters, creating narratives, creating stories and trying to feed you so that you give, give away your, uh, you believe there's an authority. You believe there's uh, beings that are higher than you, right? Exactly. Uh, and what, what happens then? You basically gave away your power. You basically consented to give your power, you know, just by believing uh, in, in that type of scenario. The system got you. This is That's what the system wanted. That's why they created yep. the religions. You know, that's why they created this whole system. Just so in, in case you fell from religion, don't worry. We got the new cage. Yeah, the new, don't new worry. We system. got it all ready and waiting for you. <laughs> Yeah, just like it happened to me with the spirit, you know, the synchronicity dreams, the synchronicity stuff that happened to me where I started Happened seeing, to me too, bro. Yeah, this, yeah. this uh, basically the AI, you know, just tricking you, right? This in VR set that our bodies are basically VR sets, and we are being tricked in this code based system, basically. And uh, so, so yeah, with, with that, I mean, uh, it's clear to me like these are just all made up characters and stories from basically some sort of AI high mind, a demiurge type of source whatever whoever it doesn't matter it's just you know they are clearly made up yeah look i i totally agree and what i like to what i like to kind of add to that is that even if even if people are buying into the whole spirit guide and and this and that <clears throat> throw throw that away okay so say you or not throw it away but say you you buy into that Okay, no problem. You can buy into it. But think of it this way. If the Matrix reincarnation soul trap is true, and it is, then all you have to kind of look at is, and say to yourself is, okay, well, even if the beings I am dealing with are legit and on the up and up they're authentic they're they're what they claim to be their mom their dad their great grampy great grandma and and on and on and and and, and all these other and jesus buddha muhammad etc god itself okay they are still within the confines of the matrix and limiting you so whether they are real or not and i don't think they are but it doesn't even matter Toss my opinion to the side, toss the vegan skeptics opinion to the side and just ask yourself, do I really need to answer to any of these damn beings and are they even real? And if they are real, well, guess what? If they're the ones coming after you and, and trying to either quote unquote help you or guide you or destroy you whatever the case may be then they are still in the matrix what good does that do you so why not look at this through the lens of self-preservation 
and and concern for yourself. That's the biggest disconnect that I see. And I try to put that as I, I try to say so often, like you don't have to believe a damn word I say, but why don't you just take your time? You don't need to rush and make a decision about anything. You can do what you got to do. But if once you start interacting with these things, giving them powers that they do not deserve, and they can even be pawning themselves off as, as a, uh, you know, your deceased parents, deceased pets, loved ones, whoever, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, God itself, you know, we can go on and on and on about this. But the point is, is those entities are still stuck within the illusion of duality. The illusion that they have to answer to somebody else. And that's how they get us. That's how they get us. So, uh, so to those are in, in doubt, just look out for yourself. You do not need to communicate or interact with these beings when they tell you or allude that they need to interact with you. If they're pushing that, especially when you're on your deathbed, say you're in a hospice situation, you know, deathbed visions, visitations, you do not have to interact with these things whatsoever because once you do this channel i have proven time and time again that once you start tangling with these entities then you're done for you're done because that's how they get us they 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 hook us through the heart they try to get us to resonate with mom or dad or great grampy or great grammy or, or or whoever or god itself when they have not satisfactorily proved that they would even deserve communication and i know that might be harsh for some people but that's the case we need to just stand up for ourselves and say enough is enough I'm going to test the waters at my own pace. Personally, I don't think you should be hanging around much. And that's a topic for a whole nother discussion that we may get into on the, on the stream tonight, but don't submit. Don't think that these beings have a right to tell you how to think, what to do, where to go. All bets are off. Okay. That's the end of my rant. <laughs> no, that's a perfect and uh exactly i mean what if you're wrong like uh, i yeah. mean you're you're wrong but uh, what if you're wrong right and uh exactly it's, sure it's exactly and, and you just owe it to your you know true self your pure original self to basically have that your have that moment right have that like the she the, you don't you don't want to trust anybody you just you know shielding up you'll talk about it on the exit you know thing uh exit solutions but uh like uh, you owe that to yourself like you, because what if you're wrong uh, it, it, yep. you just lose eternity you know basically again like until you, you discover it again basically but when when it comes to safest position to take it's clearly the position where you just don't want to trust anybody like period like how many proofs we have to show you like you gotta yeah. you, know, you know it's insane how many right? more do you need to see yeah like and, and that's kind of what i want to also talk about like Clearly, like this system is, uh, that's why I kind of brought this topic up in the NPC topic, because like to me, like uh, all these experiences, ND experience, especially like careful structure from the get go anyway. And then it's, uh, it's all from the it, real life NPCs also manipulate you. And then, and then, and then at the end, the it, it basically entity NPCs kind of like the system bots kind of try to manipulate you. And uh, this is kind of why also when people talk about like, oh, we are just the children of the source God. We are just, you know, uh, you know, or, you know, there's, there's, but there's these fake spirit guys, but then there are these real spirit guys. Now, of course, uh, since we know we are here, there's your know, real spirits, you know, like us listening to us right now, a lot of people, right? And, you know, we know there's good out there. 
So, but we are all stuck in the system, just like Ipsy said. And that's kind of why you can trust anybody in the system while being inside the system, because this is like an inception of metaverses we are in. Yep, why, exactly. why would you try? Once you're in the system, why would you try? Uh, I mean, uh, to, you know, uh, trust anyone. It just doesn't yeah. make sense. I, I mean, and, and if anything, again, this reality is proved time and time again, it can not be trusted. And then there's this whole afterlife program running get the hell out of here i am not tangoing with any of it because it doesn't it hasn't earned or proven itself to be reliable trusting or anything oh ooh, mom and dad show up or or grandma and grandpa or jesus or buddha or muhammad show up my deathbed get out of here i don't know who the hell you are i i i'm still in this human state how can I possibly interpret what you're trying to convey to me? And then you just want me to trust you and you're telling me to go down the tunnel and go to the light. Hell to the no. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the biggest thing with all of this is that all we are saying is basically like your mom and your dad and all, whoever can wait. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, if time yourself. doesn't exist, who cares? Yeah. It's, it is and, and everyone's on an individual journey. That's that's seriously how I look at all this. Every single one of us has been on this individual journey for who knows how many lifetimes. And it's our time to reclaim our essence in nothing. Not mom, not dad, not uh, grandma, grandpa, nobody. It, not the pet, the dog, the cat. Nobody is going to stand in our way. Nor do they have a right to. Just because they're stuck in the matrix, if they're even real in the first place, exactly. then that's not my problem. I hate to be harsh like that, but that's how you have to look at this. You have to stand up for yourself and realize that these illusions are not what they are all cracked up to be. And they could play themselves off as very authentic, very loving, very, you know, you, you have a connection with them. But then also it's really important to take into account that every single minute, every single second, every single hour, every single week, month, year is recorded in, 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 in tucked away lifetime after lifetime. If that isn't a red flag for you, I don't know what is, but to me, it's creepy as hell. And I am not going to allow some being or illusion to tell me what I should be doing and comply and just accept it as truth. No chance in hell. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. This, this one is uh, definitely interesting. And uh, Ben also, like, you know, they say, uh, like, we are learning law and stuff. But, you know, when you think about how all of our lives are recorded and then, you know, everything is basically uh, in the past life regret, like, not the past life, which is the past, you know, life reviews, right? Uh, you, you can experience, right? You can relive those moments. You can relive it from others' perspective people's perspectives and then we have these astral projections you know talking about how they you know uh went to the archive records or whatever but they kind of have that access to that database some of them kind of uh you know experience their past lives maybe or experience some other people's lives some talk about so if we have this ability to experience other people's lives right just like relive them basically but in a second like in a way where we are not concerned them. We just see the life through them or whatever. Then, you know, uh, why would we not do that instead of just, you know, coming here fully? Like I, if I could you know, relearn law from that someone else's experience, just, you know, you know, in a, you know, without a time, just, you know, tap in and tap out and then learn another thing. Like if I wanted to learn all these things, uh, I, it's, it should be easy be knowing yeah. all the abilities we have, right? Knowing all, and and why, why do we have a right to be cut off? I mean, not right, but why are we cut off? I mean, I mean, if, if one figures out the bullshit, why can't we access it? I mean, that's a big question too. I mean, if you kind of see it 
for an illusion and, and this and that, and, and you open up your consciousness and uh, have experiences and, and, and do what you got to do, why, why is the system allowed to continually still veil us? Seriously, that's a big question. Exactly, yeah, biggest. Um, so basically, yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's what I, I want to say on that too. And uh, going back to the you now the NPC stuff, like not you know, it's to me it's clear like all these so-called entities, like most of them at least, you know, it's mm -hmm. uh, they, they seem like they just work perfectly uh, to basically pull that final trick at the end day at the end of the day. Uh, the last trick, like the white light, later or, or you know the timeline tricks, the in just controlling time and you know uh, putting people in different scenarios. It's all it's all just like it's they can easily mm -hmm. do all of it, right? Uh, so so yeah, uh, continuing basically on the NPC stuff. Uh, I believe like this theory of you know the NPCs not only here but on the of course astral planes, which is all part of the matrix, clearly. And uh, this, I think, this whole NPC thing explains perfectly why um, what we see around us when it comes to the conspiracies, the events that's happening, the news, and the movies, TV shows, music. Like once you wake up to this information, you start seeing it everywhere, right? And uh, it's like in some of the famous music, all of a sudden, like they were actually basically kind of hinting at talking about your not a love story, but a, your connection, your lost connection to your pure true self right and mm -hmm. um so then you start seeing it everywhere and then of course there's egyptian egyptian you know those signs and symbols out there and uh you know that, that has yeah, of course you know much deeper meanings to them and but we see it like why all these music all these emotions like why do they have to have all sing high why do they have to have these like you know the 666 signs or whatever like different you know cryptic hands because they love there. us <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it's clearly, you know, hinting, like clearly, you know, giving hints, like okay, not everything you see is clearly the way you think it is, you know. It's kind of exposing itself in that way. Uh, it can't help but expose itself. I think I feel like based yeah. on the rules, but uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, and you know, I, there's the uh, narrative with uh, drugs that I want to touch into because I feel like a lot of the things can be hacked, especially when we are talking about these uh, uh, drug experiences, like, you know, whether it can be DMT, uh, you know, edibles and all, all this, all this stuff. Uh, it's clear that like the, this kind of culture comes with let go, you know, let it go. Let give the driver's seat to the Jesus, you know, let go, yeah. you know, uh, you know, and clearly we know what happens when we give the driver's seat. To the, to the system right mm -hmm. and now now we know so uh, and this is why i kind of uh it's clear how why this uh, it, this whole you know the drug uh, you know even though they help of course massively right uh, but uh, at the same time uh like to to awaken it to certain things like the simulation type of stuff but at the same time uh it's clear that uh, the conclusions that I see, I hear from all these people, like, you know, we got to merge with the source, right? Or, you know, mm. it's all, uh, you know, at the end, it's coming from the same uh, real source God, you know, like we are the kids of the source God. And with that, with that belief to me is one of the most dangerous. Like yeah. now, like they, they, all these religions, all these systems of you trying to make you believe in higher authority, but now after the spirituality and new age, new cage and everything, and if you don't believe any of it, now we got you the real source God. You know, don't worry about forget about all these thousands of other gods and goddesses. Now we got the real source God. I and, got you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and uh, basically, yeah, I mean that's one. When we are stuck in these inception of metaverse type of systems, it's clear to me that you know considering that type of scenario, clearly, like we you know from the Indies, how much structured and you know, elaborated like all, all the system is uh, is right. It's just planned from the get go to trick the person at the end, to pull the final trick to them, to mind wipe them. Basically, it's, exactly. that's that's all it's about, and that's why it's very dangerous to. Even though you know they, it may be out there, real, you know, uh, and it kind of makes sense in some ways. But uh, at the end of the day, though, 
what we, again, comes back to the metaverse thinking, like what we all know about everything we learned, it came from the matrix basic, right? The astral planes, this plane, this whatever. Yeah, uh, but, it's from birth. From, from birth. birth, yeah. And multiple lifetimes in the past that we have no recollection of, mind you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And thinking about that, you know, how, uh, like there could be, you know, ET, like probably there's many matrices, right? Like the ET matrices where those, I you know, agree. those ETs are basically like maybe even has like a 300 IQ levels, like the max, max, you know? And uh, even those people, maybe those ETs are trapped and now, but they are not trapped and by or tricked by these so-called source gods or whatever, but they have now their own alien version of like a higher, much more complex thing that we can't even maybe think about in these limited brains and bodies. So uh, when we know about all these limitations that we have, clearly like it's it's not just not safe position to uh, believe that we are, you know, children of this source gods or whatever, like who knows what actually going on out there outside of this matrix. Yeah, we have no clue. And exactly. that's why playing it is safe as possible is the is the repetitive message on this channel it's take care of yourself don't rush into any decisions and link yourself with who you think to be spirit guides god uh, buddha muhammad you know mom dad grandpa grandpa no it just needs to um play itself out but from a sovereign perspective with complete and utter non-interference every step of the way so that you at least have the opportunity to make a decision that isn't influenced by something outside of yourself it's so easy yes 100 percent. and uh, so basically you know uh Considering everything you just said and considering the how you know everything seems to be you know, scripted perfectly according to goes according to the plan, you know, uh, until you basically realize, right? Uh, you have you know free will uh, to a certain extent, and you know you have the especially if you wake up more and more and realize your powers in, in the astral planes and all this other stuff about soul trap. Then you have like the most you know. Then you have the maximum amount of free will, right? Maximum amount of knowledge. You you're not falling for the traps that the system has, and uh, at that point, you know, uh, it's it's the best shape to be in. I feel like in order to you know not fall for any tricks like this again, because at the end of the day, we may have not known that these type of places existed, and you know, gradually be fallen to the maybe astral plane, you know, the mental, the nirvana planes, and then fall into the mental planes, fall into the astral planes kept getting tricked you know who knows what, what's going on but eventually we somehow agreed to this mind wipe where we are now fully limited basically can't do anything that we can do in the you know in our own realms in the astral planes yeah uh, so yeah. so yeah and but when it comes to you know how much of it is scripted and how these celebrities and thinking about the metaverse reality where the mark you know zuckerberg wouldn't allow you know all these celebrities to you know, basically expo expose the most important message that's running, the energy that's running the universe, right? You wouldn't want to uh, uh, kind of, right? And uh, so this is why I feel like the system is not uh, afraid of these major celebrities because they are the system, you know? Uh, they are potentially the uh, NPCs or whatever. They, yeah. they or, or the system knows that they will, they are uh, in a certain uh, script or in time timeline where exactly they, where they see into the future the system maybe right well, and they part, kind of just think about the life script if you're supposed to interact with uh person a b and c and x y and z then and and you're basically not questioning anything just going along with the illusion then you're going to interact with these strangers or or even people close to you that are in your family or friend circle or whatever. And again, you will impact them and they will impact you to further the illusion. So it's a lose lose situation, whether they're NPCs or real it's, 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 if someone isn't expanding their consciousness and awake and capable of discernment and realizing uh, the, the illusion that is this reality, the parasitic nature that is this reality, then it doesn't matter. It, it's a completely mute point. 
and they are just doing the systems bidding by proxy. Exactly. I mean, that's it. Just like the real spirit criteria, you know, they're in the system. You can't trust it. You know, they, 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 they have fallen for it. You have fallen for it. Why believe anything uh, other than, yep. you know, what you can basically experience and with evidence and, you know, your own experiences. You know, so that, that's what I'm at with that. And uh, so, so yeah, like I, that's why, you know, the system basically is not afraid of like the system had a hand in all these CEOs, probably like they, you know, they, they give their own people or, you know, bots the power basically <laughs> and to, to run the system. Right. And when it comes to other proofs of this, like there's of course this massive narrative, you know, the targeted people type of thing, which I, I, in some ways, you know, you're, once you're in this system, you know, you're the real spirit, you know, and the system records everything anyway, they, you're all, they know, you know, you're kind of what you're thinking in the astral and here, uh, when you're, you know, think kind of out loud in your head, you know, like an inner monologue thing. And so uh, that's when, you know, uh, I, I've seen like many stories from these type of people, which I kind of explained my own stories with that in a round table before. So I'm not going to get into it. This is a massive topic anyway, but uh, uh, I understand people's, you know, paranoia with it. But uh, when it comes to, you know, there's a lot of stories that, that these people tell where they're just random, random people, right? Uh, they, you know, they say some certain stuff that only this person knew and maybe their mother knew from like 20, 30 years ago. So it's impossible for this random homeless person or whatever to know about that. But, uh, you know, they say that and that's, that's very interesting. Like this another, you know, kind of like a cool system gives away one for the people who kind of wake up, right? And especially though, like when it comes to the solutions, which is the big, biggest thing that I want to talk about uh, with everything I'm talking about here is that like once you give power to it, especially like this type of system where it wants you in this fear, they're thinking so that it can, you know, basically control you and take your consent via, you know, making you believe in certain things that you would be afraid of for some reason, which, you know, there's nothing that we should be afraid of. And uh, so then, you know, you give more, more and more power uh, to the system to mess with you, you know? You notice some electricity going weird around you, just like, you know, these people who come from Indies, they, they are watch stop working or, or they are, you know, they, it's this you know, AI-based technology system is malfunctioning and then, you know, or some weird stuff happens in, in their environment, you know, it's, it's all metaverse anyways, of course, it's, especially if you give power to it, especially if you're paranoid, you're worried, what's gonna happen? It's, it's just gonna keep on increasing because, uh that's that's what the system is bad at best at you know they're just messing with people uh just you know making them afraid making them think like they are little they're just like an ant so so yeah i mean that's that's the thing i want to mention with that one uh and then i guess let me see here and the, and the thing so then you know I, I i wrote here you know even if the 50 percent of the world would be you know npcs you know, the, considering the population numbers, if they are true, that would leave us like 40 billion real spirits who got trapped here, which is insane. Like, however way you look at it, just like you said before in the channel, like it's it's a kind of messed up, all right? Who know? Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with that though, uh, like we don't know, you know, who knows the person, it could be 1%, it could be 99%, it could be 0.001%, .00 but it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, no, uh, they're I'm, I'm clearly trying. controlling it that much yeah. we know without any doubt that the parasites that are we can i guess classify as npcs or completely out to lunch and lost and, and and enjoy this physical reality are the ones that control the purse strings and uh the narratives and everything that this reality has to offer yeah yeah um and also when it comes to like the that now i want to kind of talk a little bit about the endless you know uh matrix police stories that we have right which is like oh not only that but we have endless stories on the weird like astro projection stories the you know the super soldier stories all these like weird there's a lot of weird things going on out there with all these weird stories and even if like, like even if 0.1 percent of them to be true which, you know, in this type of metaverse, of course, you know, Metis could mess with those people in many different ways. Uh, but, you know, these are kind of also hinting at, 
uh, the glitches in the system and how kind of NPCs work with that to make those people believe in like the shills and everything, and, you know, from the super soldier program, like, like you know, ton, tons of them, tons of them. Actually, you know what? My mic was muted and I said that that super soldier thing links into uh, the soul trap, which drives me out of my mind. It's, 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 it's horrible what is going on. <clears throat> and there are a few that I can think of off the top of my head that I will not name, but, uh, I know you had experiences with them and, um, let's just say that they, they've been at this, uh, scam for a while doing what they need to do and, um, also prop up blatantly obvious psyops and continue to do so for you know many years many many years it's it's really pathetic yeah and i guess then also this would be a good time to show i actually made like uh, this a huge uh youtubers list nice. uh, i I shared it like you know the, all these like it contains like the conscious YouTubers basically and also as well as the the, the people who are not there yet like you know the, what I call them kind of like a quarter half conscious so people know sure and uh, and, uh, and basically in, in this document I kind of had descriptions for all these people and I kind of shared this on the you know reincarnation truth the Reddit thing and it seems like it got a lot of good reaction and nice. you know I, and it, as you can see. This is the list and in the of course like i mentioned in the very beginning like and i'll, I'll mention here again that i only like after all the research i've done like i follow all tons of conscious soul you know conscious youtubers uh, some of them believe in the soul test some of them don't some of them you know they're all about soul prediction but anyway like it, all these like you know the real spirits basically who are trying to seek the truth out of all of them still like to this day i only Fully, like I only like you know trust the work of you know of course you in, in the very beginning, uh, Mark for your conscious research channel, uh, and and then in the Vein Bush and Overwatch you know channel uh, Dan because you know uh, you guys are the ones who investigated all these you know the thousands of NDs I mentioned here and all these other stuff that's mentioned here, uh, which I mentioned before like the, the, all the regressions and everything, uh, creator memories and all so. And in this list, there's of course like I expose it. Uh, I believe like there is definitely shows out there in YouTube like it's blatant. And for yeah. if if someone wants to go, uh, they can like I send you this link. I believe. Uh, uh, you want me to post it on the live chat or you, you, uh, can you share go it? Go for it. Who cares? Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, so if people, this is on uh, Reddit anyway. Uh, on here, uh, but uh, I'll post it here. So, but anyway, like, so this list though, uh, yeah, it exposes, you know, some of the people uh, and then there's all these other, like I just give descriptions for everyone. And- Let's and, pop a link in the chat too. Oh, you just did. Yeah, okay. I just did. All right, uh, and thank you. No worries. And uh, over there, like I, you know, I give descriptions on all these people and, Kind of criticize the people who needs to be criticized uh and you know also when you mentioned about uh, this is why i want to bring this up too when you mentioned about those people who i kind of got scammed from you know mm -hmm. uh if, you, if people want to hear the rest of the story on that one they can scroll all the way down on that list and to see basically what i think about what happened with that situation and yeah i mean it's just clear clear like there's a lot of like if not shields if not agents just complete delusional people. Yeah, yeah. You know? Just people who are trying to take advantage of others and don't care a lick about who they impact along the way. That's that that's parasitical behavior. That that's the way I look at it. And there are loads of them out there, but you just need to be able to look out for yourself and um don't get overly invested. Don't give the, if you're trying to get, uh, readings or clearings or this or that, 
you give them the bare bones minimum of information. Do not email or reach out to them through your main email address that can be uh, searched or purchased because what does that do? It puts a target on your head. It, 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 it makes you uh, vulnerable to be manipulated. If you're using the email address that you've had for 10, 15, 20 years, or even a few years, and it's got some sort of history that links to your name, your birth date, your astrological sign, all that stuff, and they can break that down and have something to lure you in and suck you in and think and make you believe that you're going to, you know, benefit from their services. Well, what does that do? It makes you a customer, makes you vulnerable and capable of being manipulated by these bad actors. And I'm telling you, there are so many out there. It's not even funny, but in the soul trap, uh, quote unquote community, there are more than enough that raise red flags and they're easy to detect. But the problem is, is you, you know, I don't like to assume that with anyone who's listening, you, you have to look at all this and say, you know, where am I at my journey? Uh, what does this person want? What am I going to get out of it? You know, what are they asking me for up front? They'll claim they're intuitive and link to this and link to that. And, you know, maybe they got a nice pair of tits or whatever the case may be. And they're going to try and suck you in that way. And that's not what you should be doing. You shouldn't be volunteering or giving them information. If they're asking you all these questions and, and you're emailing them from your, from your established email address that has a history. They're going to be able to prey on you beyond belief. And the same thing goes for medium psychics, anything, all these people who do this stuff, just look out for yourself, protect yourself. And just because they may say a few things related to the soul trap or this or that, or, you know, make up fantasy stories about the astral realm and meeting Hillary Clinton and, 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 and then there's all this other stuff, you know, and a deep history that they have well documented. Well, you know, it, you're setting yourself up to being preyed on. You don't deserve that, but these are how the types of people we talk about here on the channel work. They do not care about you. They do not love you. They, they're not looking out for your best interest. And if you're going to send them a PayPal or, or a donation through cryptocurrency or whatever the case may be, or on their website, they don't care. As soon as they, as soon as they got the money, they don't care. And if you give them even just a little squeak of information, they're going to run you into the ground and you're going to end up paying every single month to talk to them. But you know, who's to blame you because you chose to give them that information. And I'm not trying to be an ass, but if you, if you give hucksters your information voluntarily and, and, and don't cover your tracks before reaching out to them, if these people are who they claim to be, especially this male and female that I'm thinking of in, the, in my head, but it will not name, then you don't need to give them any additional information. If their powers are what they claim, why do they require so much? Why would you risk giving them and associating with them with a certain email or name or address or phone number. They can do a reverse phone number search and expose yourself. And then what they can do is profile you and take advantage of you month in and month out. Is that something you deserve? Absolutely not. But the key thing to keep in mind 
is that you need to look out for yourself and that if someone is claiming to have certain abilities, they should be able to prove that with very little information. Very, very little. And, it, and especially if it's online. Especially. I mean, I have run across some very intuitive people in my life. And, and my number one thing is give them the bare bones minimum. N barely anything. And if they're legit, or I don't give them any, anything at all. And if they're legit, you'll know it. Trust me, you'll know it. You you will sense it, feel it, this and that. But for the hucksters out there that are pulling this type of crap, trust me, they are very good at what they do. And all you have to do is give them just a little sliver of information. And if they feel it's cost effective, to run searches and and pay for background checks and this and that. Well, guess what? They got you. They got you. And there are loads of them out there. I'm telling you, there are so many out there. It's not even funny. Don't give these people a cent. Don't give these people. And if you're going to pay them, don't give them any information and, you know, come create an email that and a name and a, and a birthday that has absolutely nothing to do with you so that it's 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 anonymous um contact so then if you are willing to go the extra step and pay them that when you come out of that session and you provide them that information they'll crumble before your eyes and prove to you that they don't deserve another penny but you know what? It's also a good lesson, too. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Make of it what you will. Um, but please, please, please protect yourself. That's first and foremost. All right. I'm sorry about that rant. <laughs> no, that was that was perfect. And uh, that's this needed to be said. Like, it, it needs to be said for sure. And this video uh, on the screen from you, like how to detect uh, disinformation agents chills spiritual parasites this is like the best video that exists like of course nobody else is doing that, this type of video like uh, this is why like also uh Thanks, bro. It, it's it's clear you know how uh how much you care about the community because these people are for sure out there and nobody calls them out and uh yeah. this yeah this video uh has been uh, great in my making great in my making and when it comes to also the let me get this one here um yeah, it'd be great if people checked out that video because a lot of my older videos get lost. I mean, that, 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 I can't tell you how much effort and time that I put in that. And, and the reason for that video specifically is because I got my ass kicked. I've done two different videos. One was, you know, similar topic. And this one is kind of like the magnum opus on how to detect. Uh, agents, shills, and spiritual parasites. And if if you haven't had a chance to see it, check it out. I mean, it really, it's all inclusive. It, it, it shows all the bullshit that I went through and that you got to be careful out there. You really do. But, um, you know, the, these types of videos, because I've been covering the soul trap so much, they're, they're, way way down in, in the video log so feel free to check it out if you'd like yeah it's an amazing video must watch video everyone Thank in the community you. has to see it you know um because yeah they're out there and uh i mean whether they are delusional they are npcs they are you know system you know uh, operated things uh, the agents the shields the gatekeepers the whatever you know it doesn't matter like it, it all like what are they telling you about? Like, why is Mark is one of the only people uh, with us as well as Dan and William Bush? Like, who cares about you know sovereignty? Like, especially Mark uh, at that though, uh, with the sovereignty message. Like, it's the most important message that needs to be out there. And uh, but we have all these people who never ever mentioned that, you know. And and then we have of course the, you know, there's just tons of traps. Like I mentioned here, you know, that are meant for people like us. Who just you know wake up to uh, yep. the soul trap like the white light and now 
you know, here comes the, oh, we got to merge with the source, like of the ego thing. Or, and there's, oh, don't go into the, you know, the yellow light, or the, you know, rather blue, I mean, not blue, the, the white light, but go into the yellow or blue Yeah, light, go to the yeah? clear light, go to, the, go to this light, go, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and hopefully, you know, you'll reach a gatekeeper and that entity will be the one that determines whether you're worthy or not. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it's it's just insane. Uh, not, not only that, then, but we have also like the, you know, just wait until your toes come back, you know, just wait in the matrix, uh, which is, you know, again, like it, it's just not the best advice out there, right? Like hmm. uh, rather than you know, shielding and everything else. But uh, also, you know, uh, so you tur turn away from the light and go into the rest of the universe. You know, you'll see. You know, of course, if you believe in that, Mitch is going to be, okay, this is the rest of the universe. Now that you see see you see these planets you know go enjoy and it's out of sight of matrix you know like like it's that's what they the system will make you believe of course yeah, if you, if yeah you turn around and, and go between the grid everything will be okay i promise i mean oh yeah yeah that, yeah that was the next one yeah like it's like oh you gotta go back like there is this video actually um where this is of course it's gone viral right like it's about like don't go into the light uh type of video it's, it's like almost half a million people you know seen it because the system of course boosted it and the system allows that video since that video uh, contains so many traps like it's insane and this guy uh who's basically talking about like oh you know uh go so you know you gotta go this way and then take a left and then go that way and then do this, you know, until you see that, and then go at the very end of that, until you see that, it's at which point you'll be, you know, outside the matrix and you'll be able to do this or that. So how do you know? Like, holy shit. Exactly. Uh, I mean, exactly. I mean, and that, that's the point of everything. We don't know. And so why not be rooted in sovereignty, liberation, self-protection, non-interference? What's wrong with that? I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, these, you know, the best Panda papers, this, all these people, you know, like these giving out these weird, weird uh, advice, you know, uh, saying, no, 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 it's you got to go to the true light, you got to go to the true sun, you got to go to the, the, not, don't listen to that spirit guides, but listen to these spirit guides, you know? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Couldn't agree anymore, bro. Yeah, it's it, clearly, so these people are out there, out there. It doesn't matter if they're delusional or not. You, you know, it's just what they say doesn't make sense based on a once you know once you realize the soul trap system, the everything else it comes with it. These tips are horrible, horrible. Period. So so yeah, that's basically love the, it. Yeah. Love it. All right. So yeah, um, we can take a break. Yeah, I think we're almost at um. Yeah, almost five and a half hours, five hours, 20 minutes. So we will take a five minute break and we will see you all again shortly. Still much more to come. Hang in there. Thank you so much. Cool. Thanks. Hey.
Okay, we are back. Thank you for your patience, everybody. And, um, all right. Where are we headed next, my friend? I, I was thinking to quickly finish up this NPC stuff. Yes. And then, you know, uh, move on to, on to maybe the where I'm coming with the veganism and plant-based diet, sure. which has been a big part of my awakening. And I feel like there's a lot that uh, people could, you know, benefit from the Great. knowledge that I'll share regarding that. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, let's, uh, we'll head back into the NPCs and then head into vegan veganism afterwards. Already. All right. So basically let's see where we're left here. Um, okay. So then of course there's the thing about the inner monologue, right? Where oh, that's massive. It's, it's, yeah, it's super massive. Like, I don't know. I can't really imagine how that wouldn't be there for some people, but you know, excuse me. It's like, it's yeah, clearly, you know, it's something very interesting where I saw even like a college, uh, like a, in a college room, they did like a, almost like a survey test up, test type of thing to determine how many of people had inner monologue. I and saw I that too. I think we saw yeah. the same thing. Yep. Yeah. And, um, was, wasn't there, do you remember the results? I feel like remember around 50% or more who, who didn't have any monologue. I don't remember the results, but I remember this. I remember that study. And then there was another one that I read that I think was more like 30 or 35% didn't have an inner monologue, which is still massive. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you know, that that's just off the top of my head. I can't say with any certainty. So yeah, I mean, just to briefly cover that, you know, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, and then there's almost a third eye inner imagination thing. Can you that's... zoom in on the, what you got on the screen there? Like uh, this stuff? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the most zoom in, like it's usually like, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, no I'm, worries. Yeah. I made them bold. So I think it's readable on full screen probably. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, that's interesting. Of course. Uh, I heard of a story like from someone else, uh, who online, I think like at the work, you know, they were talking about, you know, sometimes I change my inner speech into like a Donald Duck speech or something. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, I to make, to make uh, fun, like to kind of uh, make myself laugh. And then this uh, randomly, like this one of the coworkers said, what are you talking about? And then like, they tried to explain it to him. You know, what? That's like, you are, then you're crazy if you're in your monologue. And then, so that's very interesting. You know, I wonder how many actually people may not have in their monologue and if they have any connections to them being maybe you know, a bots of the system or whatever, you know? Uh, so that's interesting. And then there's also another interesting thing with the glitching, you know, celebrities thing, which is insane. Like <laughs> there's uh, so many, so many weird yes. videos on that one. And I'll just, just kind of share one video that's, uh, and one like 10 seconds of that video where I just like, I don't see how anyone can explain that basically. No, 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 no. It, it, it's so clear that it's some sort of robot. I mean, it's yeah. blatant, blatant. Yeah, I, I look forward to having you share that with us tonight. So yeah, that one is basically so here uh, in this file. And then the the, the, the character we'll talk about is Jalen Rose, you know, and in this video, so I'll, I'll zoom in uh, in this part, which is very interesting. And I'll kind of even slow down the video. Uh, so here I'm zooming in. So, and now you can see like, what is that? What is he holding yeah. right there? Like what? Basically that isn't that, uh, and just to be, can you hit the, um, the, so, I think it's I the actually theater made it, view. I speed it up. Actually, I'm used to speeding up as you know, okay. um, so yes. make it slower. <laughs> And uh, so let's see here. So, 10 times. <laughs> uh, let's zoom in here. Now, the no blinking, zero blinking for the whole time. Yeah. Uh, seconds. And then we have, what is this now? What is he holding here? You know, 
like you think like it's okay mic but oh what is this whole thing it's kind of the face is coming off basically right the zero billing uh the skin is basically there it's just so weird and this was on so robotic. tv this was on tv you know it's just so weird yeah. uh so yeah we have many examples of that uh but uh you know there's that you know that's interesting uh, about them you know uh other than that then we have of course these people who you know they come from back from indies or they just basically they say they train their eyes with you know these aura glasses or whatever and then they claim to see auras around people and so there's also it. that um mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt but there's also the um oh, i wish i could remember her name it's gonna drive me nuts there's <clears throat> There's this woman, or supposed woman, that is clearly uh, very talented, to say the least. And um, she's able to pop herself, uh, her joints out, and, and, and all sorts of stuff. And I think she's a singer, if I recall. Um, I wish I had the example but I don't remember her name, but uh, she didn't hold back whatsoever. She was proud of showing her robotic self. And um, again, this is a pop culture icon. I don't remember who it was. It wasn't someone like, uh, you know, Britney Spears or anything like that, but it was someone, I guess, fairly well known, but I don't remember then. Who knows? But the point is, is these beings, these robots, I hate even calling them beings, but these robots exist and they are part of the counterculture narratives that plague society. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they basically structure the society by using those people. Uh, yeah. it's, it's blatant in the music industry is blatant everywhere. And uh, so, um, and uh, talking about these people about auras though, who can see auras, they, I heard some of them mention like how there are these different type of people, they have the different type of aura that they see, or, you know, these people who take DMT and sometimes they walk around people like not going to like a meditative state by closing their eyes, but they kind of walk around people. And some people say like, they seen like a robotic beings out there. And I, I heard it with some other, uh, like children stories where uh, they can, you know, see into the people like auras and other stuff, uh, feel what's going on. Uh, and some of them, you know, claim the same thing. Uh, so that's, uh, these are just interesting, you know, things that are out there. And then, and then the biggest thing which, which I'm gonna ask you about also is like, I have started to notice it's a lot of these NDAs, right? Uh, where clearly, like they all randomly talk about, for example, this one one ND I was listening in uh, Julie's channel, and uh, they, this person was saying, okay, it was like uh, coming close to my you know near death experience time, but you know before that I ran into this random person who said the thing you saw in your dream last night it was true, and that was like a premonition dream about her ND or something. And, you know, uh, and I, I, there's also another story I, I remember from like another like a uh, work situation where this guy in the, in this is a, in a Facebook astral travel projection group that I follow. Uh, so this guy was saying, oh, finally, I did it. I had an astral projection experience. I saw myself, you know, uh, it was insane. It was, you know, and, uh, but you know what happened? I went to the job and in the lunch break, this random person came to me uh, and then claimed, I think, to be a medium or something. And then uh, she said, one of you had an experience uh, yesterday. It's a, a spiritual experience. Uh, uh, who is that? And then this guy said, oh, it's me. It's me. Uh, you know, and then this person tells her, him what you had uh, shouldn't have happened. It wasn't supposed to happen. You shouldn't look further into that. You shouldn't investigate that right now. Uh, and uh, isn't that like, couldn't it get more obvious, you know, like this, this is a system bot who's trying to stop 
basically this person from discovering his real self, basically real powers. So that's, I, I feel like these, and that's what I kind of want to ask you too, because I notice a lot with these and these where the, before even the, you know, pre that, you know, that, that, that visions and all this, that that's going on, goes on with that. Uh, even before that, like I noticed uh, the, with the live script we see everywhere, you know, these random people coming and changing the timeline of that person basically and i find it uh, very interesting that you know again system not only uses the npcs uh, ai bots or in the astral and any other matrix plane and it's just doing it in this same plane as well which is just another basically astral plane but more way more dense and made us believe in all this physical stuff so it's all slower and everything else but yeah, I, I'm curious, what do you think about, uh, do you see a lot of that type of real life manipulation with NDs where these random people whom seem like, you know, system bots who come at these people and you share certain information and these people, of course, think they are maybe guides, they are maybe, you know, whoever. So yeah, I'm curious what you think about that all. Um, let me see. Are, are you there, Etsy? I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just um, as far as the um, it's like we're being quarantined time and time again by these exterior matrix narratives and, and belief systems, and there's just not much we can do except take control of ourselves once again and never look back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, there's also uh, like, a, we know from like the Matrix, the good place, Mars world and all these mm -hmm. other stuff, hinting at, you know, we have the NPCs, right? And um, and then uh, these, uh, we talked about how this system, of course, helping these, it's like helping their people, you know, to get to the certain positions like CEOs, maybe possibly like the famous people. And at the end of all of it, though, like we are talking about a hologram, you know, simulation type of reality where everything is possible, right? Everything is possible yeah. in the matrix. And once I everything's start everything's on the table, everything is on the table. And once I start to see like our universe, like a metaverse, you know, and uh, this this whole NPC thing even start to become make more sense. Just like a, you know, a game uh, background people like try uh, scripting everything you know by using these people to manipulate the environments so that you know the the environments are created in the way the creator wanted to create it uh creator of that metaverse or whatever and yeah that's that's definitely makes a lot of sense to me and then of course there is the we are all one messages that are out there like clearly like uh, high mind type of messages like the system would love us to be a part of them. This is why transhumanism and all these chips and all this other stuff that's coming up, I feel like, and more and more to be losing uh, parts of ourselves, uh, our consciousness, you know, our energy. And uh, two, so, so that's that. And the system, of course, there's also the aspect of it where uh, some of these people out there is just like relentless, right? Like you can't, uh, you can't tell them anything. They will just never even investigate anything they just you know uh belligerent like towards their truth right and uh mm -hmm. they're just against it it is against the truth basically they hate it and they attack you for it like if you try to uh you know think for yourself uh they don't like that you know it's got to be high mind thinking and so yeah that's that's very interesting uh, with that too uh, so that's basically all I have to say, but I, I think, uh, I don't know if I explain myself better, but uh, with, with the thing, no, I'm talking about like the thing I was talking when I said like uh, with NDs, I see a lot of uh, people, the real life people who come to these, come to these uh, people who had ND experiences, right? In real life and say certain things to them that kind of affects their ND experience later on. And like a live script type of situation. And I, I noticed a lot of NPC uh, going on, on, basically, NPC thing going oh, on yeah. with that ND thing. That's, I was curious if you see that a lot as well. Oh. Like, Yeah, no, it seems it seems so blatant. 
uh, and obvious, but it's something I try to avoid bringing up because I, again, like we've reached back to the same point where we don't know. Yeah. We, ju yeah. we just don't know, but it, it seems like the matrix marketing department <clears throat> is rearing its ugly head at every turn we go. And, and there is no doubt in my mind it's happening in NDEs, but, um, I reserve comment when I'm going over things like that, because I, I just, there's no point. I mean, it's not gonna, it's only gonna isolate people and, and, and make people think differently and, 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 and give them a reason to not look into this. So it's kind of about balancing uh, the importance of of finding this information so oh, okay i see i see where you're coming yeah. from and uh that, that's how i feel about it i mean there's, there's nothing there's there, there's no benefit you know i mean what am i going to do please a few people who have looked deep into this stuff and and they get it yeah i mean that's that's cool and all that a few people will get it but at the same breath it's like who cares? It's 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 it it it's gonna prevent people from looking into the soul trap, and that's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah, and basically with that, I uh, just want to say like it's interesting, you know, how we a lot we lose a lot of nerves basically trying to debate with some people, and I don't think it's uh, necessary to give that type of energy to some of the people, you know, and mm -hmm. because especially considering this uh, potential NPC theory being true. And, you know, maybe you're just wasting your time with some of these people. And I feel like you have to have that inner search, you know, that inner uh, sovereignty that's coming off uh, by you seeking the truth, like you kind of saying, why though? Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so that's kind of needed out there for people to question. And if some people don't have that, you know, they don't have it and they don't want to have it. That's okay. You know, I'm just going to look after myself basically. And that's why I wanted to conclude with that because, uh, at the end of the day, we just can't trust anyone here. Doesn't matter if the person here or doesn't matter if it's an entity over there or whoever. So that's what I want to say. Like, you just can't trust anyone until we get out of here, until we give ourselves that time to remember our real essence memories. And at that moment, then we can, you know, basically decide what to do better because we are right now limited, fully limited, fully mind wide. We don't know, you know, who knows the amount of things we don't know. So yeah, that's so an Couldn't yeah, couldn't agree anymore. I mean, it's uh, so so true. We just need to reclaim ourselves through non-interference, sovereignty, and liberation. I mean, it's just it's 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 the safest option. It's like this reality has proved itself time and time again to be the most deceptive, vile. Uh, crackhead crazy type of reality that probably any of us could experience and uh giving ourselves away to something else that we know nothing about or or at least uh think that we know something about it um is ridiculous when there's this massive disconnect remember we're in this physical body and yeah, okay, oh, oh, you know, we can astral project, we can have lucid dreams and, and go out and, and, and have a good time and, and discover our powers, which is absolutely important. And, and, and I stress that to the end. But in the same breath, relying on something exterior to yourself and then realizing the truths of this reality make it, all come into question make it all um uh you know the red flags are everywhere and we just need to protect ourselves and do what we need to do so that we don't get caught up in this mess again i mean it's so so important yes yes couldn't have said it better exactly um that's the biggest biggest thing with this like sovereignty and liberation freedom that's what we are after. Uh, that's what we'll get. Um, so and if yeah, we're wrong, the... so what? You know? If we're wrong, so what? Okay, like, oh, I, I wasn't forced into making a decision. Whoop-de-doo. 
If the system is what it claims to be, it can fucking wait. It can wait and sit there uh, on its ass. And when I'm ready to acknowledge it, and if I and if I've reached a certain point where I feel that it deserves my interaction and respect, so be it. But until then, and I don't think there's anything that it deserves to be respected for, then, you know, I would rather play it safe all the way to the end. That, uh, it just, it, to me, it's just common sense. And uh, no matter where you are on this issue with the whole Matrix reincarnation soul trap, all that matters is that we cover our own ass and don't think twice about it nor uh involve ourselves with anything to do with this realm and if we're limiting ourselves and thinking oh this is all there is to it and i'm not talking about just earth i'm talking about the astral realms linked to here if you have a mindset that you know the astral is um you know, God's kingdom and, 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 you know, this, is this is what it is, you know, everything boiling up to the moment when you die is all about going to the light, going to the tunnel, listening to entities that claim to be this one or that one, whether they're family or religious deities, it doesn't matter. Whatever the case may be, the point is, is it seems very clear that interacting with these things hasn't served us well. And all we got to do is say, okay, I'm doing my, going my own way, do my own thing. And if this system is what it claims to be and it's all cracked up and, you know, and the white light is God and, and the universe, it's a gateway and whatever the case may be, okay, fine. But that damn thing can wait. It doesn't need immediate gratification. And nor does it deserve it. That's the other thing. What the hell makes us think that this system deserves our respect or attention in any way, shape, or form? It has proven itself to be parasitic and a complete insane asylum. So enough is enough. Yes, definitely. Enough is enough. I mean, I'm done. Yeah, it's we're all kind of done with it, like in the way where just done with these uh, these deceptions, you know, done with these traps, done with these games. Uh, it's just uh, definitely not. It's coming from a nefarious source, not a benevolent source. It's clear as in a day. So, so yeah. I mean, that's that's all there's to say on that one. Yeah. Totally with you, my friend. Yeah, and uh, I guess, you know, I can go into the vegan topic. Yeah, that's well, let's, let's head to Veganville. All right. All right, so so basically, yeah, the, the vegan thing has been for me. Like, uh, I, you know, I, I told you about the martial arts thing. And at some point, though, uh, I kind of, like, injured myself. And then I was, like, uh, almost, like, limping and then... Uh, and then I kind of started gaining weight a lot uh, before, right? Before becoming vegan. And then I then I started, you know, kind of, like I was just on YouTube, kind of searching for something, I guess, right? Like search. And then this this uh, interesting uh, speech came out in, in my case, uh, which, which is called like if, if someone writes, you know, best speech you will ever hear, uh, that's the speech that they'll see. And uh, which is, you know, uh, it's right here. So, yeah. And this this speech uh, has been basically kind of after I saw that speech, like basically uh, same day, just like it, it, the same thing happened to me with you know, all the other stuff. Uh, with atheism, you know, Jumatri, I'm in the like Tartaria, spiritual, you know, new age stuff. And then Soul Trip and now this. Uh, this happened in the same way where it just clicked for me. And after I listened to this speech, which, you know, is in one can find by writing just the best speech you'll ever hear, uh, it's, you know, uh, it was a huge awakening on my end, which kind of kickstarted a lot of the other awakenings. Which Can you zoom in a little bit on that one? 
Yeah, and this led me to more on, you know, more on like a little bit more on the spiritual path, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this speech by this guy. And it is actually, interestingly, this speech was so effective that like it actually turned almost 10% of Israel's whole population into like a, I, I said vegans, but like, yeah, vegans. And then there's like a lot of vegetarians too. Uh, it's, it's insane, like uh, how famous this speech gets, which is now translated into 35 different languages, uh, even probably more at this time. And so, yeah, like uh, this is the speech I'm talking about from this guy. And uh, anyway, uh, but uh, I wanted to talk about, you know, uh, what happened afterwards and kind of you know i remember you talking about like uh the kind of veganism stuff with Wayne bush and then uh you know all this you know i remember you mentioning the you know horrors of factory farming a few times which i really appreciate and i'm sure all vegans appreciate animals appreciate it you know and uh oh it's awful yeah awful. yeah definitely and yeah thank you so much for you know doing that and you know giving me the opportunity here to talk about this topic because i feel like if this is an important topic that is not necessarily represented well out there by some people and you know uh today i'd like to like be represent the more of a rational logical side of things and try to explain the topic under like a you know different light not the white light of course <laughs> and you know we should definitely mm -hmm. avoid all the white light stuff but uh, uh um you know it's just uh I mean, a lot of people are, I feel like, going the wrong way when it comes to exposing this issue, even though I can't really, you know, blame those people in their or their approaches, you know, because at the end of the day, they're just trying to talk for the animals who can't talk, right? And, exactly. you know, so so I believe that's, you know, ad that's admirable in itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm with you. Totally, same, totally with you. Same way how you talk about our, basically, you know, how we are farmed here and you're trying to expose that, you know, that's what kind of vegans are trying to do with animals. For sure. Yeah. And um, so, and I'm sure like if you were to talk about, you know, dogs and cats or, you know, factory farm, you know, at, like if the, if the Yulin festival was happening in people's own back, backyard, right. Then I'm sure many of those people would probably react quite similar to some of the vegans they hate out there too absolutely uh, i i agree with that yeah and um so yeah i'd like to i guess start with the definition definition of uh, veganism which is according to like the vegan society and the exact definition would be you know veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose, and by extension, promotes development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. So basically, that's that's the definition, and you know, it doesn't have nothing to do with really perfectionism, nothing to do with you know moral spirit, spirituality. Even though you know a lot of people, you know, kind of, you know, a lot of you know bad and weird people out there who misrepresent a lot of the stuff with all the topics, but uh and act all high and mighty you know their white horse but um you know many of us you know would like to be would like there to be less suffering in the world right and would like to basically cause the least amount of suffering in the world and i you know i feel like that's exactly what veganism is all about like if and if you were to you know imagine just putting a rabbit or a kitten and a banana in a room where there's a toddler and just to see, you know, which one uh, the toddler tries to play with and which one the toddlers will eat, 10 out of 10 times the toddler will, you know, never eat the rabbit. And, uh, you know, studies have, you know, found that they are, you know, these pigs, for example, right? Uh, they are actually smarter than dogs and even three-year-old children. They say smart. Yeah. It's they just like, they are basically three-year-old children. They have the same, yeah. you know, intelligence and... So we are basically kind of talking about children here uh, when we're talking about you know, some of these factory farmed animals. And, you know, especially, you know, uh, like if, if even we, like if we were to think that these, these three-year-old children, basically like these animals, but were to ever create a, an organized religion, clearly like the devil for them would be depicted in human form. Like, uh, and, I'm going to a little bit go dark on the way, like try to explain this, but uh, you know, as far as I can see, like humans are 
like to, to make the connection with the soul trap and stuff, like the Delush at least aspect of it. Like as far as I can see, like humans are clearly the archons here, like the, the Delush farmers, the you know, the big architects the, to the factory farm animals. And we are even more open and direct about it uh, too, like where we basically look at them and say, you know, you've got something that I want. So I'm going to, you know, limit your movement and imprison you in these factories you were born yeah. in where, you know, you won't know most of what's going on in the outside. And the only thing you'll know your entire life will be just suffering, being used and abused the whole time. And, you know, where suffering will sometimes feel natural to you. And even though in some cases you could just jump off of a wire fence to escape, you won't even consider that option as you'll be kept ignorant and, you know, as to what's going on outside. And you'd probably, you know, come back crying to us anyway. And then I'll confine you in what is called in the, you know, these factory farming industry as, you know, these things called uh, rape rags. And then, you know, I'll, I'll forcibly impregnate you. And then when your baby is born, uh, if he ends up being a male, I'll either call him immediately or chill it after a few weeks of confinement and sell his, you know, rotting body under a made up name called Beal. So that, you know, not everyone will understand that they are eating an innocent baby, basically. And if it, mm -hmm. it's like, if, if the baby is a female, I'll also remove her, you know, from her mother to see yeah, their yeah, cries. Yeah, separate the family. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's absolutely appalling. And it it the soul trap is represented in that in spades. It it's in our face, but uh, at the same time, the uh, it's it, it's such a, a catch twenty two, right? Because um, uh, we live in this society where um, there's this disconnect from exactly what you just mentioned. The, the separation of um, the pigs or the cows or, or whatever. And it it's ugly, ugly shit. And um, no matter where you stand in all of this, uh, the, the important thing is, is to be honest with yourself and say, hey, all right, um, you know, it's happening it's appalling. Um, one of the biggest things I tried and I've talked about this before is like, okay, if you're going to eat me, I, I get it. I mean, I'm personally a vegetarian, so I'm not like completely clean or anything like that. But, uh, it, it, at the same time, uh, you know, if I'm getting, uh, you know, I'll maybe eat eggs, um, once a month or something or once every other month and and uh cheese and i and i try to get it locally sourced i know where it's coming from and make sure that at least it's coming from something somewhat ethical and at least the places i've gone to are of that nature um but because and and i have had my own mother admit this that you know, if she had to go out into the wilderness and um, kill something to eat it, that she wouldn't do it. And I and I would imagine that if you asked most people out there the same question, they too would say the same thing. And um, it's because of the modern society in which we live in. It's convenient. It's, it's ready. It takes away the, the, the compassion, the empathy, the care, everything about it is removed by the, from the, the company that's producing and giving you that item in relation to, um, you going out there and doing it yourself. Um, one of the biggest things I, I, I stress over and over and over on this channel is that if you're going to eat meat or, or chicken or fish or this or that, fine. That's, you know, that I, I don't judge people for it. But in the same token, that doesn't mean uh, going and buying your meat at the grocery store is is okay. Like, I don't think it's okay. I don't. If, if, if you're going to buy it, um, your meat that is sourced from a torture chamber. That's not cool. In my opinion, you should go out of your way 
to make sure that it's properly sourced from a farmer that actually gives a shit and isn't going to, isn't, you know, you see the operation in progress. So, uh, again, the, the biggest disconnection from all of this is, is the mainstream because most people will not go out and do this and obtain their meat or their chicken or their fish or whatever it is on their own because of modern day conveniences. And it, let's just be honest, we are seeing loosh up in our face, uh, energy extraction in our face, uh, no cow, no chicken, no anything. No animal deserves to be penned in these factory farms. And if you support those or um, can at least l consider that, you know, maybe that's not a, a proper thing to align with, then that's on you. But at the same rate, it's very obvious that these things are horrible, absolutely appalling. And if you're going to eat the meat, at least figure out where the hell it's coming from. If you're going to eat the chicken, at least figure out where it's coming from and, and, and take a look and see what's going on. Cause what's going on behind the scenes is it's heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking and i am not some holy roller vegetarian vegan type guy i'm just saying like look if if that's what you need for your for your protein or your day-to-day your -day, and 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 that's another thing is it's important to to take into account that everyone has different diets i have spoken to uh many uh, former vegans, current vegans, uh, former vegetarians, current vegetarians. And, um, I don't judge people if, 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 if they're not feeling healthy or, or something's going wrong in their life and that they need to, um, you know, and they, they gave it a go and, and, and it didn't work out for them. Look, you know, that's up to them. That's totally up to them, you know, but, uh, at least at a bare bones minimum, know where it's coming from, know where it's sourced. The same thing applies for things like clothing. You know how many, you know, how much clothes we all get from our, uh, you know, that, that come from sweatshops. I go out of my way to make sure that I'm not getting clothing from a sweatshop. So I'll go to a secondhand store, a consignment shop, what goodwill, Salvation Army, whatever the case may be. And I, and I'll get secondhand clothing. And because I refuse to support these big corporations that are sweat, you know, sweatshops and abusing children, women, men of all ages. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to support that. So that is the key thing is in, in my opinion is to make sure that you know where this stuff is coming from and look on the screen with what's there and say, okay, this being is kind enough to provide my meal tonight. And if I'm going to eat it, I at least want to be linked and aligned with something that isn't putting them in a, a small little pen where they can't even move and they're just stuck there and, and processed whenever, whenever they're plump enough and, and ready to be shipped off to the stores. That's when it goes. I'm sorry that, that, that that's my rant on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for, for when it comes to that, you know, of course, as like an ethical vegan, I have totally different beliefs on regarding a lot of the things you said. And uh, when it comes to like, you know, like uh, it's an interesting issue, of course, because kind of like to me, I can't just say, uh, you know, I, I, I don't go with like at least this and this and that, you know, because that's kind of like me saying 
when it comes to soil trap, you know, to the archons, you know, at least, you know, don't harvest these, you know, suffering people who are, you know, poor. Just, you know, harvest oh, the energy of the it. rich people, yeah. you know? Uh, you're so, right. You're right. so, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And so there's that. And then this, even like the, you know, the standard, like legal, you know, form of slaughter for animals is for them to be stunned, right? And then have their throat slit. And uh, for chickens and pigs, the stunning, you know, is generally done with like an electric shot. And for other animals, like a, a bolt pistol, you know, a metal rod to the forehead. And it's, you know, these things, are, they claim like, that this renders the animal 100% unconscious. But like, if you actually look into the facts, slaughterhouse workers will admit like there's no way to verify that this is the case for every single animal. And indeed, the process doesn't always work, isn't like followed routinely. And, you know, the stun can wear off while the animal is being killed, basically. So regardless of the fashion of execution, there's, there isn't a justification in my beliefs for killing and taking the life. Uh, it is, it is, I, I'm with you. I, yeah, I hear you. I know. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, I, I hear you too in some ways. But uh, yeah, I mean, to me, like it's still, you know, take, uh, take, uh, taking the life of like a sentient being for your enjoyment ultimately. Yeah. And if if somebody you know killed your companion companion animal, I doubt like people would say that's that's fine because you did it mainly, you know. And regardless of the nature of their you know lives before slaughter, farmed animals you know get sent to slaughter at the end of the day. There is no misconception that you know animals get to live out their lives and then get killed like animals get killed as soon as their purpose is served yeah. or as soon as they reach a profitable size which is a fraction of their potential lifespan the way like the, the very definition of the grass-fed you know organic free range animals is actually very loose and can vary widely it doesn't mean that the animal have any kind of quality of life necessarily it just it just means the farm has to meet some arbitrary like uh, requirements to earn that title that's yeah. not you know Great mm -hmm. point. No, that, no, yeah. no, you're, you're, dude. I, 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 I I'm with you 100. percent I am. Yeah, no, you're right. It's, it's, it's. At the end of the day, it's, it's excuses. <laughs> it really is. No, I mean that, that to, to, to a vegan, that's yeah. fully that total excuses. And yeah, and, and that's not to say like all the things I'm talking about. Like that's not to say that every single farmer treats their animal you know dreadfully while they live. Some actually do you know give their animals a fair you know standard of life before sending them to yeah, have but, their slow but, street. But they would have lived longer if they didn't end up in the farm. Right. I mean, exactly. If, if they weren't born there and, and put through the conveyor belt of slaughter. They would have lived longer and, yeah. you know, and maybe had a more fruitful life and, and, and yeah. lived out whatever their time would be naturally versus, um, you know, being on the conveyor belt of uh, death to serve other people. Yeah. And, and like so at, at the end of the day, so this is the main point with this one. So there is no, I, I don't think there is a, such a thing like a happy and humane slaughter. Just like there's no such a thing as happy and humane rape, happy and humane slavery, happy and humane, you know, child molestation. So that's why, you know, vegans would definitely differ on that belief. And uh, so, and uh, it's also like with these interesting, like I'll just share it here. Uh, with these terms that they use, right, the free range, humanely raised, slaughterhouse, like organic and everything like that. If you look into all the things I would, I shared in here, like it's insanely, uh, uh, like all these claims that they are making like they add a light into a slaughterhouse and they say it's like uh you know grass fed or something they just pass some arbitrary like some uh weird plot hole thing and then now they put the thing mostly like uh, unless you know the farmers unless you know everything not that you see this slaughter taking place and nobody wants you to see that type of stuff anyway uh which is why it's like all kind of you know uh, you can't even go in there, like uh, all these factory farms, like you, you just go to the, uh, it's illegal and they don't want you to know basically. And that's why they market it as a oh, happy cow, happy chicken, happy thing. Like it's like they're eating oh, grass, yeah, they're eating yeah, that. Yeah. And kind of same thing goes with these, like th this is a big thing that's been exposed in the, uh, you know, vegan community. Like the, all these things, even like if you see, it's like a, you know, the local farm grass fed, humane the race, free range. Like these things, a lot of them, you'd, you'd come to realize if you were to look into this issue, that they, they're basically the same thing, just painted in a different color, basically. And you can find, like, can I post my, my vegan uh, note on the chat? Yeah, post whatever you want, man. Yeah. I'll uh, just post this because this one connects to all that stuff. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, and to talk about it, let me get that thing out there. Okay. 
so yeah i mean uh, to continue with where i was at like uh to finish it up that one uh like it's it's definitely like when we look into how especially like cows you know uh the when we talk about how you know just to when you know how i was talking about the if the baby is a you know male they you know kill it right away they you know uh, or you know in a few weeks and then they call it a whale they tell the people and then they take their if, if it's a female they take the you know basically do the same treatment uh, until it becomes of age you know then they put them to the same machines hook them up there you know nipples to that machine to you know just take out all the milk uh, and then there's a lot of of course pus going on pus build up the blood that goes into the milk pus that goes into the milk which is actually like in some countries they allow a few drops of pus per a glass of milk in some countries less but it's always there and mm. uh it pasteurizing it doesn't really matter you know it's just pasteurizing pus pasteurizing blood uh it's still in there basically and um but anyway like when you think about what these yeah definitely like uh, animals going through and what we do to their babies if we take them away from them and these cows like uh yeah. if you like uh, they cry for weeks some of them like they you see them uh farmers say like, I, because they split their babies right away and then you know uh they want to the babies want the mother mother wants the baby but you know no we got to get the milk right we want the milk so our cows want the milk basically and our cow wants the lush so uh so then then they they claim Oh, you gotta do this to be healthy. You gotta do this, no, not just your mother's milk. No, no, no. Get these animals milk. And then they market it. This whole loose thing. They basically market it. They say it makes you strong. It makes you this. Now you believe that you gotta drink this and everything. Uh, so it's just like a whole uh, sick, you know, like the most archonic, most demiurgic thing one can do when it comes to like how we treat these animals, right? And that's basically what most people do without knowing or you know thinking about what's really going on in factory farming and the stuff you know i mentioned doesn't even cover like 10 percent of what the story for those who'd like to know what's really going on in factory farming and i actually recommend the documentary dominion or the documentary earthlings uh both of which are free on youtube and if you don't have the you know to like uh, if you don't have the time to watch the documentary i'd then recommend like a 12 minute video on youtube called farm to fridge if you type like farm to fridge, it will come up. It's like a summary. Uh, it's a great video that shows and exposes everything. And th to me, like, I feel like if you're consuming animal products, you kind of, you know, if you take the loose, like I'm also telling the archons, right? Uh, you owe it to these kind of people, these animals, like to, to see what they're actually going through. To, mm. And th there's a reason why, you know, it's illegal to go again to these places. Like they don't allow you to record them. And they sell you know the whole thing again like is it's a happy this happy that uh when it's in actuality you know it's all basically a big torture and these people are like you know uh at the end of the day they are like you know and guess what you know you you're like to the cows we are basically saying you're just powerless little creature you know and i'll get away with it because you know you look different than me and you speak my you don't speak my language so nobody will understand your stupid moves you know so yeah, ha, 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 ha. like this is the type of thing we are basically communicating with cows i feel like and yeah i mean that's that's what i want to say on that one and then i kind of want to go into more about how it's kind of connects to lush because um mm -hmm. so when it comes to that uh let me talk about you know lush and consider what the farmed animals are going through exactly like around they say 150 billion of them every single year around you know 60 billion of them being land animals and 90 billion of them being marine animals so to me the amount of loose that's potentially being gathered from these animals day in and day out versus the loose that's gathered from you know human beings may not even actually compare to each other even you know for those who uh, consider plants to be sent sentient where as we all know, you know, all the factory farm animals are fed up, fed plants until the day they die, uh, which is actually equ equates to like, um, 
indirectly eating like 16 times more plants for people who consume meat. So that's even like 16 times more suffering and lush extraction added on top of everything else for people who consume meat. And then, you know, there's the humanitarian reasons of uh, slaughterhouse workers suffering from, you know, psychological issues, as well as statistics that show 82% of starving children live in countries where food is fed to animals and the animals are eaten, you know, by the Western countries. Uh, at least 50% of the grains in the whole world is fed to factory farm animals. And US alone currently like grows enough food to feed apparently 10 billion people. Uh, so, so then, you know, when we consider this loose thing, right? Uh, there, there's even a website actually that I'd like to show to you guys here. Yeah, pop that in the chat. And, uh, uh, or should be, I think it was that one. Yeah, so this is the website. This is the guy, the same guy who had the best speech. Now, I don't agree with everything he says, obviously, just like with everybody else, but uh, that speech video, best speech you'll ever see on YouTube. Uh, I agree with every word in that one. And uh, like, as you can see, right, when I open this website, this website actually has an animal uh, slaughter counter, right? And it's been just 10 seconds. And this is the apparently the stats, and which doesn't include a lot of the, this other animals that's being died dying but uh it's interesting like when you even look into this like per minute we are talking about 200 you know 50 thousand animals basically and uh yeah so when so there, there there's that and then uh every you know like every few sentences basically i speak you know as you can see the results here and i don't want to keep this up here for a long time it's just like you know uh but kind of depressing issue uh but I think this needs to be, you know, talked about. I think and it's important, no? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, again, I apologize, you know, for going a bit dark here, but I'm just, you know, trying to, like, do my kind of best to speak for those animals who can't speak for themselves at the end of the day. Yeah. And, you know, not, I didn't know about any of this, like, factory farm stuff. Like, I, if, if you were to ask me before, like, how do you think this happens? Like, I would say, well, they're, I guess they're killing it, and then they're, you know, prepping it, and, uh, you know, my family buys it, and I eat it. But, you know, once I actually saw it and you know what was going on you know i feel like that changed the whole narrative for me because even when you know you were talking about how if people were to do do this by themselves right like mm -hmm. hunt it like it, that would be like so many more vegans and vegetarians would be out there but then if you were to even think if these animals were to speak our language like communicated in english or whatever you understand that probably like most of everyone, I feel like, you know, if you're not a psychopath, they would be uh, vegans too. If they had that specially chill and then they are like saying, no, don't kill, I don't want to, you know, I want to be with my family. I want to be happy and healthy. Just like uh, we say, say that, you know, I, we want to be happy and healthy. We don't like this loose harvesting place and we don't want to be part of it, but we are part of it currently. And, you know, uh, in these limited things, just like uh, for cows, you know, they are in these limited, like they were born in it, in the factories. And then they, you know, even though the escape is right there uh, for them, like some cases like hopping, hopping off a wire or whatever. Uh, but, you know, they just don't know about it. They are, you know, indoctrinated basically into not really knowing what's going on out there, just like us, just like mm -hmm. us. We, we don't know what's going on out there. In reality, we just think about this, this place uh, and we think, this is all there is so we kind of ignore everything else uh, and we, our suffering here becomes natural to us uh, but it's not natural you know so there's a lot of uh, yeah, that, nothing that's... natural about it exactly exactly and uh so then uh yeah i mean yeah considering that you know everything we know about the agriculture industry uh, it's perfectly you know uh, it works perfectly with the whole, you know, loose narrative and this loose gathering system that we, you know, seem to live in. And, and the, even the factory farming in itself is like the biggest or original conspiracy to begin with that works perfectly with the system's lives, right? Many, you know, kid cartoons uh, show us these animals as friends. And then, you know, the dinner time comes in and then people are making children eat, you know, corpses basically, which is, you know, uh, pure trauma-based mind control at the end of the day. And there are so many, you know, videos online of these kids like who make the connection and realize that they don't want to eat these animals and they are crying to their parents. They, you know, they don't want to eat their, you know, friends. They are crying. They say, 
no, I don't want to eat it. Uh, I, you know, this is my friend. And which I feel like I believe we all would think naturally that if we weren't, you know, indoctrinated mm -hmm. uh, in all these things, right? If Because I feel like we arrive pure hearted. That's our pure condition, like, and this place definitely cor corrupts us. Uh, so it's hard to criticize anyone for believing, you know, what they believe in. I mean, the systems brainwashing programs, programs are massive, especially when we're talking about the multi-billion, you know, dollar meat, dairy and egg industries, which, you know, coupled with the pharmaceutical industry all work hand in hand to benefit from the suffering of people and animals. So on my end, veganism was actually like the first thing that made me realize for the first time how deep the evil of this world goes. And uh, to me, like it looks like all the teams of the Matrix, you know, regression salt trap system, when it comes to, you know, Lush, the parasitic overlord, psychopathy, you know, a reality based on suffering, freedom and sovereignty, you know, all, all of this to me personally, animal liberation and veganism goes hand in hand with the whole concept in an intellectually, you know, consistent way, I believe. So, um, to totally with you on that, man. I think, yeah, it, it all reveals itself and um, shows the doggy dog world and um, how everything, you know, it, it's this insane hierarchy and we need to better um, collect ourselves and, and, and come to the realization about what's going on here. And, um, what's going on with animals is no different and it's appalling. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we can definitely dive uh, deeper into this, uh, later on where, uh, there is a lot to be said on this issue. And, uh, I feel like a lot to be said on the plant-based diet thing. Uh, so yeah, and, I'd, and love, the, I'd love to yeah. pick it up. Yeah. We've, we've been going, um, I think over six hours. So it's, Damn. it's a, it's an amazing conversation. It's almost, it's after 3am here. So I think, um, probably gonna have to stop it, but let's definitely do a part two, man. I I'd love to continue the conversation. And I know a lot of people have been enjoying the conversation tonight and, um, but for the time being, uh, I think I'm gonna have to wrap things up, but I would like to give a big thank you to you for coming on and, and sharing your knowledge and wisdom and, and your journey to awakening. So let's, let's definitely do part two. Definitely. I'm, I'm up to it. And thank you. Thanks like so much for this opportunity that you give me, you know, to expose all the stuff that I feel it's important to expose. And yeah, I can't appreciate you enough for that. Yeah. Thank you, brother. All right. Uh, thank you everybody for, tuning in tonight and look for a part two with the vegan skeptic. And, uh, I will also pop some links in the chat sometime tomorrow, uh, as well as timestamps. So if you're coming into this late or looking for further information about what was discussed from the vegan skeptic tonight and, um, yeah, all that information will be available in the description tab and, as far as the timestamps go, those will also be in the description tab as well as the pinned comment below. And we will see each other again real soon. Thank you so much. Stay safe. And thank you for watching.